I've just reached 2,000 days in my perfect world, and in that time I've built a bunch of small farms and contraptions, a bunch of big farms, an airship, and an entire mining town connected by a rail network. And just last episode I built the start of an underground station and a freight train to transport goods back to our main storage. But then, cue the sad music. I fractured my wrist, I bruised a rib or two, and pulled some muscles in what was quite possibly the most unspectacular fall imaginable. I literally just slipped over in the rain and landed awkwardly. It's quite embarrassing. But as you can imagine, that did of course slow me down for a bit. I mean, for the last two weeks I've not been able to record, I didn't get to go on my holiday to Cologne, which was really, really annoying. But that was mainly down to the bruised ribs and pulled muscles as opposed to the actual wrist. But my poor wife has been looking after me the last couple of weeks, making sure that I'm fed and watered, but thankfully I think we're just about ready to be able to start recording again, although it may be in short stints and this video is likely very late. In the meantime, however, the 2000 Day movie did come out, although technically we are actually... Yep, we're, we're, we're nine days shy of 2,000 days, but it's close enough. But not only that, the 100k special came out as well, which is basically just to look back at the last four years and how we went from zero to 100,000 subs. And that work of art was put together by my good friend Stubble, so if you haven't seen that, please do go check it out. I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. But now we're back here on this world, I think it's about time we maybe built some homes for those villagers. You, you know, the ones we've kept locked in a pen at the industrial town for quite a while. Yeah, I think it's time we treat them to some brand new housing. Before that, however, I do need to show you a few things we did between episodes. The main one being this tunnel entrance here, which does, of course, go to our storage depot train station thing. But after remapping my crouch key and my run key to my mouse, I did manage to actually get the majority of this done. We've still got some of the corridor around the back here to do, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. But the train station for the sort of dispatch center thing we've got at the top there is now looking a lot better. And as you can see, everything's still working a treat as well. But I also put in a doorway over this side, which connects it to our normal train station. And you can see the start of a path there. That's the other thing we did which was mainly preparation for today's episode. So if we jump up to our airship, from up here you can see what I've done and basically I've just sort of started connecting up the path, making sure that everything is going to connect from the top to the bottom and well it needs a lot of work but I think it's looking okay and kind of helps me map out where I know I want to put all the villager houses. I mean just look at them standing there in the pen, I bet they can't wait. There was one other problem I was having over the last couple of weeks and I spent a bit of time figuring it out and those of you that are eagle-eyed may be able to see in my little hotbar there I have a weird device at the end. And we'll get to that in just a moment, but what it boils down to is my trains. Basically, they were not really working correctly. I was having a little bit of problems with signals and things like that. They, there was a little bit of crashing. But some wonderful people in the community have pointed me towards a mod called Create Track Map. And when combined with another mod called Web Displays, enables me to have this, which is basically like a little iPad type thing. And it's supposed to work in my offhand, but it doesn't really. It's a bit graphically weird. But if I right click, I can get this. And this is a map of my train network. In fact, I can zoom out further. You can see the entire thing. You can see all the trains working, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if we zoom in on an area here, we can basically see all the signals. We can see what trains what. We can make sure that things are working as they're supposed to. So we've got our monorail train here. We've got the flying pebble, which is of course the one that goes around and picks everything up from these factories. So this enables me to not only keep track of everywhere my trains are on the network, it also meant that the issues I was having up here with my trains, I could basically see what was causing it, see what signals were doing what, and basically resolve it all. And it may not yet be perfect, but the trains have been going around flawlessly for about 50 days, so I'm assuming that everything's absolutely fine. So yes, this has been exceptionally handy and I highly recommend it if you're having trouble with your trains. In fact, Shouse has done a really good video on it. I'll link that in the description if you do want to check it out. But I think that's enough waffle for today. Let's figure out these houses for the villagers. And I've been giving it a lot of thought on the style of houses I want to put down here because it was, of course, a savannah village and I don't really think that's going to fit in particularly well with what we've got here. At least not that style of house. And then I considered maybe some sort of Victorian style housing, you know, just like terrace houses that you'd find in sort of the middle of UK industrial cities and things like that. But that could look a bit samey and repetitive and I didn't really want that either. So what we're going to be doing is something that's a little bit different, I guess. The style doesn't really have a name either. It's basically just sort of janky, industrialist, shanty, random town punk. I mean, all the cool styles have punk at the end, right? And what this means, I don't really know yet, but I do know what resources I want to use, and I've got an idea of the palettes I want to use as well. 
and we're just gonna see what we can come up with. And this could all go terribly wrong, but I guess we'll figure that one out together. A short while later, and I've gathered myself a fine selection of resources, and some girders of course, and I'm gonna start working out some houses. I think what I want to do is maybe get the first building down, and then from there I can work out where the road wants to go, because I'll know how far forward the building is, and I think I'm gonna put it here. And we'll kind of build it just into the hill here, and we'll fill in the back when we're done, so maybe if we start around here somewhere, we'll just mark out a rough shape of the build. And I reckon something about that size for the main base should be fine. Let's just build the walls up a bit. And like we did with our starter builds, I think I'm going to make use of these again. I really do like the reinforced spruce logs because they make it look nice and sort of metallic at the front here. I think it just adds a little bit extra to it. So let's get these all around the top here. And one thing I do want to do is to bring back a lot of colour and I should probably go to bed as well. There's mobs everywhere. So as I was saying, I do want to bring some colour back into this area because of course savannah villages are very orange and they use a lot of acacia and I want to be using some color over here so we're going to be using a mix of acacia we're going to use some viridium as well like the roof we have over there and try and just inject a bit more color back into this area hey look there's a sleeping bag because we've got the dull industrial zone let's have a bit of a brighter living area so with that in mind my plan is to use acacia on the next floor here look at this you lot I'm actually building you a house ultimately we're going to need more than one but you know you've got to start somewhere so I think what I want to do here is maybe have a slanty roof there there and put potentially another sort of building extension bit up the top here so something like that but what do i want to use on there maybe something a bit lighter like limestone potentially and we've got plenty of that over here so maybe something like that although i think i want to give it a bit more depth maybe let's bring this out a block okay i'm liking it but i think i want to have a sticky outy bit down here as well because i like the color i like the brightness but i think it needs a nice metallic box or something sticking out the front here i think that's really going to add something here maybe just something like this sort of held up with girders potentially and i think what i might actually do is get a few more girders in i think i'm actually going to change the shape of this building here a little bit as well while we're at it so I'm wondering if maybe we put in some supports like this we can sort of build a box out the front i've made a bit of a mess of this i'm gonna have a little play around with some shapes and i'll bring you back in once we've figured this out maybe i just need to move that whole top bit across by a block either way i'll see you in a moment One short musical interlude later, I think I'm much happier with that shape. And from a distance, the splash of colour's looking good as well. I've also sort of stuck it out this side a little bit. I think that balances it better, or unbalances it. But that definitely helps with the sort of janky town look we're going for. So let's get some roofs on, let's get some windows in, and I should probably do a little bit of texturing in certain places as well. It's time for another musical interlude. And there we go. I think that's looking a little bit better. It's still going to need some detailing once we get round to it. But I've also managed to put in a couple of floors on the inside. The walls are generally looking good. And I think for a first house, that fits in just nicely. Before I go any further, though, I do want to work out where the pathy, roady type thing is going to go. So it'd probably help if I didn't have something in my offhand. But let's just mark out roughly where it's going to head. So it'd be this way, I guess. And then probably over here. And I think I'm going to want a path coming up the side of this wall here as well. So maybe linking it over to here isn't such a bad idea and of course this will all link up to the front door here for this dude and i'll sort out the road properly later for now we'll just turn it into dirt paths so we can see where it's going to be something like that would do for now and i guess i should probably work out the interior of this build first before I start adding other builds. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with like five or six buildings and no interiors. And we've done that in many series in the past. So this one, let's actually do an interior before we move on.
A short while later, and I think our first house is actually done. I've sorted out the outside, we've got some lovely flower boxes, and I've just sorted out the path in front a little bit more. Still don't really know what we're going to do with this. I might pave the whole thing, I might make it gravel, I don't know. I'm just kind of experimenting with different path types at the moment. But that's not what's important. What is important is this house. So, we've got some decoration out the side here, but when we go inside, it is all lovely and decorated. And these half slab walls have really been a big help. So we've just got a small entrance lobby here, with some nice carpeted area and then we've got our kitchen which I think looks pretty cool we've got lots of herbs and things we've got cooking pots and we've even got a shopping list stuck to the wall over here but I particularly like the knife and chopping board from Farmer's Delight it just really adds a lot I think what I should also do is bring one of those big plated mills over here at some point and just sort of put a chicken carcass or something over by the sink I think that would look quite cool then throw into the lounge we're using the canvas rug which is also from Farmer's Delight which looks pretty awesome we've got the create seats with some banners just to create a sofa type area and just a few other smaller details that you'd expect but I also got this which is a trophy I got I believe just for looting a buttload of chests but I figured it needed a home so that lives here now as well and we've also got an upstairs so we have a hallway with a small seating area here and we've got two bedrooms each one with double beds and it's the same on this side here so plenty of space for the villagers and we've also got the top floor which doesn't have anything on it at the moment I guess we can just turn it into storage or something I don't really know and this room here just goes to the silver metal box which is the storage room. Yes. Or a toilet. One of the two. But I'm happy with how this house has come out. We'll probably end up just leaving those other two rooms empty. That's fine. I think overall this is looking pretty good. Which means four of these guys now have a place to live. However, I don't really want to set them free just yet. I think we should probably future-proof this a little bit by maybe building a villager breeder. That seems like the sensible thing to do because, well, this area isn't exactly lit up perfectly. So if we've got villagers wandering around, they're probably going to die. I mean, we'll do our best to protect them and light up the area, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So that means I need to put another building down. Maybe we'll put it directly next door, or should I put one over here, maybe? I don't really know. But either way, it needs to be big enough to house a villager breeder. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, just one where we can chuck them some bread every now and then if we're running a little bit low. And they need to be, well, trapped. They can't get out. So I've dumped down a bunch of blocks. And I think I'm going to stick a couple of buildings in here. And this one here, I'm probably going to make a villager breeder. And this one here will just be another house. Or maybe vice versa. I don't really know. But I think I want to build this one first. And see if we can fit a breeder inside it. But as usual, the first thing to do is just to get the walls built up. And then we'll have an entrance here on this corner. And I'll just mark that out with some slabs for now. I wonder, can we get away with putting some fancy beams in? But I think I want some stripped dark oak to put on those. So let's quickly use our little chopper machine up here to get some. So you can get chopping. And I think I'm going to have a nap. It looks dark outside. While I'm up here, we need to quickly make some windows as well. So let's get some black dye. Turn that into grey dye. Get some grey stained glass. Turn that into window panes, and I think we want this one here. And they're ready now as well. Excellent stuff. So what I'm thinking is we can do this. So we just end up with some nice thin beams to give a bit of structure to the build. And then maybe just stick a couple of windows in in a few places. I guess we can't really put one there. But we can put one there. I kind of want to put one here as well, but I think what I might need to do is fatten out that brick bit there. Yeah, that works. And then let's do that round this side as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think what I want to do now is get some kind of a trim on the edge here. And I do have some terracotta with me. Because we're using the brick, I think this could work nicely. But maybe we should try and get some pattern on it. Maybe this layered terracotta would work. How's that looking? Yeah, I think that could work quite nicely. But while I'm here, I know I want to do the next floor in acacia log. But... I think there's quite a nice one here. Is it firewood? Mixed acacia log. I think that's the one I want some of. We'll get some nailed ones and a little bit of the firewood as well, just in case. But let's try out these terracotta blocks first. So we'll just put a rim all around the edge here, I guess. I guess it's going to go out to there. No, it's going to go out another one. So I guess we're going to need some more bricks in that bit just to cover up the hole. I think that works quite well as a trim, actually. So now let's just build up some walls here. Just use normal acacia logs for now. We'll do some texturing after, I think. I think that sort of shape should work. But what I want to do is to mix in some of... Oh, geez, that's not what I wanted to do. Right, but what I do want to do is to mix in some of these logs. So let's, uh, let's do that make sure that I'm not going to be chopping them up. But there we go, that's what we were going for. These acacia logs here, because they really do look like metal panels, I think. And I think if we just mix in certain bits of this, in fact, we'll probably make a lot of the bottom level of this and have it sort of fade into the normal acacia at the top. 
That's going to look pretty cool. But I won't worry about doing those bits just yet. We'll save that for later. For now, I think this building needs a little bit more. So maybe we can have a sticky outy bit over here. And of course, we'll get that propped up with some girders. But I don't think I want to do that in acacia. Maybe we could try something else. What are we doing color-wise over here? Maybe a bit of spruce, potentially? Maybe I should have a sticky outy bit on this side as well. Wait a minute, where's my health low? Oh no, have I run out of food? I have! Run out of food completely. There's like no food in there whatsoever. Well, I best go do some cooking before I starve to death. Oh yes, spruce. We wanted to put a spruce sticky outy bit on here. And I need to figure out what I want to do for the roof. And I'm thinking maybe scoria. I quite like the scoria for roofs. But let's sort out the sticky outy bit first. So let's chuck some of these down. We'll chuck some windows in there as well. So I have made it a block wider, but I think that's going to work nicely. But it also needs something on this side here. Just something like that, maybe, with a little slopey roof on top. I think this is coming together quite nicely. We should have plenty of space here on the top floor to put in a small villager breeder. Don't see that being a problem. So let's sort out this roof. And you know what? I think I am going to go with Scoria for this one. But let's just grab a bunch of this from here. And I think it's the stone cutter. If we put it in there, we should be able to get lots of different variants. Yeah, there we go. We'll have some polished cut Scoria. And we'll have some stairs of that as well. Some slabs. And we'll get some of the brick slabs as well with the same thing. We'll get the stairs and we'll get the solid ones. And we'll also get some normal cut scoria too. And that should be enough to do a good chunk of the roof. In fact, let's grab a few more of the stairs just in case. And go to bed. It's night time. Right, now let's slap a roof on this thing. Right, I think that's working. That's a pretty good shape. I like how everything's coming together. Although that looks a little bit weird. Can I do anything about this? I reckon if we do that, put spruce on the bottom, then acacia on the top, that should look a bit better from the side. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Right, so this thing's still going to need some windows. I need to sort out the texturing on the outside. I need to get doors. And I could probably do with a chimney of some sort as well. So I'm going to do a bit of detailing on the outside here. And then we're going to need to figure out how we're going to put a villager breeder in here. And I think I'll probably keep the downstairs normal and then have the upstairs basically locked off. And then we can probably just feed the babies down into this room, I guess. And a few moments later, we have an interior. It's very similar to the one we put in the last house on the downstairs, which is absolutely fine. Nothing particularly special going on here, but I think I've worked out the upstairs. And I've put a ladder in here just so villagers can't actually get up here, because up here we have our villager breeder. And, well, hopefully this is going to work. But the plan is to trap two villagers in here, and then we've got a couple of chutes here, and what... Oh, jeez. Didn't mean to do that. But we'll trap a couple of villagers in here. And from out here, we can put bread or whatever into here. And that will drop down so we can feed them. They'll then make babies who will want to get onto these beds here. So they'll run across this gap. And then they're just going to drop down. I mean, they might get ever so slightly hurt as they drop down. But that's fine. They'll live. I suppose I could put honey blocks under there. But I'm probably not going to do that. But in theory, this should work. Because the villagers down there can't pathfind to these beds. So these beds should always be vacant. So as long as they've got food... They they should just keep producing villagers. And then once the villagers are down there, they'll go off to another house and actually find a bed they can sleep in. And just for good measure, I've also put a nice big room on this side as well, just because, well, I didn't really want to leave it empty. So I guess the next thing I need to do is to get some villagers in here. And, well, they're not too far away, so hopefully this won't be too difficult. Let's start off trying a direct approach. So let's just put a couple of composters in there and see if they'll attach to those. Oh, it's all gone wrong. They're all out. Oh, jeez. As long as two of them go in there, that's fine. No, 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 no. Oh, Doris. Right, okay. We need to we need to wrangle these villagers a bit better, I think. Okay, in you go. Right, that's one. I'm hoping a second one's going to walk up there just naturally. Go on. <laughs> what are the chances that worked? Amazing. Right, so we have our two villagers in there. Let's just get them blocked in. The rest of you can just walk around and do whatever. That's fine. So now I just need to give these guys some food. And in theory, they should start producing some babies. But I haven't got any food with me. But we've definitely got two villagers safe now. So the rest of them we can just leave to mill about. Oh, look at this. They're moving in already. Oh, okay. The, the carpet's blocking their access. Let's just do that. But look at that. They love the house. Amazing. In fact, 
Four people? I think we put four beds in there, didn't we? Good stuff. The rest of you... Okay, look, don't worry. I am going to build up your house shortly. In fact, I'm going to build up your house next. But first, I need to tidy up my inventory. I'm jammed full of stuff. And I need to get some food for these guys, just to make sure the villager breeder is going to work. So I'm back with some bread. Let's see if they breed. Hopefully, this will work. Okay, they're getting the bread. Are we going to get the hearts? Bit creepy just watching them through a door, but it's fine. It's fine. Oh, they're doing it. Are we going to get a baby? Yes. Oh, and look at that straight away. Amazing. So our bodge job villager breeder seems to do the trick. And we now have baby Evelyn, who doesn't actually have a home right now. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's build another building here. And I think I'm just going to crack on and get this one done. I have a rough idea, I think, of what materials I'm going to use. And I think we'll be using a bunch of the limestone and metallic type blocks over this side, just so we can offset this. So I guess it's time for another beardy montage. Let's go. <laughs> happy with that i think that one suits the village nicely and i've sorted out the interior as well so if we take a quick look inside we've got a kitchen over here we've got a downstairs area with a weird poster don't know where that came from and upstairs here we've got a ladder that goes up to a small room up there and in here we've got wow Okay, we've got a bit of a party going on. How many people? There's five villagers. There's only two beds. But we've still got plenty more space here. We've got... Oh, I should probably sleep, actually. I haven't actually lit up that much. And it looks a bit dangerous up there for the villagers. But I do seem to have a lot of golems spawning. And that's kind of helpful for now, I guess. As long as we don't end up with too many. But we'll have to see what happens. But I think I want to get down a couple more buildings here. So I'm just going to blast through and get them done. And hopefully we'll have a nice little village here when we're finished. And a few hours later, we have two more buildings here, two more houses for the villagers, which means we've got five in total now. So plenty of beds for everyone, which is nice. So for this one here, I've used spruce, diorite and stone and some variants. I think it's come out pretty cool. We've got little balconies, we've got walkways and all sorts. And on the inside, we have a lovely, cozy little sort of dining area type thing. And we've got a kitchen and we've even got Malcolm working. Hello, Malcolm. Oh, he's so happy to see me. Keep up the good work, buddy. And then upstairs here, we have access to the balcony. We have a room on this side, very small room and a small room on this side which is a bit bare bones but there wasn't really a lot of space this also then goes up to the top floor which is just storage and the other balcony and the other door in this room leads out onto this balcony so all in all i think that's working quite nicely and it fits in well and on this side we've got what is probably my favorite build i really like the shape of this one it's quite simple but i think the textures work nice i think the little sticky outy bits work nice as well and i love the small storage area we have underneath and once again on the inside we just have a basic setup here for the kitchen and eating area 
And then upstairs we have a couple of bedrooms which are very, very bare bones because the shape's a bit weird in here. But the important thing is the villagers have somewhere to sleep. And they look pretty cool as well. So that's a really good start to the village. But I think we've definitely got space for another building here. And we'll probably end up with another building here, maybe one or two over this side. But for today, I think that's certainly enough building. Something I do still need to do though is name the freight train and the monorail train as well, in fact. So let's go name that one while we know that that's going to be in its station. So we're going to be calling the monorail the Hanging Beardsman, which was suggested by Team Greybeards. So thank you very much for that one. I think that works nicely for it. And look at that. The freight train has literally just pulled in and we can give this one a name as well now. Although I need to remember where the actual platform is. I think it's around here somewhere. Aha, there it is. And there were over 300 name suggestions for this one. So I decided in order to narrow it down, I was just going to go with the one that had the most likes. And that was a suggestion by Felix Gal. And that is the Whimsical Whistler. Well, it was actually the Whimsical Whistleblower, but that's a bit long. So we've gone with the Whimsical Whistler. That way we might be able to fit it on some train station boards. But it's a fantastic name. Thank you very much for all the suggestions. And I believe that all of our trains now have a name, which is going to make them much easier for tracking them on that weird little pad thing. But sadly, that's all we've got time for in today's episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we're actually going to be building in a different location. Oh, my days. Last episode, I finally built a village for the workers in the industrial town and even trapped a couple forever in a village villager breeder so that we can keep this dangerous place populated. This time I build a huge new railway line to a brand new location and start preparations for our next project. Because I need a break from the savannah, we've been in the savannah for months and I'm pretty sure you do too. So we're gonna leave. In fact, let's leave right now. And by right now, I guess I mean let's leave in eight minutes. Dang trains. We have a problem, and that problem is this, our main storage warehouse. I mean, it's great and all in that it stores many things. We've still got lots and lots of space. That's all well and good. I can easily just dump my inventory in it when I get back from a build and most things get sorted straight away. It really is very helpful. But as we expand and we build new factories, we're going to start running into some problems because I also need to take things out of this building and run them into other factories. And to be honest, that's just not really going to happen. It's not really been built for that. I didn't think ahead. So although we're bringing over loads of clay balls, for example, there's no way to extract these into another factory to go use them to make all the clay related things. And if we factor in all the bottlenecks we're going to start getting up here when we have other towns that are also sending stuff back here, it's just not really going to work. This location just isn't really suitable. There's too many narrow bits of track and there's not really a large flat area or anything like that where we can build a different distribution center. So that's exactly what we need. A great big distribution center. Somewhere where all the trains and everything from all the factories can go to a central place. And then from here, we'll just set up some kind of a system so when something gets low, we can just send off for it. And I think that's going to be the best solution. But to get all this to work, we're going to need a plan. But thankfully, I've already come up with one. Step one is to find ourselves a location. So we need to find ourselves somewhere to build this storage warehouse where it's not going to start clogging up the network. So basically, we don't want to build anything else over here because this stuff works fine. But if we start adding in more rails onto this section, we're just going to have more problems. So we could go flatten another village somewhere over here in the plains. That could work quite nicely. It's fairly central. But I think I also want sea access, which means maybe we're looking along this coastline here. Let's go check out this bay here, I think. So if we set a waypoint there, that's somewhere to check out. I think somewhere else I'd like to check out is down here. And that looks like a potential... Yep, there's another mansion there as well. So we've got three points marked on our map. Let's go check them out. Well, this first spot is a big fat no. It's a very cliffy kind of area. There's not really anywhere to build. I guess we won't be stopping here. We're going to have to go further. Let's go check out this one. So this bit here isn't too bad. Is I mean, there's a lot of jungle trees I'd need to clear, but it's a little bit flatter. I don't know if it's a big enough area, you know. I won't strike it off just yet. Let's go check out the third place, which is another 2,000 blocks this way. Jeez. Well, 
Well, this is already looking a lot flatter. Maybe a bit thin, though. Though, I'll tell you what, this is a nice bit of land. It's fairly flat. I mean, there's a lot of trees to clear and, a well, there's some problems with the locals, I guess. We're going to have to clear those out. But we could even repurpose that building for something in future. Oh, and there we go. Look, if we look on the mini-map, we can see the space we've got. That looks like a good-sized island. And it's dark oak as well, which means we've got nice bright grass, which is going to be amazing after what we've been dealing with in the savannah. Yeah, I think I can picture the area. This could work. We'll save clearing that out for later, though. So now what we need to do is work out a train line. It looks like we're going to be going past another mansion there as well. But maybe our best bet is just to continue off of this line here. And then we can go through here. That all looks fairly foresty. This is good. We're ignoring the mountains. Oh, okay, maybe right through the middle of that mountain. But... But, pending the terrain height differences, we'll probably have to go around this one as well. This could work out quite nicely. And then at the bottom here, just a big bridge there, or maybe a couple of bridges just to get across onto this island. I'd say that's step one of the plan complete. Location found. Step two is the railway. Now we've found a location, I need to build a railway line to said location. Which means we need to jump on our railway making contraption, put on some funky music, lay some rail and dig some holes. Let's go. Five and a half Christmas films later, I think we're actually done. I have a rail that's got two lines and goes all the way back to our main area. In fact, if we look at the map here, you can see where it connects up. It's a very straight rail, this one. But I have got gravel down on pretty much all of it. I still need to do some bridges, as you can see, and I've still got some tunnels to do. And I've also removed about 200 floating trees. So it should all be clear on the top of the track as well. And that means we're on to step three, which is clearing the land. And for that, we're gonna need a few things. So let's quickly head home. And to clear that land, we are, of course, going to be making use of this, our massive drill. But I want to make a few modifications first. For those modifications, I'm going to need a buttload of iron, lots of andesite alloy, and I'm going to need a bit of time to make all these components. So I'll see you in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a buttload more storage. And then I'm going to add some more drills just to make it a bit taller. We don't want to leave any floating trees where we're going. Something else I'm going to do is temporarily strip out a bunch of these, put some temporary blocks down. And I'm I'm going to stick a bunch of harvesters on the front here because that way we can collect a whole bunch of leaves as well. No point in wasting the opportunity. And then we can just chuck those drills back in. So this should clear away the land and the trees and also collect us some leaves along the way. Although it would help if I glued it together. Right, that's better. We've got it all this time. Let's go destroy an island. A couple more Christmas films later, we've got a massive area we can work with. We've obviously got a lot of work to do around the edges here, but this should be plenty of space for at least a little while. And I've also extended the track along here because this is where we're going to build our first building. It has just occurred to me I could probably do with my airship, so we best go pick that up. And because we've got so much stuff stored on here, it's unlikely we're actually going to be able to pick it up because there'll be too much data. So what we're actually going to do is just quickly remove some of these more full drawers. That should hopefully be enough. And what we'll do is we'll just put them back in place once we get to the new location. So let's do that. And hopefully, yeah, look at that, we can just pick it up. And we didn't leave any lava in it this time either. Or a monkey. So I've relocated the airship to the site of our new distribution center, which is gonna be basically all around here. But before we make a start on that, I think I want to deal with this. Because we've got some pretty nasty neighbors over there and I don't wanna remove the building. I might use it for something in future, but I don't like the idea of there just being loads and loads of pillagers. So we're gonna be brave and just pile on in there and hope for the best, I guess. If I can find the entrance, that is. Where is it? Aha, it's down by the coast. Oh 
nice armor trim. Just like that, the place is clear. Excellent. That wasn't too difficult at all. Just a couple of arrows stuck in me, apparently. But we did manage to get the Vex armor trim as well as six totems, which is nice. But for now, I think we can crack on with this building, safe in the knowledge that the nasty neighbors have gone. But if you have any ideas of what we can use that building for, do let me know. I mean, I'm probably going to have to change it up if we decide to keep it anyway. But yeah, let me know what you think. So now we're just about ready to build. Let's grab a few bits and maybe chop down some trees. In fact, if I come up to the top deck here and have a look out, I've already gone. Magic. It's literally the next day in real life. But I just needed to chill out for a bit. So I decided to chop down all these trees. I've sorted out the landscape a little bit around the front here and the side. And yeah, we've still got a big old mess at the back and on that side. But for now, we've got plenty of area to work with. And well, way more space than we're going to need anytime soon. But at least it means I haven't got to cut down any more trees anytime soon. Apart from them ones and them ones. But it's fine. But what I'm going to do is start figuring out this distribution center. So I'm going to want a number of buildings to be able to store vaults of different types of resources. Pretty much just the core resources we're getting out of our basic farms. We're going to need water tanks to store stuff in. And of course, we're going to need a power station to power the whole area. Because I do want to put a bunch of factories around here as well. But let's start with this distribution center type area. And I think I'm going to start just by placing a block around about here. And I guess we're going to build off of this. First thing I'm going to need is a big old platform to work stuff out on. And I'm thinking something like that should work nicely. We'll probably end up duplicating whatever we build here on this side as well. But my plan is to essentially have a line of vaults across here and a loading system. But I guess that's what we're going to need to work out next. Because I want to make sure that the train's only actually picking up what it was sent here to collect. And that means we're going to be using a whole bunch of redstone links and locking mechanisms. And probably a whole bunch of stations too. Let's see if we can figure this out. So I think what I'm going to do is work backwards from the train unloading point. And see if we can figure it out that way. So if we have, say, for example... Maybe 10 volts on each side, two sets of five. So that means we'd end up with portable storage interfaces there, meaning we're going to need belts feeding into the back of those. And then I guess probably just one big long belt running along the back here. So let's quickly throw these in. Then we'll have a big belt running along the back, which will be coming from the vaults. So I guess we're probably going to have the vaults over this way. So I should put the vaults in around here somewhere, but I think I want to raise them up a little bit. Maybe we should make some of that shiny create scaffolding. That stuff looks quite good. And I think we'll go for the copper one here. That looks nice. So let's make a platform for the vaults. They're all going to be two wide and six deep. So we should just need a big old platform like this. Uh, that size, I think, should be about right. Now let's chuck on a bunch of vaults and see if we can get this working. Oh, I've actually made that one too deep. Let's do that. So this should work. So if we do an input and then an output on each of these, we'll have an input on the back of each of these as well. And if we use these brass tunnels here, we can then add filters on this side so only specific resources come into these areas. And if these back up, it should just loop back round and get put back into the vault. At least that's the hope. We're going to need a lot of redstone links, though. And and I didn't bring any with me, but I think I've got a bunch up in here. That's a negative. We don't have any in here whatsoever. So I guess I'm going to need to head home and grab loads of those. And to be honest, we're going to need a whole bunch of train stations as well, I think, to make this work. I've got some stations and some redstone links, and I want to try something out. So ideally, what we want to be doing is only unlocking whatever resource is well, whatever resource the train is here to collect, I guess. So my thinking is, if, for example, we had a station here, we'll just dump it here for now, and we called this one Cobble. And we're going to use this train for our experiments, but I believe if we pull this train into the station, it should give off a redstone signal. At least that's my hope. So it's in, and yes, it does. Okay, cool. So if we then put a redstone link there, that will activate that. So for this test, we'll just set that to Cobble in the red slots. And if this one 
one here was the one that was dropping off cobble. We'd put a receiver here, which needs to be set to actually receive, and cobble in the red, and excellent. So that should lock this hopper here. That wants to only accept cobble. We only want cobble coming out of there. And we'll say this is the cobble vault just to keep everything in one line. So we'll put the filters on those as well. But if we put a redstone link here, set that to receive and set that to cobble as well, that should lock this funnel here. So, ah, that's not going to work, is it? We needed to unlock when the train pulls in, but that should be fairly easy if we quickly adjust this over here. So if we just have it go into a block with a redstone torch, and then do that. So those ones should now be unlocked, which means if this was all running and this had cobble in it, that will be pulling the cobble out. It will come through all of these and only get ejected when it gets to here. And what we can then do is set the next one to gravel and sand and so on. And then if we have a station for each one of these and we just make sure that they line up when the train pulls in, so we can just have essentially one train with one container. But then when it pulls into the cobble station, it just lines up with this one and then turns on the whole thing and then it just loads up cobble. That should work nicely. The key is going to be keeping these belts here clear. So as long as they can continually go round, we might get a bit of backlog on here, but if things can't get off, they'll go round again and go back into the vaults. And once the train leaves, this will lock, so it'll stop ejecting it all as well. I think this could work. I don't know if any of that made any sense. I was kind of thinking out loud there. But in theory, this should all work. So I'm just going to build up the rest of this system. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then we also need to figure out how we're going to be dropping off items into these vaults. And a few moments later, we've got all that sorted. The only thing left to do, of course, is to put all the filters on when we know what we're storing here and to set up the stations. But we can't actually do that until we build the train and we know where things are going to line up. Something I can do, however, is to work out the drop-off point. And I think for that, we're probably going to have have something that sort of goes over the top of the track. I think that's going to look quite nice. So first up, let's extend this out a little bit and then we'll put in something over here. So if we have a belt going up to there, then we'll have a storage interface there right above the middle of the track and we can just join those up. We can grab ourselves a funnel and we can use that for offloading the train and then that will just go into these vaults here. So we just have to make sure, I guess, that we've got filter on here to make sure it's only pulling out things that can be stored in these vaults. But that's simple enough. Although, once again, so it doesn't accidentally try and grab stuff, we could just put a redstone link there, so only when the train's specifically parked in the station for offloading will it actually offload. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't want it lining up with one of these, but at the same time also being in line with this and kind of loading and offloading at the same time, or it will never leave. I mean, all this is untested, but I think it's going to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Apart from the lack of power, actually, maybe we should sort out some power. And I am going to be building a big power station over here, but, well, this is just belts, which means it doesn't actually add any stress, so I can run this whole thing just off of a water wheel. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We've not used one in ages. And we'll only need a small one, which is good. Though I could do with a rotational speed controller, but, uh, yeah, we don't have those things on us, so we're going to have to head home to get those. Well, that should be fairly straightforward, but I do want to get all this running, make sure we've got all the belts going in the right direction before we figure out a building to go around this. But I also need to build this again over this side. I do want to mirror the whole thing. And that's going to do 20 resources for us, which is fine, but we're already producing about 15 and we've only built a few factories. So we're probably actually going to need like a giant version of this as well. Maybe we could do one that's like twice as long opposite over here or something. Either way, it's going to be a massive distribution hub. So yeah, my best crack on, I guess. Where's my train? Okay, so I've got my speed controller. We can set this to a reasonable speed. We stick a giant cog in there. Look at that. Marvellous. Now let's get this thing hooked up. All right, I think I've got everything moving. It all seems to be going in the right direction. Wonderful. Now I just need to do this all over again on that side. Ooh, I wonder. Could do it with a schematic cannon, you know. In fact, I think I will. But I once again need to go grab a few bits for that, but I think it's going to be worth it because we're going to be building probably one, two, potentially another four over there as well. I mean, at least six of these things. So we may as well make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So we've got our schematic plan here. Let's just do this. And I guess we're going to need to raise that up higher. Then it needs to come out this way a few blocks. And we'll call that distribution one. Because what we might be able to do once we've actually built up a building is, is do the whole thing. But we'll see. Depends if we want them all looking the same or not, I guess. But if we now go to a schematic table, go to distribution one and make that up. And if we chuck the cannon down... Put a schematic in there, and what I do need to do, of course, yep, position the schematic. That would make sense. So it's going to be around here somewhere. And then I want to mirror that. So we want to mirror it 
this way, I think. Yep, look at that. Perfect. Now let's just get it all lined up. That looks like it's in the right place now. Now I just need to grab a clipboard so we can get a materials list. In fact, we can just make one. So this is our checklist. Let's load up a barrel. So I think we're fully loaded. All the settings are correct. Let's just make sure. Yep, we've definitely got everything in there. Let's set this puppy going. And I can actually do a time lapse for once. Look at this. Just in the nick of time, we're done because it's got dark and I'm scared. Oh, geez, I had those guys sneaking up behind me as well. Probably here for revenge for what I did over there. But I do think if that's going to be the width of our building over here, we could definitely have another one next to it and maybe make it twice as long. Because I do want to leave some space around this area to make sure we've got a fluid collection point as well. Because I want to be storing lava and all those sorts of things over here too. Wait a minute, is that an alay? Where did you come from? I mean, there's a few alays in the mansion, but I don't remember setting any of you free. Did one of you accidentally escape, maybe, when I checked? Either way, we'll leave him be. We do need to mend a few bits of this. The vaults never quite work when you use a schematic cannon. But if we just remove one of the dodgy ones, that should fix it. That's the vaults fixed. Now I just need to apply some power and make sure everything is going the right way. Which, because we've mirrored it, it probably won't be. And nope, that is all going the wrong way. Easy fix. We can just remove one of these gearboxes. And there we go. That's better. Everything is now going the correct direction. Brilliant. So I guess now what we need to do is to make a building. And I do have an idea of a pallet. I've got a rough idea in my head of how it's going to look. I think we're going to have sort of two side bits here. And then we're going to have a taller bit in the middle. And that's going to be the connector. And pallet wise, I think I'm going to be making use of acacia. I really do like the sort of metallic look that the mixed fire logs and the mixed acacia logs give. We're going to use a bit of reinforced spruce and some edge cut spruce log. And for the roof, I think I'm going to use mangrove. I want to have a nice bit of colour over here. Well, that's the basic palette. Let's see what we can do. has taken forever but i love it look at that i think that's come out pretty well so you already know the functionality inside i've just tidied it up a little bit I, I probably won't put any floors up here i don't think it's needed to be honest i quite like the fact that it's open and on the outside here i was gonna do mangrove on that roof there but i changed my mind and decided to add a little bit more color so we've gone with warped wood and i think the limestone there really works as well i've added a few pipes and lights and some very cool windows as well and i think with that at least this first building is done. How it's going to look, at least. Because I still do need to work out where the stations are going to go. But obviously, for the trains, they're going to be collecting stuff from here and dropping it off to other factories. Well, that train doesn't actually exist yet. So I can't do the main stations. But I can at least sort out the drop-off station we've got here. And link that up to the two freight trains we've already got. So I'm going to run off now. And I think we're going to do the log train first. I think we'll store all of the wood on this side here. So we need to make sure we can get the log train in over here and offload it via this. So let's go grab the thing. So this is the train we want and we're going to need to connect up something over here. But let's get it over to our new distribution center first. So you have been relieved of duty, Mr. Chicken. Let's take this thing over. Well, I've got the train here and the first thing I've learned is that these bits here are just a tad too low because the train is clipping through them and that's not ideal. But alignment wise, well, this train is just absolutely massive. So I think what I might actually need to do is have a secondary offloading point on this side, just so when a train is this big, we can still get stuff offloaded. So I think as long as we're off that main part of the track there, this should be okay. Although I might rejig all the track around this end of the yard at some point. But in regards to a station, we're going to need to have one, well, pretty much on this bend, and I don't like that. So I'm actually going to just extend this down a little bit further. So let's just rejig a little bit of this track here. So if we have a station about here, that should line up fairly nicely over this side. Now we just need to put an offloader in over this side. And I think putting it right about here will make sense. But I've just realized I don't have any more belts on me. Ah, that's annoying. 
such a long journey home. Maybe I've got some in here. I do not. But I am right next to the ocean, so at least it's easy for me to get some kelp, I suppose. It's going to be much quicker to make some than it will be to go home and get some. So I think that should work. I just need to put an offloader on here now. So let's disassemble the train. Ah, it's on a bend. I can't do that here. Should be able to do it over here, though. So if we disassemble it here... Let's have a look at what we're dealing with inside. So we can literally just get away with putting one right there. That's good. We just had a log underneath. And now if we put this train back on the other track, we should hopefully have it all linking up nicely. But while we're here, we're going to get rid of these Nixie tubes that have been stuck to it forever. So did I put it in the right place? I did. Excellent. So as soon as we get a funnel on there, that is going to start offloading. But before we do that, we need to sort out all the filters over here. And to be honest, I'm going to need to make sure I lock all of these as well. A couple of hours of jiggery pokery later, and I think I've got everything sorted. You may notice the other freight train is just heading off as well. That one's also scheduled to come over here now. But mostly, I've just simplified everything. I really didn't need to have all the big swoopy thing going around here because that was actually going to cause me problems. What occurred to me was that if, for example, I'm using lots and lots of cobble, then, well, the cobble that comes in on the train is going to keep going in the vault. But the train's also going to be bringing, for example, scoria. And that's not going to be able to get in the vault because I'm not using so much of that. And that means that scoria would end up clogging the sort of donut shaped conveyor belt that we had down the front here. Therefore preventing any more cobble from getting off the train and just causing a whole lot of issues. So instead we're now offloading down the bottom here which also means we only need one redstone link just to activate or deactivate this because it doesn't matter if these belts fill up. And the offloading goes over the top here. And what I've also got now is a buffer. So each one of these vaults also has a drawer with a void thing on it so that if for example the, once again the scoria is still coming over and the cobble is needed so it's all going into the vault and so on but the scoria is still coming it can now go into this drawer here and each of these drawers have got six diamond storage upgrades on meaning they can hold about 130,000 on top of what's in the vaults they've got a chute so they can keep the vault filled up and then they've got a void upgrade so that if it does still keep coming it will just get voided and then I've just done exactly the same thing over here on the wood side and that does now mean that everything can work exactly as expected and we don't have our car Cargo trains or our freight trains I should say going over to our main base anymore they just come here instead but that does mean the step one of our distribution center is now done we're going to need more of these buildings so we'll get some of those up over time over here but we also really need a fluid collection and storage point as well but most importantly we're going to need a train so that when we do run out of resources over at our main base we can just send a train off to come here and collect what we need but that's going to have to wait for next episode because I'm absolutely knackered this episode has taken me a week to make and you can probably tell by the amount of landscaping and terraforming we've had to do but I hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one bye, -bye now last episode i placed over 10,000 train tracks destroyed an island cleared a pillager mansion and built the start of my brand new distribution center this time we expand the area even further with a brand new warehouse that's twice the size of the first one add automated fluid transportation and storage and even build a new train or two. But first, look at this. So between episodes, I took a schematic of the first building and then I blasted two more into existence and spent a little bit of time inside faffing about to make it all work. And I also spent a bit of time messing around with the track layout, getting all the signals in and essentially making sure everything works. And as you can see, the trains are still flowing in nicely as they should. And I believe if they're on schedule, the freight train should be here in about 30 seconds. But either way, I'm loving how this distribution hub is coming together. It really is starting to look pretty cool. But we've got a bit of a problem. It's not a big problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. So we've got enough storage here for 60 different items from all of our different farms. We're currently only using about 15 or so, so we've got plenty of space for things as we expand. And of course, we've got much better access than what we had up at the mountain. But what we can't store is fluids. And of course, there are a bunch. There's things like milk and chocolate and honey and all sorts of liquids in this. And I want to be able to store those. And I think we're going to use this area here for liquid storage. And that's what the rail in the middle here is going to be for it will be purely for the train that's collecting all of the liquids or dropping them off but then that leads me to another problem to do that i need lots and lots of fluid tanks and i don't have any at the moment but it's okay i think we can solve this to the airship <laughs> A few minutes later and I've got loads of the fluid tanks as well as hopefully everything else I'm going to need for this. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just work out where I want the tanks. We're going to do three by three tanks. So they're going to be as big as they can possibly be. So how many liquid things are there? Is there a way to find out easily? I have liquid fertilizer, which I didn't even know was a thing. But we've also got experience and hyper experience. We have... Oh, geez. Okay, we have a whole variety of chocolates, but I think we'll probably just stick with the one 
for now. And then, of course, we've got milk, lava, and so on. So, yeah, I have a feeling maybe, like, 12 tanks would be good. And then we can just use them as we need to for, well, whatever we need, I guess. So let's just build up some of these tanks, figure out how tall we want them. So we need to check the scale with the rest of the factory. So... Yeah, maybe that's about right. So let's just get all of these built up. I have a funny feeling we're not going to have anywhere near enough fluid tanks here. Well, I haven't even done half of them and I've already run out of tanks. So I'm definitely going to need a whole lot more. Back to the airship. Well, I'm armed with even more than last time. Hopefully this will be enough. Ah, oh, I'm about 25 short. Dang it. Don't worry, I'm not going to say it again. Right, there we go. That's all the towers in. So one thing I am going to need is a bunch of fluid interfaces. So we need some chutes and some copper casings. So if we just stick a deployer back there, stack a copper in there, and we just need a bunch of chutes. Oh, maybe not 128. Jeez. So let's just make a bunch of those. Once again, 32 is probably too many, but whatever. And what I need to consider is we're going to have loading and offloading sections for this as well. So I think what might make sense is just to have one offloading point. And I believe we can actually filter the fluids. So that's probably going to be our best bet. How do we make smart fluid pipes? Uh, we need some brass sheets. Okay, we can do that. And I would assume that these work in the same way. Yeah, okay. So I imagine we can put sort of filters in there so we can have a number of liquids going through them. Because I think what would be cool would be to actually have two pipes running up here. So I'm thinking purely visual at the moment. We'll get to the technicalities of it in a minute. But my thinking is if we have two pipes here like this, and then we put filters on those, so only certain liquids will go down each pipe. We have a small holding tank here, so only one fluid's going through at a time. And then and we'll have a pipe here that goes over to where the train's going to be. And that'll connect up around there somewhere. It probably needs to be a little bit lower. In fact, let's just bring that down by one. But we can figure that out properly once the actual train comes in. For now, let's work out the rest of this piping. I reckon if we just put a line across the top like this, with a smart pipe going into each one, that should do the trick just nicely. And I think that's looking pretty cool so far as well. Don't worry, I'll crack out some girders soon. Now, where it's going to get a bit trickier is loading up the train. I mean, these tanks here at the front, that could be fairly straightforward. You can literally just do something like this, and then we'll have those connect to the train. But how are we going to do the ones at the back? So I think the first thing I want to do is actually raise these up to the same height as that one there. And I've got an idea of how we can do the ones at the back as well. We might have to go underground. So that's the loading sorted out for the front tanks. Obviously, power's a whole different issue, but we'll get to that. But for the tanks at the back here, I think I'm actually just going to go underground and then have them sort of pop up over here. For example, like that. So that's how they'll look poking out the ground. So let's just quickly get these wired up. And in fact, I don't even need to go underground. I could just do this. If I get myself some brackets and attach these pipes to the floor here, I should be able to reattach the tank here. And that stops the pipes connecting underneath. So we'll just quickly do the same thing here because we want it to connect in the middle there. There we go. And that's how we'll feed the pipes at the front here. And I think it makes sense to put the pump here. Uh, where are they? In my offhand. There we go. So once I get the rest of these set up, I think we just need to work out power at that point, which is going to be an issue. We don't have a power station over here yet. The pipes are in. I'm just going to raise all the collection points up by a block, though, just so they'll fit better with the train when we finally build one. So that's the offloading system and all 12 loading systems. Now what I need to do is figure out power. So until we get a power station here, I do plan on building one possibly next episode and probably over there somewhere. We're going to need some kind of temporary source of power. So what I might do is just stick a wind turbine in here or a couple of wind turbines. And we'll probably end up removing them, but we'll see if we can make them look good first. If we can, we'll keep them. If not, then, well, we'll just get rid of them, I guess. So I need to make myself a bunch of windmill bearings, and I'm going to need lots and lots of wool, which means I need to take a trip home. But that's already looking pretty cool, actually, and adds another splash of colour, too. I like it. Back with some windmill parts. Let's see if we can work something out here. I wonder if we just do, like, a couple of sort of enclosed single-column windmill-type things. Let's see what we can do. So that's the block that's going to be stuck. Do I have my glue? I do. Fantastic. And then we'll just stick a bunch of sails on. That should just work and create power. Excellent. Although we probably want it spinning the other way. Now let's build a little frame around it. See what we can do. 
So I want to make it a little bit wider at the bottom here. So we're using half slabs and these weird little corner bits. In fact, we could actually use those to make up the frame. I think what I might do is if we use framed walls, we can probably get something in the middle here as well. So let's quickly turn this off. Then framed walls. Yep, they sit perfectly in the middle. And let's get that all glued on as well. So that also spins. Yep, that's pretty cool. Though it could do with a roof. So maybe we can get away with using some of these. With some slabs on top. All right, that's looking pretty cool. And I reckon if we grab some copycat panels and maybe some of the andesite fencing like we did on the lift near the start of the series, I think that could look quite cool. I mean, it might look awful, but I guess we're about to find out. So I think copycat panels are made with zinc. That is correct. Awesome. That's probably way too many. But we also need a whole bunch of these as well. So let's just do that. Now let's see how these look. Well, actually, that is pretty good. I mean, it's very simple, but to be honest, I think it's quite effective. Let's just sort out the rest of these walls. All right, well, that's one turbine, but it looks a bit weird on its own. So I think I might do another one or two next to it and just kind of link them all together. I've got three turbines in. That's looking pretty good. Let's not get run over. Now what I need to do is just link them all up. So we'll do that under here. But it's very slow, but we have power here coming from all three of those. What I need to do now, though, is grab myself a rotational speed controller and get it hooked up to all the pipes. And in fact... I do actually need to add some more pipes as well. And by pipes, I of course mean pumps. And I think I've just about got it. I've managed to get it spinning at about 100 RPM with those three windmills. So that's fine for now. We can always upgrade it when we get the power station in. But I think that's looking pretty good. And really, rain again? I'm starting to miss the savannah after all. But in theory, that should now all work. What I need to do now is to build a train here that's going to transport liquids. And then once I've done that, I can work out where the station's going to go. And although we're going to need different stations for when it pulls up to the different things that it's going to be collecting, I can probably link them all to the same thing and literally just stick a clutch in here i think i brought one with me certainly did with a redstone thing on top and we'll basically just cut the power to this whole area whenever there's not a train in the station then as soon as something pulls in it's only going to be connected to one of these at which point the pumps will turn up and whichever one's connected will either fill or unfill at least that's the hope so let's go clean up my inventory, head back to our workshop, and make ourselves a brand new train. So back over here at Beardview Valley, I'm going to build myself a train. But you've seen me build a lot of train engines. More than one or two. And this one, to be honest, isn't going to be too different to the ones we've already got, just probably with a few more pipes on it and a different block palette. But the good news is, if I do this and shake and look around and then turn back... Oh, no, it didn't work. Dang it, I guess I'm going to have to build it myself. train engine done and of course the tender but now we need to actually make some transport wagons for the fluids There we go for a fluid transport carriage that should work quite nicely it's fairly straightforward we've just got three big tanks here got a fluid interface on this side here which will stretch out and hopefully connect to the ones we have at the bottom over in the new area and then we've got the one on the top as well that can either drop off or take whatever it needs to and yes i'm fully aware this is a very tiny train and it's very unusual for me to only leave it with one carriage and that's why we're not going to leave it with just one carriage. But for now, I am going to go take this over. I'm going to test it. I'm going to make sure it all works. And then when it does, we'll add another couple of carriages just to make it look a bit better. But I'm also going to remember to glue it all together this time before I turn it into a train. It is learning. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I think I've actually glued it all properly this time. But as usual, I probably haven't. Let's go check. Oh, it would help if I actually put some train controls and a seat in it. That would, that would really be helpful. So we'll put a seat in there. Some train controls. And a seat for me when I need a ride. Let's try that again. All right, well, it's formed this time. Let's call it Liquid Train. You know the drill. Give me a much better name in the comments and we'll get that sorted. The good news, I don't think we've left anything behind. Excellent. 
That train looks pretty cool, actually. Let's go take it to the new station and... I mean, I had to christen it, I suppose, didn't I? I completely forgot to remove my tiny little train. Out of the way, you. I'm sure that will never happen again. Right, let's take this train over there. One moment, I should grab some train stations first, otherwise we'll be coming straight back. And just as the sun's going down, we have arrived. Let's see if it's actually going to connect. So we can see that everything is at the right height here. That's absolutely fine. One thing I am going to need to do, however, is... Yeah, we don't want two connecting at the same time, so I shouldn't really have them in line. But for now, the station I want to set up is this one, just the drop-off station. So that should just about do it. Okay, right, so that's the one set up for drop-off, but we are going to need to fiddle around with this. So these are four apart. So if we're connected to, say, this one, three spaces, and then that, that would place... Oh, jeez. Okay, right, that is actually quite awkward. I guess an easy solution would just be to reorganize these. I could have them so that they're sort of over by one. So if I just slowly back the train through the station, hopefully we'll only ever see one of these pipes connecting at a time. Let's just slow right down. So that one, then that one. Then that one, then that one. Okay, cool, that's what we want. So if, for example, we were to put a station six blocks back, so one, two, three, four, five, six, so if we have one there, and then another one directly behind it, that should control the first two pipes. So, yep, yeah, that lines up, and obviously one block back, we have this station lining up. So I just need to put in a buttload of stations. Okay, and that should be all of them, because I need basically all of these to link up to the same redstone link. So we're going to need a line of redstone here, block in the middle, with a redstone torch and a link. So this is for the fluid station, we're just going to do double fluid tank, and we're going to link that to this redstone link over here, and hopefully that should stop everything. Look at that, perfect. And then as soon as we pull into the station properly, it should all turn on once I get a whole load of comparators, which I don't have with me. So I guess we're going to have to pop home and get the comparators, but then this whole system should be working. We should have a platform for each one of the stops, so for each liquid we'll have its own little station. And of course we've got the main drop-off station. So we're just going to call that distribution liquid drop. Now let's go get some comparators and finish this off. Ten minutes later and I'm back with some comparators. I really should probably put an express network through the uh, nether at some point, shouldn't I? And with the last comparator down, we can now see that the power has come on, but as soon as I pull the train away, it should hopefully turn off. Yep, look at that. And as we go past the other stations, it's not actually activating it. It's not until we properly pull into a station like that. So which one's this? That's the third station back by the looks of it. But it all seems to be working nicely. No matter which one we go to. Excellent. So now comes the easy bit, I guess. We've only got one liquid that we're currently producing, and that is lava. So I just need to designate one of these places as lava, name the station as such, and make sure the filters are correct. I'm hoping that if we just put a blank one in this side, that should stop anything going that way whatsoever, because, well, the filter's empty. With this filter, we put in lava. Hmm, but we can't drag a liquid over to here. I mean, we can drag a bucket, but we're not transporting lava buckets. Hmm. Let me just ponder the smart fluid pipe here and make sure that it is going to work. Okay, so it looks like we can just use buckets to do it. That is good. So, this filter here should work. That should only let lava pass that point. And if we do the same thing here, put that one there, then lava should go into this first tank here. And I have made lots of filters for all of these. I'm just going to chuck them on there for now so they're ready when we need to, well, add new liquids. We'll call this station lava because whenever a train wants to come collect lava, that's where it's going to need to pull in. But now what we need to do is actually get the lava over here, which means we do need to go back to the savannah. And we might as well take this train over there because we're going to need to line everything up with this one. We've arrived in Stone Valley Peaks and what we need to do is put a couple of storage containers down here and then pump the lava down from up there. So if we go have a look at what we're dealing with, basically this is our nether train. This is the one that goes and collects everything we need from there and the lava gets stored over here in these tanks so what i'll probably do is just connect up these two here probably underneath the ground i guess i don't really want lava flowing through the village so yeah we'll just hook up some pipes to these tanks here we'll pump it down underground and then we'll bring it out over by the station and i guess it's going to make sense to get the pipes in first so let's figure these out so that's the pipe connected up i just need to make sure it's got power so if we just steal the power off of here and send it this way, and then probably just move this down a block to save us on some components. So that's the first one in, but what we're going to need to do is pull the power from there over to the pipe 
every probably 15, 20 blocks or so. It's going to be a long pipeline. A few moments later, we have lava coming through. Excellent stuff. However, I think we might need a couple more containers here. Oh, in fact, with the space we've got, maybe just one more. Now, if we put a pump there, portable storage interface there, and move this station back a block, then if we pull into that station, that should link up. Excellent. Now we just need to get power to here. So let's just go around the back here. And then we'll just steal some power from there. That should load up our train. Yes, look at that. Excellent. So we now have stations set up at both sides. I think we might actually be able to get away with chucking a driver in there, putting this thing on a schedule, and at least filling up that first vat on the other side. Because we're going to need lava next episode for a brand new power plant. So we need to find ourselves a driver, and I need to get myself a train schedule, which means I need to go home again. And I can't really take that train anymore, which means I need to wait, oh, only four minutes this time. That's actually not too bad. But then we can bring our tiny train back here with a lead and a train schedule, send this thing on its way, and, well, hope for the best. Well, I've dared to hope for the best, and, uh, well, we, we didn't get the best. We didn't get anywhere near it. So I'm having a very strange problem. You may notice I've got a few glass bits of pipe here. That's so I can see where the lava's going. And it's all to do with these filters. So when a train comes in, it starts pumping the lava and it's not going past this filter unless I take it off and put it back on again. Weird, right? And then the same thing's happening up here. I've tried experimenting. I've tried blocking the lava. So this will not allow lava through. This one will allow lava and so on. And it works fine if I put the filters on while the train is in the station. However, when the train drives off and then comes back, the lava just gets trapped again down there. And I honestly, I cannot figure it out. And the train only arrives once a day, so this has taken quite a while. Quite a while to figure out that I'm, I'm either doing something wrong or something's broken. I, I don't really know. So I'm going to do something slightly different. And that is to hope once again that we never need to store more than six liquids here. Because what I'm actually going to do is completely remove this sort of top pipe and everything that goes along here. At least from a functionality point of view. I do quite like how it looks. And we're going to use these top ones here as the drop-off points and the bottom ones as the collection points. And that way we can just have two vats of lava, two vats of milk and so on. Which means I don't need this whole big bit of framework anymore and we've got a bit of jiggery pokery to do. So I best crack on. So a bit of a shuffle later, I think we're good. The train has also pulled in. I've reset its schedule so it now goes into the lava drop-off. As you can see, the lava's going into there, and then it instantly gets pushed into this one at the back. And then what I've done is I've removed the bracket that was on this one, so now this pump here will actually pull from both of these. So if we want the train to fill up, in theory, I should just be able to reverse it to the next station. Or the previous station, I should say. So if we pull into lava collect... It now should be pulling the lava out of the tanks. And, yep, look at that. It's, it's filling up the train again. In fact, we can see that visually here. So, it works. It's much simpler. We don't have to faff around with filters. And we don't have to do any more troubleshooting. But that's good. I mean, it's a simpler system and we don't get to use the filters. But I clearly don't understand them or how they work. And that also means that any other liquid trains, we can just assign them to one of the five remaining tanks. So we're good. Not quite what I hoped for, but it does the job. So after the last episode, I had a lot of questions about why I've built a massive distribution center 6,000 blocks away from anything else. And there's a few reasons, to be perfectly honest. One of them is that this is not just going to be a sort of distribution hub for all of these items here. It is also going to be a sort of large processing facility. So there's going to be a bunch of different factories around here that are going to be processing the raw goods that we're making and turning them into more useful things. So, for example, we'll have a big building that's just going to process all of the sand into all the different things that we can get from sand, which I think we can get like red sand, we can get sandstone, we can get gold, we can get dead bushes, we can get all sorts. And, of course, glass. So we're going to end up with a whole bunch of different processing facilities over here. But the other question was, how am I going to access these resources? Because if everything's stored over here, and my main base is 6,000 blocks that way, what good is that? But don't worry, I have a plan. So as you should know, with each of these storage facilities, be it liquid or solid, we've actually got collection points as well as a drop-off point. So this is the drop-off point for these, and these are individual collection points for all of the different resources. And all of these are going to be linked up to the station, so if a train pulls into the spruce station, that's what it's going to load up on. And that's not only going to be useful for moving goods around here and taking them to the factories where they're needed, but it also means I can have a personal delivery train. But to explain this, we need to head back to our main base. Right, and here we are, we have arrived. Perfect. So, the plan. Now that the logging and freight trains are no longer coming over here and dropping stuff off, 
we've got a bit of space to work with. And we're going to make ourselves a personal delivery train, which basically means it's, it's a train that's not going to run on a schedule. And the concept is pretty simple and hopefully it's going to work. So if, for example, I'm over here, I'm working away and, oh, in fact, I've got a good example here. I've got no stone. What I want to be able to do is come outside, grab a schedule off the wall, and then send it off to go collect what I need. So the only one we've got set up at the moment is lava. So if I needed lava, I would just basically tell it to go get some lava. I'd send off my liquid train, it'd go there, get lava, and then come back and drop it off. I mean, lava wasn't the best example because we don't store liquids over here, but it's the only one that I've actually set up the station for. But once I've done them all, we'll have a great big list here. We'll make sure we prefix them all so we know exactly which district it is. And I'll just be able to select cobble, spruce, or whatever it is I need the train to go get. Even if I need multiple resources, I can probably get away with that as well. And yeah, it will just go off, get what it needs, come back, and drop it off straight into the system. I mean, it's not going to be instant but if i see something getting low it means i can just essentially put in an order and the other good news is we've actually got a couple of platforms here we're not using so i'm gonna need to build something so we can offload anything that pulls into platform two but i really do think this could work quite nicely so i guess the first thing i need to do is to build yet another train so i'm just gonna stand here do a weird transition and now the train's ready look at that and once again it's pretty much the same layout as every other train that i've built but it's it's white this time i use diorite and because it's gonna be picking up random goods from that warehouse at the other side and bringing them back i've just decided to give it a variety of carriages although there's something weird going on with this one here because the train is currently assembled but if i quickly disassemble it look that's how it's supposed to look it's supposed to be all nice and clean but then whenever i assemble it goes wonky so i guess i'm gonna have to try a different material for that but that's probably not a bad thing the white there and the white there is maybe a little bit too much white anyway but i'm not gonna bother sorting that out right now before we get this train set up at the other end i want to make sure that it's actually gonna be able to offload things so this one here is our storage container it's absolutely round for of barrels and we've also got sort of collection points at the right heights so when it goes to the other end it should connect just fine and for the exit point i've actually put it on top here so that's what we're going to do we're going to have a vertical exit point so we're going to sort of bring the goods over and then drop them down into the vaults and we don't need to worry about hooking up the other three vaults because we don't actually use them for anything so i guess the first thing i need to do is work out where i actually put the storage interface i think it was on this row here let's just quickly find out Yep, it is indeed. Right, so at least we know where that's going to go. And to be honest, we might as well put them over the other tracks as well, just to make things look a bit better. So this should be quite easy to set up. We'll just have everything going down directly into the vault. And I believe I can actually deposit things directly onto a belt by doing this. No, I can't. Ah, dang it. That's fine, not a problem. We'll just raise all this up by another block because I don't want to, uh, you know, lower the conveyor belt because then it's going to go through the train and we don't want that. But it should still be able to connect from there. Yes, beautiful. So let's just quickly move all this up a block. And that should just about do it. Perfect. And it doesn't look too bad either. So I need to take this train for a spin down to the distribution center. And once we're there, I can set up a whole bunch of new stations and make sure that this train can connect to any station that we've got over there. And that means it'll be able to bring back any resource I request. But this is probably going to be quite a boring process. So once it's done, I'll just show you how it works. Well, thankfully, that didn't actually take too long. I mean, it's a little bit messy. We're going to have to figure out a way to hide these. I mean, maybe like a small sort of control station would make sense here. But over this side, we can't really do much until we build the power plant and get rid of these things. So yeah, they're just kind of jammed in for now. But each station has been named accordingly. They're just called Order Acacia. They're all prefixed with order. So whatever it is we want to order, we know exactly what station to send them to. And they should all line up with our brand new train as well. But I think the best way to test that is going to be to go over to the other warehouse where there's not actually things that will load and over here i've done the same thing i've not put the redstone in yet but i have got them all lined up and i've done the same for the second row because of course this warehouse is twice as big but it does mean i think currently the train's actually lined up at the backmost station and if we make sure it doesn't have a redstone signal going to it it will connect but as soon as we set that to receive it will disconnect so that tells me that it is all going to work what is an issue though is that i don't have any leads or schedules with me as always so let's go take this train home and then we'll send it back here to collect an order for for us and just see if it works and i've also loaded this train up with coal because well it's just a delivery train i need it to be fast so i've got myself a driver and i've once again used to fly because that way i can actually sit behind and still control the train without having to replace him which is good but more importantly i've also now got a schedule and well we need to send him off to go pick something up and just test it really hope it works 
So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an order for clay. Why not? And what we want it to do is to pick up, let's say, 10 stacks. That's fine, just for a test. And if we search up clay over here, we can just drag clay balls. That's what we've got over there. And then we'll do an order of cobble. Once again, we'll just do 10 stacks of that and put the filter in. And then we'll do an order for wood as well. Let's just grab some mangrove. Because that way, it's going to have to use another platform. And once again, we'll send that to 10 stacks. And then we just want it to come back here. And once it gets here, I don't want it to do anything, basically, unless the station gets power. So in theory, if I give this to this guy, he should go get everything. Let's sit down, enjoy the ride, and, well, see what happens. But if this works first time, I'm going to be amazed. Well, I've arrived at the warehouses, but, uh, well... It's currently blocked, so we're just waiting for that train to leave. Once it finishes off loading, we should pull into that same platform. In fact, this is a really good opportunity for me to run away. And of course, it starts raining. Classic. But if we stand here, we should see everything in action. Here it comes. So it should stop next to clay first. Seven, eight, nine, ten stacks of that. Yep, that looked about right. Now it should grab cobble. Oh, it's working. This is amazing. And now it should go round and then come back in again and come get some mangrove. In fact, I'm going to get ready to hop back on the train. So we'll watch this one from here. We'll just make sure it connects. Well, looks like it's working. Oh, and we're off again already. And now hopefully we should arrive safely at the other end. And then the train will offload and just sit there until we're ready for another order. Now, this should be the simpler part of the test. I don't expect any problems here, except maybe from those creepers. I should probably go to bed. Let's quickly hop out of the train, jump up here, and it should just all offload nicely. And in theory, the train shouldn't drive off when it's done. It should just stay here. And that looks to be the case. Amazing. It works. So that means we now have our very own delivery service. So anytime we're running low on resources here, as long as it's something we're farming and storing over there, we can just send off for it. I can't believe that worked. But sadly, that is pretty much all we've got time for today. Yeah. However, before you head off, let me stop you right there. I just want to say a huge thank you for all the epic support this year. You've all been absolutely incredible. And as an extra special thank you to all my patron supporters and channel members, by the time this video goes out, this world will be available to you guys for download. And I've even been nice and moved world spawn to over here at Beardew Valley. But the world will be exactly as it is pretty much at this exact moment. The only thing you probably won't have would be the web displays thing and the train map. So if you do want that, you're going to need to install the track map and the web displays mods. But other than that, everything should work absolutely fine. So once again, just a huge thank you for watching the videos and supporting this series. You've all been absolutely incredible. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you on the next episode. And hopefully next year I'll be less injured so I can get back on my normal schedule. Last time on my perfect world, I tripled the size of my distribution center, added liquid storage and distribution to the mix and I even built myself a personal ordering and delivery service. This time I come up with a variety of ways to hide all the stations for our distribution center as well as building a brand new power station that will be able to produce over 1 million stress units eventually. And with the plans we have going on in this area, we're likely going to need them. And later on, we'll also get some names on those shiny new trains as well. Standing next to these filters still makes me sad. I will figure them out one day. And I'm looking forward to removing these monstrosities once we get some proper power in as well. But I think we're going to start off the episode with maybe hiding some of these stations, I think. I don't really know what we're going to do about these ones yet because, well, there's not a lot of space currently. So that one's probably going to wait till after the power station because then we can remove all of these. And I also don't really want to have the same thing hiding all of them. But either way, they definitely all need to be hidden. They're looking pretty rough just sitting out there on the grass. And something obvious to hide at least one of these sections in, I might even do one on the other side as well, so they're far enough away, would be to have some kind of a signaling station. So I jumped on Pinterest, I had a little look around, I found loads of examples, and the main thing I noticed is that they're all two stories tall, which kind of makes sense because they're supposed to be for looking out over train junctions, and that's the other thing. They're not really supposed to be here. It would make more sense if there was one over here by all these massive junctions. But what are you going to do? Our stations need to go there, so that's where we're going to have one. And I've got an idea of what resources I want to use for this, which does bring with it a slight problem, because I'm fairly sure we don't have any dripstone here whatsoever, and we've only got 54 over at our main storage. And yes, I did just take a five-minute train ride in order to finish that sentence. But we need to go get ourselves some more dripstone. The other things I'm going to use for this build are pretty much just going to be spruce, mangrove, and birch. So, well, we certainly don't need to worry about that. We've got thousands of those. But yeah, dripstone, definitely a problem. So let's take our big drill. We'll take some of these. We're going to need some redstone torches. Take that just in case. And let's jump in the mines to see if we can find some dripstone. I'm fairly sure that there is some that's exposed, but maybe not much. And as you can see, 
see we've been doing a buttload of mining down here. We've got lots of huge caverns and spaces, but I'm fairly sure in one of these directions was it this, this way? This way? Is that the dripstone? Well, there is a tiny patch there, but I'm sure I saw more than that. Let's have a little look down this way as well. Well, it's looking like this might be the only exposed patch, so I think what I'm going to do is just chuck down my drill again and send it off, and we'll just dig this bit out in the meantime. There's not a lot, but at least it will get us started. Well, that small deposit actually had three and a half stacks, which wasn't too bad. And to be honest, it's probably going to be enough for today's project. We don't need loads for a signaling tower. And we've run into more water over here as well. So that's just awkward. Oh, although, hello, loads of dripstone. Look at this. Let's quickly nab a bit more of this, grab our machine, and we can run away. We've probably got everything we need now. So I think we've gathered all the extra resources we need. We should be able to get the rest from our storage. So let's just grab a few more bits, and then we'll head back over to the new area and see how we get on with this tiny building, I guess. So this is the area we're working with. It's probably not going to be a particularly interesting build, so I'm just going to put on some beats and get this done. <laughs> A short while later i think that's actually come out quite well we have a tiny little signaling booth here and we can still access all the stations as well they're all in here obviously this one is currently in use that's the log unloader and then we have our stations for all the different wood types and upstairs i've just turned it into a small storage room i don't really know what to do with it to be honest but that's looking pretty good although i don't really know what i'm going to be doing with the terrain around here yet i'll probably just fill that space with something irrelevant uh but yeah power station i think i want to do that there so we're not going to build this out any further just yet but i think that works Works quite nicely so with that done i guess we can move on to the power plant now and i'm looking at the space around here there's quite a big area here we could do it there maybe but i quite like the idea of actually having it on this corner here it feels a little bit more central easy access from that side so yeah i think that's what we're gonna do it's also fairly close to the lava which is what we're initially going to be using to power it but eventually it will be powered by blaze cakes so we need to bear that in mind now where to begin i guess figuring out what i want to actually build it with would probably be a good start so let's figure out a block palette and i'll meet you back here once i've got some semblance of a plan for this thing i guess so i've been playing around with some pallets and i've also made myself over a thousand fluid tanks and i think i've finally come up with something i want to use so we are going to be using some of the similar blocks to what we've used over here and we're also going to be sort of combining it with the jankiness of the village that we built in the savannah and because this power plant's going to be taking up quite a big area here i didn't want it all being the same block so we're going to use some of this acacia in reference to this building over here we're going to use some bonded spruce planks we're going to use a little bit of cut deep slate we're going to use bricks and we're going to use limestone i know it looks weird it does seem like a very strange palette choice but i think we can use the combination of mangrove and deep slate for the roofs to kind of tie it all together and we'll just have like a bunch of different buildings kind of all jammed together that look a bit like a power station and then of course we're going to be using the fluid tanks as well so uh, yeah this should hopefully maybe work maybe with a stone foundation as well because i do like putting my buildings on foundation i just i can't help myself although i didn't with that one yay me then i guess the question is do i want to do the building first and try and fit everything in or do i build everything up and then try and wrap a building around it this is always a tough call this one hmm especially when you don't have a proper plan I think what I'll probably do is mark out the foundation and then maybe mark out where the sort of four big power station -y bits are going to go, the actual steam engines, because we're going to have four full-size steam engines in here. So, yeah, it's going to take up quite a bit of space. But if we just mark out where they're going to go, then I guess we can just sort of make sure that the part of the building where they are is taller than the rest of the building, right? You can tell I'm not very confident about this build, can't you? Let's just get a foundation down and maybe mark out where a few bits of the building could potentially go and just try and work it out as we go along. I'm sure it'll be fine. So let's maybe have a brick building over this side. And I think maybe we can sort of run a spruce bit through the middle. And if we make this the tall bit, this might give us enough room for the steam engines. And then maybe deep slate for this section. We could even put like a big entrance in there potentially. And then maybe the acacia over here. And what I'm currently thinking is if we have this bit in the middle being quite tall and then sort of stack some chimneys on top of that, we can have a bit sticking out this side, which would be quite large. That could maybe house the sort of lava 
loading area, potentially. We can have a small sloped brick building on the side, and then maybe just sort of a taller bit over here, potentially. I don't know. I think that could potentially work. Let's get the rest of the foundation in, maybe mark out where the boilers can go and how it's all going to set up on the inside and then get the rest of the building up and hope for the best. Hope is always a good plan. So I want four steam engines in here, but I don't think it's actually going to be wide enough. I don't think there's enough space in between the two tracks to be able to get them in and actually be able to get around the building. So maybe I should put them across this way instead, because this part of the building is probably going to be tall anyway, because I think I want to do like a limestone second floor. Basically a nod to this bit where we've got the acacia, the mangrove and the limestone. I kind of want a bit of that effect over here as well. So if we put the tanks maybe there and then all next to each other, is there going to be enough space here? I reckon we can get away with that. And then we've got plenty of space here for loading up all the lava and everything. Yeah, I think this could work. So let's build up the shape of these bits here a little bit more. So we want this one to be a slopey roof. So we'll start it quite low, maybe just three blocks tall. And then just a shallow slope like that, I think should do it. And I don't know how this is going to tie together yet. So let's just replicate that on this side. You can always remove some of these internal walls when we need to. But I think for getting the frame in, it makes sense to actually make it look right. Then for the acacia wall, we'll go maybe four high. And I want to have a section on top of this, but I also want to have a border. But maybe we could do like a small sloped roof or something in there for the border. And then kind of set back the top level. So we'd actually put the limestone in at this level here. And then that would go up to level with this building here, I guess. So we'd probably need a couple of blocks there just to finish that off. Then we'll go this way. And I think we'll stay in line with that because this spruce bit, I want this to be quite a tall tower. So I think it makes sense just to cut across here. We can, of course, get rid of all these internal bits when we don't need them because, uh, yeah, we're going to need the space for the boilers. But it's definitely going to help me see the shape a bit better if I do it like this. So let's build up some walls around here. And then I think maybe we can put another sloped roof in over here not a big one though just something small like that maybe and then we'll make this bit nice and tall because we're gonna need the space for the boilers okay i think this could work we'll get the big sprucey bit in and then we'll have some massive chimneys on top of that gonna have to start putting some of these roofs in soon though so i don't get confused looking at this though this building is going to be going a bit weirdly into the side of that so i think i'm actually going to pull this out maybe a couple of blocks and have this bit stick out a bit more so let's just do a quick bit of remodeling so let's have a look now okay that makes much more sense and once we get the roofs on it will make even more sense but i should probably go to bed it's getting pretty dangerous around here so i'm liking the shape so far we're definitely going to have enough vertical space for these Provided I make this spruce bit here nice and tall. So let's see what we can do. So maybe something about that height, which once we've got the chimneys on top, that should look pretty good. And I'm looking at this as well. I'm thinking I might actually make this little side building a little bit smaller as well. Maybe take a couple of blocks off just so we can make sure we've got more space in the front here, which means, oh geez, means I need to move this forward two blocks as well. And it's raining. Fantastic. There we go. The proportions are looking a little bit better now, methinks. So let's work out this last building and then we'll get some roofs on and some chimneys, I guess. And I think that shape there is going to work nicely. Okay, so that's the core parts of the building down. What I need to do now is probably to get some roofs on because once I get the roofs on, I can see how tall this bit needs to be and how tall the chimneys need to be. And then we can crack on with the interior. So I'll bring you back in once we're a bit more sheltered from this rain. This continuous rain. Now I've got the roofs in, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. But I think I need to get the chimneys in to really pull it together. And for the chimneys themselves, we're going to be using these massive copper tanks. And we want these things to be absolutely ginormous. And if we hit them with a wrench, it will get rid of the glass bit on the side. So yeah, I think that height looks about right. However, there's a cool trick we can do with the top here. If we take out a couple of these and then just make sure all of those get turned back, it makes it look very cool at the top there. And to be honest, I think they could do with being a little bit more chunky down the bottom here as well. So maybe we could do something like this. Let's just try it on this side. Just about fits on this roof. How does that look? Oh, yes, that's cool. I like that. Yep, we're definitely doing that all the way around. Using up so many fluid tanks. And I haven't even got to the bit that's actually going to generate the power yet. So let's just make sure I turn all of these solids. All right, looking good. But I don't think I want to go any further with the detail. I don't really want to be trying to figure out where the windows are going to go or anything like that just yet because I don't even know if this is 100% actually going to fit everything in. So let's just quickly take down these interior walls we know we don't need and see exactly what space we're working with. Oh, look at that. We've got loads of space. Yeah, this should be fine. 
But I guess the big test is the fluid tanks. We need them to be able to be eight tall or nine in total, actually, because we need blaze burners on the bottom. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, okay, so we can get them eight tall. But we're going to need to make a little bit of space on the roof here because, well, we need to be able to pump water into these things. And I think we're going to do that from above. So it's going to be a bit tight, but it looks like we can get away with it. Let's just build up the other boilers here. All right, cool. We can make this work. And hopefully we haven't messed up the outside. No, that's all still looking good. That chimney is the one I was worried about. But now I need to go and grab all the stuff and things that are actually going to enable me to make this. And uh, yeah, I should really consider lighting this place up at some point. I have my brightness turned up very high at the moment, so it looks bright even when I'm recording at night it's just a better experience for you guys but as a result it means i often do forget to light things up and this happens just stuff everywhere hanging out but that's enough waffle and everything's on fire excellent but we need to head back and pick up all the things we need to build a lovely power plant the inside of it that is the outside we'll get to that later so i've managed to get together most of what i need however i've only got one blaze burner which isn't ideal so we need to make ourselves some more of those and for that i think we need these sheets let's dump a couple of these things in my bag we're probably gonna need more than that because i think we need four sheets per blaze burner and i need another 26 and i can currently only do 16 so yeah we definitely need to go flatten some more iron now we've got a bunch of empty blaze burners it's time to go capture ourselves some blaze and the easiest way to do that is just going to be to break into our little mob farm over here so if we have a little nose in here we should be able to grab some from here look at that and we can make our getaway. Now to get this thing built. And I think I'm going to get the blaze burners down first. Because that's fairly straightforward. We know what we're doing here. We just need nine under each one. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't bring it up. I miscounted. To be fair, that also means I didn't make enough steam engines. So at least we found that out now. I'll be back in a minute. there we go now we have enough so next up let's get the steam engines in in fact no let's sort out the water so my plan for the water is fairly simple we're just going to have a line of pipes along the back here we're going to have mechanical pumps going in like this we'll have three on each one don't need that one and because these can all be waterlogged in theory i should just be able to put water along the back here and along this wall and it should all fill up but i do need to get some more of these spruce planks to put a floor in first otherwise we're gonna be making a right mess so let's just quickly fill this out and hopefully that's gonna work if not we might need to put another layer of water on to make sure the water source is being renewed but i think that works i don't know minecraft water's weird so next up let's get all the steam engines on and we need loads of these we're gonna have nine on each one of these because essentially what we're aiming for here are level nine boilers which is the highest level you can get until you feed them with blaze cakes but if we have a level nine boiler with nine of these on as well as making sure the water is at maximum and the heat is well as much as we can get which with lava is going to be 50 percent heat the blaze cakes will take it all the way up but that will give us a level nine boiler and each one of these will produce 140 47,000 stress units. So once we've got all four up and running, that's over half a million. And eventually, once we get blaze cakes, we'll have over a million SU units from here. And, uh, well, hopefully that'll be more than enough. I mean, even half a million is going to be great. So now to get these steam engines connected up. So if we just do that, that, and that, I think this is going to be the easiest way. Then we can just extend the shaft out and it should connect to all of them. And then if we put shafts through all of those and attach a belt, that will attach all of these together. So that's all going to output as sort of one power section i guess is the best way of putting it but basically they're all now joined together that's what we want something else we're going to want is a kickstart for this system as well and for the kickstart i think what we're going to do is we're just going to hide a hand crank around the back here that just goes to its own little water pool so we can give it the kickstart when it needs it so let's just make a small reservoir down here get some water in stick a pipe there fill the floor in and put a copper casing and if we stick a cog there and stick a hand crank on top We'll just make that glass, but we should be able to just pump water into there. So is that facing the right way? No, nope, it's not facing the right way. Let's do that. And there we go. So that will put water in and then that will give it a kickstart. But in order for that kickstart to actually do anything, I need to connect up the cogs at the side here so we can actually pump water into it. Let me grab a cog because we're going to have a big flood as soon as I open this. So I think what I want to do here is actually speed it up. So if we put a speed controller in, we put that there, get a couple of gearboxes in, and that should all be connected now. Excellent. So in theory, 
If I power this just a little bit, it should start rotating everything and just running on idle power because even though we haven't actually put any fuel in these little dudes down here yet, there is a small amount of heat in them and I don't know if idle power is going to be enough to keep it running, but we'll see. So let's stand here, pump water for a moment, see what happens. So the idle power is or was spinning ever so slightly. However, if we say, for example, give a quick bit of fuel, have we got any good fuel on us? Nope, we don't. So uh, we'll get the fuel wired up. But once these are also fueled, when we give it a little kickstart like that, it all should kick in and everything should start moving really, really fast. And we should have a working power plant. So for fuel, the first thing we're gonna need to do is to get lava over here. And I'm thinking, We'll just store a tank of it over here. And what we want to be doing is pulling it from over there. So I think what I'll probably do is literally just have a pipe that comes out of the side here. And then we'll just go underground and pump it straight up into the tank. I think that's going to be our best bet. I've set up a few janky power lines and, uh, well, we're actually managing to pipe it over here now, which is nice. We will, of course, tidy all that up once we remove these things and replace that power with this power anyway. But for now, I just want to make sure we've got enough lava to get things started. So the next thing to do is going to be to set up some belts and, of course, the arms that are going to do all the work for us. And for this delivery system, we're going to need basically a circle of belts, almost a full circle of belts. Something like that should do the trick. We'll just make sure that these belts are going to be powered correctly as well. So that should do the trick just nicely. Speaking of nicely, let's put some casing on these belts as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a spout here. So this is where the buckets are going to get refilled. So we'll stick a pump in here, facing that way. The small cog on top, so that should power all of that just nicely. We'll have a vault for storing the lava buckets, a funnel so they can all come out and go this way. And I think I want to have one arm for each one of these things. So if we put them, let's say, opposite these panels, just so they're evenly spread. I will hook these up properly later. For now, let's just get the positioning correct. Something like that. Then we're going to want to power them as well. So we'll just do the same thing on both sides here. We're going to want a drop-off point for the empty buckets so we'll put those there and do i have one for a filter i do look at that so they'll dump their empty buckets in there which will then go onto this belt loop back round get filled up go back around here get picked up by these guys put in there yep this should all work actually it's not quite gonna work i need to move these because i need the power supply to actually be uh well, I need it to be accessible, don't I? So let's put the power supply in first, like that. And same on this side. Now I reckon we can probably put a vault in the middle here. And if we were to put two thingies there for them and them, that should be out of reach. Should we quickly check? So if we wanted to drop off there and pick up from along here, for example. Yep, okay, it can reach. There were no errors there. This is good. So that means we can just have one funnel there for that. And this belt doesn't need to be anywhere near as long. So that's the belts hooked up. Hopefully they're going to go in the right direction. But it has just occurred to me I haven't actually hooked up these arms properly yet. So what I'm going to do is probably dig a hole underneath. Because that's going to be the easiest way for me to actually access these things. So the first arm is going to feed the first nine blaze burners. It's going to drop off its buckets in there. And it's going to pick them up from along here. That should work. It says one selected interaction point was out of range. That's probably the one that was over here. Now we've just got to set up the rest of these. And hopefully we'll be good to go. Right, I think I'm finally ready. I think we're all set up. I just need to load up some more empty buckets into this thing. And let's see if we can get this thing started. It's not... Quiet, starting, and I think it's to do with the water. Uh, yes, that, that, that cog is entirely the wrong way around. Not a problem, that should do the trick. So let's give it some water, give it a kick. Still doesn't seem to be kicking in. It's not getting the water. What is wrong with the water? Ah, well, that'll help. Let's try that again, third time's the charm. Um, no right okay i see so this water here is not replenishing that was always a potential problem and adding another layer of water in will hopefully solve that problem we'll see i guess in fact now we've done it like that we can probably actually simplify this a bit as well so i can put the cog back around that way and if we just stick all the pumps in like this that should solve the water problem Hopefully. I've said that a few times now. Maybe this will be the one if I spin the pumps around to face the right way. Jeez. Please let this be the last attempt. Yeah, look at that. Everything shot up straight away. Amazing. 
We've got plenty of lava lined up, waiting to go in. We've got the lava being pumped through from the other place. Oh, we've done it. We've got all the power. But I guess the question is, how much power do we actually have? And to answer that, I think it's only right that we build ourselves a display board. So that's got the power to that running. We just need to get ourselves a stressometer. That's what we need. But how do you make one of those? Uh, a compass and a sight casing to make a speedometer. And then we can turn that into a stressometer. Okay, nice and easy. I like this. So we'll just stick this in here and then we'll do some display board stuff. So the first one, we want to see how much has been used and we want the stress in SU. Yep. And we will we'll have that online too. So we're using 15,000. How are we using 15,000? I suppose we do have it turned up like uber fast, don't we? So we don't actually need it this fast at the power plant. We want to be able to adjust the speed elsewhere and that halves the amount we're using just to power this plant in the first place. And that should Still be keeping up with water. Yeah, we're fine. So that's good. A 50% power saving already. So next up, we want how much we've got available. We'll have that on line three. And we have... Oh, probably help if I set it to remaining SU. There we go. We have 582,000 remaining. That is incredible. But we still need one more. So we'll jam one around the back here as well. Oh, I need to still rebuild this floor yet, don't I? But this one here is going to show the total capacity that we actually have in the whole thing. And let's get the spacing on that right as well. Okay, fantastic. So capacity is 589,000. That's awesome. That should keep us going for a very long time. But now I've just got a bit of tidying up to do around here on the inside. So I'm going to spend a bit of time doing this. I'll bring you back in once it looks a little bit nicer. I don't really know what we're going to do with all the space. I'm sure we'll figure something else. And I also need to get rid of these three turbine things and link up the power over there potentially. Still haven't quite decided yet, but I think I do want to get rid of those things. They're a bit monstrous, aren't they? Over the next few hours, I watched the ultimate Christmas film, Die Hard, of course, and I got a bit carried away with the building. First off, I sorted the exterior of the power plant, adding in some windows inspired by a recent tour of Stam's World. You should go check that out. The man's a building genius. I textured the walls, finished off the roofs, and began terraforming around the sides. With the addition of some crossing points, a whole load of gravel, and of course, some gravel and dirt variants to mess up the track edges, I blended the terrain to get a more natural look. I also dumped down a couple of gas storage tanks because I wanted to and I think they came out okay and now we have an area that's starting to come together at least in one small part of it we've still got loads more to do but inside I added some levers and redstone links so I can control the turbines and turn them off until we need them dumped around some fluid tanks a few barrels and a catwalk to give it some life so I think I'm actually done building for the day and it was a mission but I absolutely love it I think that's come out really nice and hopefully that helps set the tone for the area as well now we do still have a couple of trains to name from last episode but as I'm away over the Christmas holidays I'm actually pre-recording this video before the last one even goes out so I am yet to see your suggestions but I'm sure they're fantastic so we'll get the two new trains we built last episode named in the next episode which will be at the start of the new year but until then I hope you have a fantastic new year thanks for watching and all the epic support as always and I'll see you on the next one you should also subscribe Happy New Year, everyone. I'm back. I'm hyped. My wrist works again, and I've got some big plans for this area down here. So last episode, I built this power station over here, which once we get it fed with blaze cakes, is going to produce over a million SU, and that should hopefully cover the whole area. And I also built a signal in station here, which I have added a few more windows into, but I, I actually need a bit more glass. Oh, geez, the train's moving. But yeah, I need to get a bit more glass to finish that off. But it did occur to me that they can't really use it to see over the track if there's no windows there for them to actually be able to see. But today, we're going to move outside the confines of this circular rail and build our first processing plants. So I'm getting through a lot of building materials over here and for future projects I'm going to need lots of certain things. So it's about time we automated the production of more stuff. Starting with sand. Now we're already producing sand of course in a big old factory on the other side of the world but I want to create all the things we get from sand. Primarily glass, sandstone, quartz and terracotta. As a side product, we'll also get a little bit of gold, which is nice, but that's not the priority. I also need to start thinking about the layout of this town in regards to roads and things like that and where all the other buildings are going to go. And also, as they pull in and we manage to catch them, there's a couple of trains we still need to name as well from a couple of episodes ago, so we'll get on that. Basically, it's going to be a pretty busy day. Now, first things first, I think we're going to need a great big building to be able to start processing stuff. We'll put the sand stuff in it for now, and if there's space, we may add some more stuff later. Question is, where do we put it? I mean, I could put it over here somewhere... I still don't really know what to do about the mansion. I don't think it's going to fit in with the style of this place. So I may have to tear it down. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I like the location and I have ideas of what I want to put over there. I just don't think that building is going to be suitable. But that's for another episode. But now what I should probably do is mark out where a few of the roads are going to go and figure out where to put this building. Maybe over there somewhere? Who knows? Let's grab some blocks and mark some stuff out. Oh, there's one of the trains. So this one's the liquid lava train. We've had amazing suggestions. In fact, we've had absolutely hundreds of suggestions for naming the two trains we still need to. 
And the name we're going with was suggested by Kyle Derhood, and that is the Liquimotive, which I think just works really well. So you can be on your way, and thank you very much, Kyle, for the suggestion. Right, now let's plan out some boundaries around here. Well, I've made a right mess of that, but hopefully that helps give a bit of an idea of what I'm thinking. We're going to have a road that runs around the outside of this rail on this side here. We'll have an entrance here, which is going to go in and come out again over this way. So we've just got sort of a loop. Pretend that bit there doesn't exist. And then it's also going to connect, go across the rail and connect up out that way as well. So I think that should work. And then we're going to stick a big old building today over this area here. But before I can do that, I need to go do some resource gathering. I should be able to scavenge a whole bunch of it from storage, but I have a feeling we're also going to need to craft some things and do a little bit of mining too. Because although I don't know what the building is going to look like, I do know what I want to use to build it out of. Cue the resource gathering montage. got enough to get started so let's build a factory and I guess I'm just gonna place the first block here and see how we go I've had a lot of fun with this build, but I think it's finally done, at least from the outside, and that's looking pretty cool, I think. It did actually look a little bit like a school at first, so I added this bit on top, and it definitely looks more like a factory. And you may have noticed during that build as well, we were using these brand new catwalks, which we didn't have access to before, and these are actually from the Create Deco mod. But it looks like I've missed a railing there. But Create Deco is now available for 120 on Forge, so I figured I should probably add it in, because it just adds a few more detaily bits we can use like this, as well as some other bits and bobs like shipping containers and train holes and so on but personally i don't really like the train holes for actual use on trains they're too round for my liking so don't expect to see any of those on trains but i'm sure we'll use them elsewhere but the best news is this building is absolutely huge this is just the ground floor here and of course we've got extra space upstairs which i don't really know how we're going to access or what we're going to do with it really because i think we're actually going to start down the bottom here or are we because maybe i should build a cobble generator first and just sort of jam it in one of these towers up here because although Although we're bringing over loads of stuff from the savannah, I don't think it's going to be coming over quickly enough for me to actually be able to use it effectively in a whole factory. So we should probably start with its own source of cobble, which we'll just convert straight into sand, and then that should give us all we need to run this factory. But in order to do any of this, I need to head back to storage. We need to basically grab lots and lots of stuff we need for create, and I think it's about time I do something I've been meaning to do in regards to that for a very long time. And that is to sort out this mess. So this is my wall of create items, and there's a few problems. One, it's not big enough, so I've had to stash some in barrels over here as well. There's some items such as funnels and display links that you just can't put in drawers anyway, but mostly it's just a bit of a hassle. Every time I want something, I'm having to come all the way back here, grab individual items from Create and so on, and I think there's a better way. And that better way is going to involve this, another backpack. And instead of storing all of the Create items in drawers like this, 
what I'm gonna do instead is just store them in a backpack because that way every time I need anything I can just come over here grab the backpack and go and I think that's gonna work out much better for me but before we can do that we need to do some upgrades because this is just an iron backpack we want to get this all the way up to netherite and we want to stick lots of upgrades on like we've got here so that we can stack lots of things and craft things in the bag and so on so let's quickly get that sorted out first and already there's a problem because I don't really have enough gold to do the upgrades and I'm probably gonna need more diamonds as well not a problem just means we need a quick mining session before we can get started and if you're wondering whether that means I'm gonna play that same funky mining song again yes the answer is yes Now let's get this backpack upgraded. Sadly, I don't have enough excess netherite to be able to do this to a netherite backpack at the moment, but we've managed to get some upgrades on it and it should be good enough for now. I just need to load it up. My plan here is just to grab all of the create stuff we've got in these boxes. That is one pretty full backpack. So with our handy new create backpack, I think I'm ready to create a cobble generator. So let's open up a hole up here first and get into this tower. And there should be more than enough space. We don't need a huge cobble generator. We just need one that's going to be able to feed this factory. Although thinking about it, we should probably get some power over here first. That's going to be helpful, isn't it? I think if we bring it into the corner of this tower here, that should work quite nicely. Oh, we've already got a hole underneath here. Right, there we go. We now have power in the building. Excellent stuff. Let's just route this up to the cobble generator room. All right, good stuff. Now, let's make a generator. And that should just about do it. We'll waterlog the drills. We'll get some lava on top. And that should all feed directly into these drawers. So if I just bring these drawers down the wall here... If we put a spruce drawer and a drawer controller there as well, that would just make sure that it's all going to work. So if we quickly grab ourselves some water, and we'll chuck some lava on top. And now we should be generating loads of cobble. And we'll just set up a redstone link here as well, just to make sure that this turns off when it gets more full. Okay, and that's coming in nice and quickly. Excellent. Now we've got the cobble coming in, I need to turn it into sand. But before we do that, I'm going to think about the infrastructure a little bit. Because all the things we make in this factory are going to need to be collected and taken over to these storage warehouses over there. And that means we're going to need collection points. And I'm thinking maybe if we have them in either side of the walls, we can have sort of vaults that start on the inside, they go to the outside... That might be the best way to do it. So if we were to just line up a bunch of vaults over here and then just have them sticking out on this side like this. Let's give them a little bit of support underneath for now. I think that'll work quite nicely. And we'll just do the same thing on this side over here and maybe put down another torch or two. We seem to have a zombie problem. And now they're in. That gives us some targets to aim for, I guess. So the first thing we need to do is to convert this cobble down into sand. And for that, we're going to need to basically convert it to gravel, then to sand. And during that process, we're also going to end up getting flint and clay which I'm sure we can make some use of. And I think it makes sense to actually have that happen in the middle of the room. So we're probably going to move this bit here and just have it sort of go across the ceiling here. Because that way we can have a vault for sand, which we send off in one direction for processing. And we can have other vaults for the clay and the flint. I did not mean to punch a hole in my floor. And I think that's just going to help us process things a little bit easier. So let's just chuck a couple of vaults in the middle of the room here. And what we'll do is just work backwards from the vaults. So we need some belts and some shafts. And let's just see what we can rig up in here. And I think this should just about do it. So we're pulling the cobble out from over there. We're turning that into gravel and then sand. That's giving us flint and clay, which go into the respective vaults here. And all the sand goes over to there. But that's not really going to give us too much clay. So what we're also doing is taking sand out of here, washing it and turning it into more clay. Because that way we can make terracotta and bricks over here as well. I've also linked things up so when the clay vaults fall, this will all stop. And then when the sand vaults fall, this will all stop. And with the flint one here, I've actually just got a drawer down here with a void upgrade on it. And that will just void all the excess flint. Because this thing produces quite a lot of it and we're not really doing anything with it yet. Although I'm sure we will in future. Got to get andesite somehow, I guess. I've also added a great big display board at the back here so we can keep count of exactly what we've got, which is good. But now we need to start processing the rest of the things. So we're going to start on the sand side, I think. And from here, we're going to be able to get glass. We'll also get soul sand, which means we can get quartz and gold. And of course, we'll be able to get sandstone and smooth sandstone as well. The first one of those we're going to do is glass. That should be fairly straightforward. We just need to smelt it. And a few minutes later, I've got that sorted. So this arm here just takes the sand off this depot puts it there and it gets cooked into glass 
And then this arm here takes it once it's cooked, puts it in this funnel, and then it gets shipped off into this container over here. And once again, this is all linked up to turn off when it reaches 75% full, and we can also keep account of how much we've got over there. But now the glass is done, I think we're going to work on sandstone and smooth sandstone, and we'll get those going into these two vaults over here. So to do that, we need to compact sand first, and then we need to split it into two rows, some of which will get cooked, and some of which will just go straight into a vault. So this should be quite a simple one. And a short while later, I think we've got this one sorted too. So the sand comes out of here. It then gets compacted into sandstone. At the top here, I've got this on forced round robin. So we actually get an even amount of both. And it does mean that when things are cooking over here, it kind of slows everything down and backs it up. But that's absolutely fine. We don't need it to be fast. We just don't want to end up with loads of sandstone and very little smooth sandstone. That's not going to be helpful. We're more likely to use the smooth. So at least this way, we should get an even amount of both. But with that done, we can now focus on making soul sand which will also give us quartz and gold. And that will fill up the last three vaults on this side, I guess. And then we can start messing around with the clay. So to make soul sand, what we need to do is haunt sand. So we need one of these fans. We need some soul campfires or something. And then we need to do stuff to that. Or I think it's washing it, maybe, to then get the quartz and the gold. So this is going to be a little bit bigger than the ones we've made so far. But as long as I can keep some kind of a walkway going around the bottom here, we've got plenty of space on this side we can use anyhow. And I think this should work. I believe I've got it all set up correctly. Correctly. So sand gets haunted, soul sand gets stored and sent this way, gets washed, and then we have quartz going that way, gold going that way. I've also got the link set up so only when the gold is full will it actually turn everything off. Until then, it's just going to keep producing. And this box here has a void upgrade on it. So, well, basically, we're going to end up with a lot more quartz than we are gold. But this just means its main purpose will, of course, be a gold farm. Once that's full, it will turn everything off. But by then, we'll have full quartz and we'll also have full soul sand. And thankfully, it shouldn't back up because even once this vault is full, although it'll back up on this a little bit here, it's still going to be able to feed around and get washed and so on. At least that's the hope. But I guess there's only one way to test this thing, so let's get this funnel on here and see what happens. Oh, it would help if I had that funnel the right way around, wouldn't it? I also need to sort this bit out here because I didn't put a proper filter on it. Jeez. Okay, I think... It's all working. So we're getting our gold nuggets, our quartz, and our soul sand, as well as our glass, our sandstone, and our smooth sandstone. Excellent stuff. So that's the sand side of the processing plant complete. And to be honest, I think it's looking pretty cool as well. We could have made it a bit more efficient. We could have used less belts and things like that. But I think it looks cooler like this. And currently, it's not messing with my frames too much. So hopefully, we can leave it like this. But we'll see. What I need to do now is to start processing this side. So the clay, that's the main thing. And from clay, we're going to be able to get bricks, brick blocks, terracotta, red sand, I think we can get from clay as well, as well as just clay blocks, of course. But we've got a much smaller surface area to work with here when it comes to taking stuff out. So I think we're going to have to take it out and then split it into the different tracks for the different types of processing we need to do. So if we do a set up something like this and do forced split that's going to give us three rows to work with and i think that should be enough and first off i think we're going to deal with bricks which means i need to fire things as a first step but this doesn't necessarily need to be a fast process so maybe we should just use some mechanical arms here and then once they're fired we want to send them up well i think what i'm going to do to save a bit of space is just move all this over we're going to need two mechanical arms here we're going to need one to take stuff from there and put it onto there and we're going to need another one to take it from there and put it in there once it's cooked. Let's just make sure that the lava is going to be encased nicely in there. There we go. That should be fine. Okay, so once we've got bricks, we need to take them up to here. And then we need to split them into two channels. One of which will come over here and deposit stuff. And the other one needs to go this way. And then this way. So let's get these belts in. We'll need a tunnel there to split it out. Then we need a basin with a mechanical press over here so that we can turn everything into brick blocks. And I think that means everything's powered. I've just realised don't think I need this arm because the belt's going to feed things onto there. I just need this one to take them off and put them in the barrel. So these belts always running is fine, but this one here, we're going to need to make sure we put a clutch on because we want to be able to turn this off once the bricks and that are full. So let's stick one of them in there and get this one hooked up to the power as well. So back on the ground we go. So that should do the trick. And everything seems to be going the right way, which is nice. So because this belt isn't running, that should mean these ones just stop. So let's just give this a go. If we activate that, we should see stuff. Uh, oh, oh, dang. Right, uh, okay, this is this has all gone wrong. So what I've forgotten to do is to put all the filters on. So let's just quickly cook up some brick down here. And yeah, then we can actually apply the filters and get this thing working properly. Right, so let's put a brick filter on there. That should solve those problems. 
And then let's put this belt back in. So now it should work. As soon as that first stash of bricks is cooked down there, they should get put into there and then split up. And yeah, we should end up with some blocks and some bricks. There we go. So we're getting bricks over there and we're getting bricks down here. Perfect. Now we know it's working. I just need to make it look nice. So let's apply some brass casings here. And I need to sort out the cutoffs for when things are full. Well, that's looking a bit better. That's all working. And now we need to actually move on to the last few things we get from clay. And that is going to be terracotta, clay blocks, and red sand. But the first thing we need to do is compact all this into actual blocks of clay. So I guess we'll do that here. But apparently I don't have enough andesite alloys. So we're going to go craft a few bits first. So let's just chuck these in there. And then we can make ourselves a basin. Just chuck that on there, and a funnel on that side, and a press on top. And the first thing I want to do is just split some of that off and put it over in that vault, because, well, then we can just store some clay blocks, can't we? In fact, I'm going to do the cooking for the terracotta here, I think. And once again, we'll keep it quite slow. I don't want this thing to be too overpowered. Although in saying that, if I had three running like this, I could still have one mechanical arm just collecting all the cooked terracotta and putting it onto belts. Yeah, maybe that's what we should do. If I have a mechanical arm collecting from there, putting it in there, we'll just hang that upside down. Okay, so that should all work. This will turn it into clay blocks. This will then send three that way, one that way. And then this belt will take just clay. So let's put that there. I need to put a terracotta filter on there, so it will only take the cooked stuff. Put a clay filter on there, just to make sure. So that one's going to be terracotta. And what I need now is a couple of crushing wheels and a couple of gearboxes. So if we put these here and here, here and get those rotated and then we'll stick a shaft in the middle we'll stick a wheel either side oh geez got a thunderstorm and then once we get to here we want red sand going one way and i think we also get dead bushes is that correct no we just get red sand okay that's perfect although if we wash that red sand look how much extra gold we can get hmm this is good. It will make the whole gold process a lot quicker. Do we then want to split some of this off and wash it then, in that case? You know what? I think for now, we'll just focus on getting the red sand because we're also obviously going to be able to get red sandstone and smooth red sandstone and all sorts coming off of that. And uh, yeah, that means we're going to need to do some more building upstairs and stuff. So for now, I think... Jeez, okay, right, I really need to sleep. That storm is loud. That's much better. So what I was saying, uh, I think for now, I'm just going to leave it as red sand and we'll figure out where we go from there afterwards because there's other things we can do with the quartz as well. We can make lots of things from the red sand. So yeah, let's not get too carried away. I mean, I do have other things I need to get done today after all. So with that in mind, I think we just need to hook power up to everything here now. And a short while later, I think we're done. Everything seems to be working. It's doing its thing. We're getting terracotta now as well as of course the red sand and the clay i've once again hooked everything up as well so our big board of stuff over here is looking pretty healthy although converting this red sand into gold is probably a good idea but we'll save that for another day because i think we've certainly made a good start over here but now we need to tackle a whole other problem and that is moving the resources from these vaults over to these warehouses and so far in this world we've used a whole lot of trains we've even got this set up for trains to come in and drop stuff off so the obvious thing to do would be to put in a train that collects things and just takes them over here but i think that's gonna look quite messy so i don't really want to do that and that means we're gonna need to do something completely different and i know someone who's done just that Let's go pay them a visit. So my good friend Foxy No Tail has been doing some pretty awesome stuff with his delivery network in his ski resorts. And I want to go pay him a visit and take a closer look. Because we're probably going to do something fairly similar. I'm just sick of building trains that actually look like trains. So when Foxy came to visit me, he had a DeLorean. And he told me that he drove really fast. And then he appeared on this bridge. But I don't believe that for a second. That's just nonsense. Science fiction nonsense. So I've had a little look around, figuring there must be a pathway somewhere. And I've stumbled across this. A doorway. So this is much more likely on how he actually got here. Just a random foxless door. Suspicious. And there's not really much behind it. Just nothing to see here and a deep hole. It's a little bit concerning, but we can't steal all these ideas from here, can we? So I guess we're just going to have to take a leap of faith. Did it work? Ah, oh, it totally worked. Yep, that makes total sense. And conveniently, I have exactly what I need, which is a spyglass, so we can have a look at Foxy's town. But he should have some vehicles going around somewhere here. Oh, there's one. There's a dump truck. Look at it go. That's the kind of thing I want to do, I think. Trains that don't look like trains. Let's see if we can sneak in and take a closer look. Right, so is that being driven by a monkey? Foxy's weird. But this is exactly the kind of thing I wanted to have a look at. Hopefully we can get away without being seen by Foxy here. Yeah, so he's got dump trucks, he's got forklifts. And I believe if we go over to the main town... 
isn't great at all. I immediately regret this decision. Okay, I've got a couple of fresh tanks on me now, so I've got plenty to get going on with, and I guess I should probably head back over to that area. What? Um, hang on a minute. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Beardstone? Oh, dang it. Um, hey, wasn't expecting you. No, 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 I was just, uh, you invited me to your ski village, remember? Yeah, I did, but mm -hmm. I didn't expect you to, how did you get here? Oh, it's best we don't go into that. It's all very complicated. Right. I, I notice you're carrying a spyglass. Oh, oh well, okay. Oh, but it must probably no, glitch. No, uh, uh, yeah, 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 it must be, it must be. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely not over here stealing your ideas or anything. Oh, well, that's good then. Well, that, well, to be honest with you, I could probably do come back to your place and get some more ideas as well. I've, you see, I've just built the most lovely... Actually, it's really nice. The best thing I ever built. You can come and help me open it today if you want. Oh, yeah. yeah, that sounds amazing. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, I, I do have a couple of things I need to look at. Right. I, I could give you a tour. Not a problem. Okay, yeah. If you could do a particular focus on your delivery vehicles. Right. Okay, well, we've just happened to have one's just reversed in here. I'll just uh, stop ah, the driver yeah, disappearing and get an object. No, I'll just, well, we'll just have to oh. follow him, Mr. Beardstone. Look at that. that. See, this is what I wanted to see, Foxy. I'm so sick of building trains. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite frustrating building trains all the time. These, I have to say, even if you have to do the rail underground, these vehicles are much better. Although, be prepared to get millions of comments saying you should have phantom tracks, which means you need a phantom farm and you need phantoms. I'm not, I'm not no, doing I'm that. not doing that either. There is no oh. chance. No chance. It's off again. Oh, yeah, don't, 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 don't get run over. He's... Wow, he's pretty good. He's, uh, he's done it a few times. Pretty good at reversing. Yeah, he's done it a yeah. few times, and he, he's going to go over here into the car park. You see, uh, at the uh, and he, what he'll do now is he's going to grab some items from the um, from the train station through a little hole that I've I forgot to cover up. Don't don't look at that hole. <clears throat> what oh, hole? What hole? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. this is awesome because basically I've, I've built an area. It's got lots and lots of trains in it already. And now I'm adding more buildings. I just I don't want to just have a bajillion trains going around no. on top of the the many I already yeah. have. So yeah, I was considering maybe doing like some sort of like 50s vehicles, mm. delivery trucks, and things nice. like that. And um, well, I figured what better place to get inspiration than to come see the guy who's already done it. I mean, the fact that they're being driven by monkeys is mildly terrifying. But apart from that, that uh, is awesome. I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing I was after, really. Um, just, yeah, some something that's not a train. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, I will be doing some boats in future, but I'm still on land at the moment. So, yeah. Boats, boats don't do no, land. No, well, they do, but not ideally. Anyway, uh, speaking no. of things that are not a train, would you like to have a race, Mr. Beardstone? What? Of course I'd love to have a race. Follow me. I'll, I'll walk round rather than fly. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll follow you slowly. Yeah, I, I just happen to have, uh, you know, just on the off chance that someone might ah might turn up to my world, I um I've built a new vehicle and I'm I'm desperate to race it. You see. Yeah, I can do this. Uh, uh, wait a second. Are we gonna come across other trains while we do uh, this? Possibly one, but I, I I may have modified the track slightly to allow us to potentially go round them. So just be careful. Um. Okay, there's a train coming up behind oh, me well, right now. We'll be ideal then. Right, on your mask, there you go. Okay. What? Come on, Cybertruck, you got this. Right, so you're always pretty much Jeez. turning left. Oh, wow, this... Okay, I feel like I'm going super yes, fast. Yes, well, these are, these are cars, not trains, Mr. Beardstone. What, what cars do, they go very fast. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. And, uh, they've got fuel in, and um, I may have modified this lighting slightly, but there we are, I'm on lap two already. Oh, you're right behind me. Oh, oh, gee, oh gee, watch out yeah. for that train. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> you didn't go around it, Mr. Beardstone. <laughs> I've got your things here, Mr. Beardstone. Thank you. I have an obituary. Yes. Yeah, that's what happens when you die, you see. Very, very sad see. time. But, you know, thank you for taking part in that race. But now it's time to make a very long journey through this tunnel and go and blow, uh, uh, oh, do a grand opening of this new building that I've built that I'm very proud of. I'm Honestly, I think it's the best building I've ever built. So here it is. The, um, what was going to be a power station, which is, uh, well, surplus to requirements. I mean, uh, no, I, I love it. it. It's what? a grand opening. I can't wait for it to be open by Mr. Beardstone himself. I'm so excited. But there's a button there. for, And when you press it, something really special will happen with this building and it will be open for the public to come and see. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
100 percent okay honest you've literally put honest mate on it yes grand opening honest mate because i'm a very honest fellow you see right then let's open it whatever you do don't blow it up why would you say something like that what did i just say well anyway i think i've um i think i've got all i need stolen all that uh, it, i've been inspired yep 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 100 to, to basically do exactly the same thing um yeah. thanks you're welcome wait, wait, thanks for that it's right i've got some of your power station here as well do you want to <laughs> <go> back <laughs> not really <laughs> thank you um how are you getting home how did oh, that's a point how did you get here fine look it's, 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 look, it's best not to ask questions okay i don't have a delorean like you do i had to find no. different methods of of getting here right and i'll have different methods of leaving as well hmm okay yes i understand Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, do you... there you go. Look, you can you can keep that. Oh, thank you. I'll put that on my wall. Well, I'd say that was a reasonably successful trip. We've definitely got some ideas of how we can do things. And yes, rails under the ground instead of phantom rails. Definitely the way we're going to go. I'm not making a phantom farm. And I think if we design some sort of 50s style flatbed delivery truck type things, I think they'll fit in with this area nicely. And we can literally have them pull up at these side bits. We can have them then loop round and drop off in this warehouse here, most likely. Although it might need to go to that one as well. So that means we've got a few things we need to do. We need to make a drop off system. We need to put some roads in. We need to build a vehicle and we need the actual collection system as well. But first things first, we should probably make the vehicle because that's going to kind of dictate everything else we do. And I think I'm going to make that right here so we can ensure that we get it all lined up with these vaults and then we'll figure out how to actually turn it into a train after. I guess it's just going to be attached to bogies on some kind of stilts or something, right? I'm sure it'll be fine. About 20 minutes later and we now have ourselves our first delivery van. I've kept it quite simple, just drawing on the experience from building the city in hardcore. That's loads of vehicles in that. And I do, of course, have a seat and train controls in there as well we can even access the seat which we're going to need to be able to do to put a driver in later and inside here we have our storage interfaces which are at this level here so once we actually move this a couple blocks further away we should be able to get it linked up to the vaults as well and we have storage interfaces pointing that way that way and downwards because well it just gives us lots of options for unloading and loading this thing and i've also stuck it all together hopefully i usually miss something but now the truck is ready we need to attach it to a train and that means we need to go underground we need to lay some rail around and hopefully we should be able to do this fairly straightforward although would i be better off actually just digging out a massive area underground i could use my drill so it wouldn't take too long and that's going to make it much easier to sort of tweak and change things i guess and then let's just dig out a massive hole underground here but this could take a while so i'll see you in a bit so I've dug a great big hole, I've applied lots of rail, which I think follows the road where it needs to go. I'm not entirely sure, we're about to check that out. And I've attached our delivery truck to a train, moved it over. So we're actually just using glass panes here, so they're invisible, but I assure you, it is attached. And if we go up to the surface here, it's raining. Of course it is. But our delivery truck should be good to go. I just need to check that I've actually mapped out the track correctly. So let's jump in and take it for a spin in the rain. Okay, so it should go round to the right here. Let's slow down a bit as well. In there. Oh, it's a bit tight on that wall. We might need to make that a little bit wider. We should be able to go around this way. It can pull up here and drop off if it needs to. We need to put a path through there. And then we'll have a drop-off point here. That'll probably be the main one. And, oh, there's a train. Which I don't think there's much I'm going to be able to do about that. So occasionally, I guess these things might just kind of go through each other. I think because there are different tracks, yeah, I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure it's fine. I mean, we could probably set up some fancy redstone signaling system, but we'll deal with that if it becomes a problem. But after that, the truck will be able to carry on around this way. It can go down the front of the building. Like so. And then it will come around this side, and it will stop at various stations along here to pick up all the stuff and things. Drive around this way, and do the same thing on this side. So that should work quite well. I just need to add in all of the stations and all of the delivery systems here so it can actually load up on stuff and things. And then set up a drop-off system over that way as well. 
But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. That's something we'll have to continue with on the next episode. But I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I built a huge factory, rammed it full of machines to make blocks, and visited Foxy in order to steal some ideas for delivery systems. Today, I'll get my first flatbed truck up and running, build working rail crossings, do lots and lots of terraforming, and even add more machines to make more blocks. And between episodes, I've basically just been watching my van. Because I've managed to get all of the stations wired up, and it's just mesmerizing watching this thing go around. So, yeah, it's going to go around here it's going to pull into a system over here that doesn't exist yet but it will do soon and the good news is i've also solved the train problem by ignoring it it turns out this thing can just go straight through the train and it doesn't cause any issues because they're actually on different lines and with how long i've been watching it i'm actually yet to see the truck go through the train accidentally i, I did literally park it on the tracks to test and it hasn't been causing any issues so i'm sure it's fine but although we've got the truck going around and doing its thing it basically pulls in over there then it reverses out comes past here reverses into this bit and it stops at all these stations it's not actually collecting anything at the moment because i haven't hooked this up yet and that's because i haven't built the delivery system over here and to be honest i think we're gonna do something nice and simple and yes it's raining of course it's raining it's always raining and what i want to do is make use of the fact that we've got all these drawers on the back here and pretty much just connect them all up into one big long line and we'll do the same with the ones on that side then we'll probably just go across the roof or something i don't really know but either way we'll connect up both sides underground might make more sense actually but either way we'll get everything connected up and then we'll just have the truck offloading from here directly into a draw controller and then it will just sort everything out straight away. That way we haven't got to add another bajillion conveyor belts. We've got enough going on in here as it is. And I think setting up that delivery system is probably what I'm going to do first. Because once we've done that, we can do all the terraforming around this area and make it look nice. Because although this road looks pretty cool, the rest of it looks pretty rubbish. And you'll also be pleased to know I've sorted out my Create backpack. So everything here is actually locked in place now. If we have a look here, you can see that all of this has a memory. So if I completely empty a slot... It will always just go back in the exact same slot no matter what you take out, which is marvellous. The idea being that over time I'll learn where stuff is in the backpack and it should just be a lot quicker for me to build stuff. I swear I spent half my life looking for things. And I need to wait for the truck to come back over because next time it gets over here I need to basically steal the schedule so that it stays here. And then we can get everything linked up as we need it. Can't do that without the truck. I'm assuming it's around that corner because I can't see it. And I have to say watching this thing reverse out and drive off is probably one of the most satisfying parts. Another one being when it reverses over on this side as well. Oh, love it. Here it comes. Drivey, drivey. So yeah, we're going to make a road that goes all through the middle here. Pretty much follows where that dirt line is. It's not too far off, I suppose. But for now, I'm taking your schedule, Mr. Fly. Much better than monkeys. Less violent. So let's grab some bits and bobs from here. We'll need some shafts, some belts, storage interface, some brass casings to make you look nice. Okay, that actually works out quite well. Because what I could do is literally just have a chute that goes straight into a drawer down here. And then it's just nice and discreet, isn't it? Yep, I think I like that plan. Let's do it. So we need lots of trims. We're going to need some chutes. If we literally just stick that there with a chute on top, then we just need to hook up the trim. And in the config, I have extended the range of my drawers. They actually stretch to 75 blocks now instead of the standard 25, I think it is. So this should reach all the way down. I'm going to need a draw controller as well. I wonder how much of this stuff I've actually got. I think we're going to need some stone and I'm probably going to need to go grab a diamond. So we've got some diamond in here. We've got stone. And I think we already had everything else. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. And I'll just put the draw controller in there. So now if I do that, that should lock all of the drawers. Although I should probably connect up the ones on the other side first. And I might as well just do that underground, considering I've already dug out a huge chunk. So now to see if the locks work all the way to the drawer at the back here. Hopefully it can reach the whole warehouse. It does. Amazing. So now we know that's working, I just need to assign some of those drawers to actually have items. So let's just grab a little bit of everything we're making. And then let's do some organising, shall we? So we'll have bricks in the first one. Let's make sure we're putting all of the filters in where needed. And then chuck them in the back. And then we're going to do all the blocks along here, I think. So in theory, that should work now if we just set up all of the funnels and things on this side and actually supply some power. That might be helpful as well. That's easy enough, thanks to our brand new hole we've got down here. So let's just add some funnels as well before we turn it all on properly. So let's stick that back on. And okay, looks like it's doing its thing. Now we just need to do the same on the other side. So I think everything is set up correctly. Hopefully if we restart the schedule on the truck here, he's going to do his little loop. He'll actually pick stuff up. And we should end up with full conveyor belts over here. I think that's going to be the easiest way to test. If we end up with extra items back here, we know that it's worked. So you, sir, can have your schedule back. 
I'm going to take a pew in the back here. Hopefully this is going to work. But it seems to be picking everything up just nicely. And the funnels here are just set to deposit eight items at a time. So we're probably only picking up about a stack and a half to two stacks each time. Basically, I don't want to sort of overload everything. I just want to keep it nice and chill and let this thing go around and do its thing over time. I mean, it's only me in the world. I don't need everything to be super fast now, do I? This side's working as well. Excellent. And now hopefully this will all work as well. That should connect up just nicely. We should start seeing items come out, at least on the tracks that don't have. Yeah, there we go. Look at the back there. Excellent. The system's working. So we should get some bricks and brick blocks. Yep, there's the brick blocks. There's the bricks. We've already got the gold and the quartz. Brilliant. The system works. But although it works, a lot of the area still looks, well, just not good. Not good at all. So that's my next task. I think we're going to do a whole bunch of terraforming. We're going to get all the roads in. We're going to get things looking nice. And I'm probably going to try and hide some of these stations as well, because I suppose now we've got these items here, we can add them to the Beardy Delivery Network. Which means I need to hide these stations somewhere, get them set up with the redstone so they activate the right things as and when needed, and basically just do what we've done on the other warehouse. I sense an incoming montage. Well, that was a monster session of block placing, but I think everything's looking a whole lot better around here now. So I've actually wrapped all the stations over here in the same signal station we have over that side. I think it just works and makes sense. And the stations that were here, I've now moved underground. So they're all still linked up, but they're just not visible anymore, which is good. I've also sorted out the road, although I haven't sort of finished off this side of it because I don't really know what I'm doing there yet. I've extended the road all the way around, as you can see, and the truck actually follows it now. We've sorted out this area. And now that we have the Create Deco mod, we also have these, which are actually functional vaults, but they look like shipping containers and they really do help tie the area together. They look really cool. I like those. And with a few stacks of logs as well, this is kind of like the storage yard area. I'll probably add some more stuff in future, but these other big areas that that we've got here are going to be for buildings and car parks and things like that and there will eventually be a giant blaze cake factory here so i've just ignored that section for now i've also sorted out the sides of the buildings and made a start on the back as well if we take a look around here i've just kind of walled it all off we've got a couple of side entrances now as well i just need to do a bit of detailing around this area really it's the back so we'll ignore it for now so with everything set up over here there's actually something i want to test and that involves these signals here and these crossings over here because well they're on different tracks so at the moment the van is driving through the train we could just ignore it but i do wonder if we can maybe do something a bit more fancy it's time to run some experiments but for that i'm going to need my small train and my small train is not over here because i actually hitched a ride on the lava train last time i came by but to be honest, it's probably about time we upgraded that tiny weird little train anyway. I mean, we're making cool vehicles now. Maybe we can actually make one to get around on. I mean, if my recent visit to Foxy's taught me anything, it's that driving cars on train tracks is really quite fun. Even if it does result in death, but that seems to happen with me regardless. So let's just put a bit of rail down to build on. Grab ourselves some train casings and a station. And let's make ourselves another 50s style vehicle of some kind. But if we use an invisible bogey, that should give us a bit more freedom as well. Oh, I probably shouldn't build this here because, yeah, we're right on the road. So let's just do it over here. And to be honest, we can probably get away with just using one bit of track here. And that means we can actually have the wheels come down and so on. Well, first off, it looks like we need three bits of track for it to actually allow us to place a bogey. There we go. One truck. I think that should work nicely. Now to try and glue it all together without getting the track. But it looks like I can't assemble it unless I've got at least three bits of track. Which means I'm going to need to re-glue it so I also don't get these pieces. 
Jeez. So hopefully this will work this time and won't take the rail with it. We'll just call this Beardy One for now. I think the best way to test this is going to be to relocate it over here. What have we left behind? Only a tiny bit of the front. Not bad. So let's just try gluing those again. Assemble the train, move it over here, and nothing left behind. And we didn't take any rail with us either. This is good. So let's take it for a quick lap. <laughs> this is so much better than that weird little train I've been driving around in. And the good news is, now I can do my testing. But first, I really need to clean up my inventory. This is getting out of hand. And I guess the best way to do that is going to be just to drive my truck all the way home. <laughs> And I'm instantly realizing when I get there, I'm going to put a barrel on this thing and fill it with coal. This is slow. So what I want to try and do is have it so that if there is a train in this section here, the van will not go through because basically it doesn't look right if it does go through a train and I'd rather avoid that altogether. Plus it could look quite cool, especially if we can get working barriers, but that's step two. Step one is just to check if we can stop this van from crossing the rails when there's something in here. And there's a couple of ways we can do that, I think. The first is to use the signals we already have here. So when there is a train inside that area, it literally just gives off a redstone signal. And then we can send that to the station to turn off the redstone signal at the station and just change the schedule on the van that goes round so that it will only leave the stations in front of the crossings if the station has a redstone signal. Does that make sense? Let me just quickly show you. So we'll just stick a couple of redstone torches in there for now. And if we go down to this station and we have a setup similar to this, what this means is currently the station doesn't have a redstone signal. So if we set the schedule right, the van shouldn't drive off. However, when there's not a train in that area, it will provide this station with a redstone signal, allowing the truck to go. I think that should work. But I guess the only way to test is to find the truck. Oh, perfect timing. And grab his schedule. Yoink. Probably go to sleep too before stuff starts blowing up. I have not added any lighting here. Okay, so the schedule. So this is where we are, the drop off. Currently, it's just set to wait for 30 seconds. But if we also add a redstone signal required, so station powered, and I'm hoping it will still wait the 30 seconds first. But I guess we're about to find out. If not, we'll just add a second station just in front. If I move this van out of the way, that should power the station and let that thing go. Maybe. Yep, okay, there we go. So he's driving around just fine. Now if I block it again and just wait for the truck to come all the way back round. So here we go. I'm just going to sit here for a couple of minutes and hope that the truck doesn't go any further. Nope, the truck has still gone. That didn't work. What that means is that the schedule isn't an AND gate. It basically, it doesn't need to meet both those conditions. It just needs to meet one of them. But not a problem. We can solve this by adding a secondary station. We'll just add it directly in front. We'll call it crossing one. And we'll just move all this over a block. And if we grab Matey Boy's schedule, there we go. And add in a new stop. Call that crossing one. So we'll still have it wait 30 seconds to drop off, and then it will only go past this station if it's powered, in theory. Let's give it a go. So hopefully this time he should just sit here and wait. There we go, he's just nudged forward, and he should stay there now until I move this train out of the way. Although we actually have a whole bunch of trains waiting to get past, so he might be there for a while, because all of these are then going to come in and... Yeah, do the same thing. And I also need to put a redstone signal thing on this. I do wonder, though, do they work if I just put them directly on the poles? Guess we're about to find out. No, it would appear not. So I am going to need to do that here as well. Do the same thing. And then we'll just put another signal over here as well, just so once it goes past that point, it can carry on and do its thing. But yeah, we can hide that one underground. It doesn't need to be visible. And hopefully, as soon as I go past that signal, the van should drive off. The trains all seem to have gone the other way, which is good. Yes, look at that. System works. So now I just need to hook up the other crossings here. And what I'll do is I'll set up a different signal for this crossing and then a third signal for that crossing there, just so we've got a bit more control. So with a few more tweaks to Matey Boy's schedule over here. So once we've got the clay blocks, it will go to crossing three, then crossing two, then drop off, then crossing one, and then do the whole loop again. So hopefully I should prevent any collisions. Now I think I've got them all set up correctly. The question is, will it crash? I guess we're about to find out. He's waiting. Excellent stuff. So if we now reverse and then go down here and into this one here, 
It should hopefully stop again. Oh, this is amazing. I love it. So that's awesome. Now we know that that works, we can try and figure out if we can actually have some moving barriers as well. I don't see why not. We just need to take that redstone signal and make something activate. And I don't believe any trains use this rail here, so I can just park my van over here and it should be out of the way for now. So if we want moving barriers, we're going to need to make use of some kind of a bearing. And I would imagine... A mechanical bearing is probably the one. Let's have a ponder. So that's not quite what we want. That's just a spinny thing. I mean, that's all very cool, but not really what we're after. But about three hours of messing around later, I think I have figured out how to get this working for us. So I have a mechanical bearing here, which is attached to this pole, and this can, of course, spin round and round and round. But because we just want it to go 90 degrees that way and then 90 degrees back, the trick was to use this, a sequenced gear shift. And this will trigger when it receives a redstone pulse. So if I push this button, it will close this barrier. It will then wait there until it receives another redstone pulse, such as this. And then it raises again. And to trigger that redstone pulse, I have a link receiver here, which if we go underneath to the station, is connected up to this observer, which is actually watching the other one to see whether there's a train in that section of track. And when there is a train in that area, this will emit a pulse, and then this just extends it a little bit just to make sure that this sender can pick it up, which is what makes the barrier go up and down. So it all ties together nicely. So we actually have a train coming in now, so we can see the whole thing in action. So let's just quickly fly over this side. You can see the barriers are up at the moment and this time we might work out well actually we might end up with the truck trapped in here as well so as soon as that train goes off like this here we go the barriers come down these barriers are coming down i do need to speed these ones up though and this truck will just sit here while the train goes past then the barriers will come back up and as soon as the truck's done delivering it can carry on along its way look at that Wonderful. Gives a whole lot more life to this place. But that's enough messing around out here. I've got some more machines to make. And for that, I think we're going to utilize the top half of this building here because there's a lot of space up here. There's not currently a way in though, so we should probably make one of those. And we can do with a bit more floor in here as well. But the important thing is we've got lots of space. And up here, I plan to make diorite, granite, andesite, and of course, quartz blocks and things like that that we can make from downstairs. And if we've got space, we may even filter off some red sand because there's things we can make from that too. But because this cobble gen down here already can't keep up, I'm actually just going to stick another one down this side. And that's what we're going to use for the farms upstairs. So we just do the same thing here that we did on the other side. Got a bunch of cobble coming in. Let's put a floor in so we don't fall in the lava. I've now got the floors in. I've set in the threshold switch for the cobble generator. And I've rooted up some separate power for the rest of the things we need up here. And this time, because it's upstairs, it's a bit more hidden away. It's not like down there. I'm going to do a lot of the moving around of items using drawers and draw trims. Primarily as lag prevention, but also it means everything can be a bit more compact and I can make more blocks up here than I would have been able to otherwise. And for this to work, we're going to need a lot of spruce trims. So my thinking is I'm just going to run this along the back wall here. And most of that should be covered by the time we've built the machines anyway. But we're also going to run it around this wall as well, just so we've got full access everywhere. And we can always tidy this up as necessary later. But for now, I'm sure it'll be fine. And the first thing I want to make up here is... Is diorite. And there's a few different ways we could use flint and calcite and lava, but that just sounds complicated. I think the simplest one for us is going to be to make use of the quartz we've got downstairs, because we've got thousands of it, and of course the cobble that we're already generating. I think the best way to get this to work is maybe, if we quickly head downstairs, is to connect this drawer here up to the top, because that means we'll always still have quartz available in the vault. And only excess quartz will be taken over to the new place. We can just get this connected up there. So now we should be able to pull quartz out of this in theory. We're also going to need quite a lot of power up here, so I think it makes sense just to stretch this all across. I think there's another storm going on. So what we're going to need to make diorite is two quartz and two cobbles. So we've just hooked up some slave controllers onto some funnels and some depots, which is going to pull that out of the system for us. To make this work, we're going to need a bunch of mechanical crafters, but that's not something we actually have in our Create Backpack, because, well, we don't normally need them. But if I grab some wood to get some crafting tables, we should have everything else we need on us. So let's make a bunch of these. Ah, look at that. We've completed some quests. <laughs> oh dear. Not gonna lie, I completely forgot about the quest book. We should probably check that out. We've probably got loads of free stuff. But we'll save that for another time. For now, let's figure out this diorite machine. If we put some andesite funnels on the back there and connect up an arm to do that and another arm to go in the opposite corners to put in the cobble. I think I've done that right. And then just give everything a little bit of power. I should make diorite. Look at that. Let's just stop that for a moment while we figure out the storage. 
And I think we should just be able to have it go straight back into the drawer like that. And we'll give that drawer some upgrades too. Excellent. Well, that was easy. Now, how do we make granite? Diorite and quartz. So we can literally do exactly the same machine again, but just do it here. And in fact, while I think of it, I should probably put in an off switch as well. So we'll stick a clutch in there. We'll put that there. And it's from quartz to diorite. That makes sense. That's set to receive. And we'll just stick a threshold switch on the back here. So let's just repeat this setup again for the next one. Though I appear to have used drawers at the bottom there, not trims. That's better. But it's not quite the same machine because I only need two panels for this one, but it's doing its job. We're now getting lots of granite. Let's make sure we're locking, quantifying and upgrading this as well. Oh, this is easy. This is. Next up is andesite, which is just diorite and cobble. That's nice and easy as well. Let's just do this all over again. And there we go. We've automated andesite. We've hardly taken up any space at all. Now, is there anything else we can make out of diorite that's worth doing up here? Looks like we could have used basins and mixers to make these things. Oh, well, it's done now. Huh, would you look at that? We can turn granite into red sand. Safe to say I think that's fine for now. However, there's definitely other things we can make with quartz. Primarily quartz blocks and, of course, smooth quartz. Would be nice to make some rose quartz automatically as well, but we haven't automated redstone yet. But we'll do some automated packing to get blocks of quartz. That should be fairly simple. There we go. There's our little quartz machine going for it. Having a wonderful time. I'd say we're making some pretty good progress. But let's get some smooth quartz as well while we're here. And there we go. Now we're producing smooth quartz as well. 16 at a time. Probably make this whole area look a little bit safer let's get some barriers up well i'd say that's pretty good going for today that's another five blocks we're producing but now i need to figure out how we're going to get them over to that warehouse hmm. i've got an idea that may be silly but it may be quite good if it works and maybe it's about time we had an aerial delivery system. We could do something fairly simple, maybe with some monorails and some shipping crates potentially. And we could literally just have it pull into here, load up on stuff, and then go back down again. That could be quite cool. So let's start by making this hole here a little bit bigger and getting a monorail line in. So let's start just by putting in a straight line over here. Let's see where about on this building it's going to connect. I think I've got it in line here. Yep, this appears to be in line. But there's not a lot of room in here, so it, I think it's literally just going to have to be like a hanging shipping container, and that's it. But we can probably make that work. Let's smash some more holes. Let's see if we can make a tiny shipping container that hangs on a monorail. This may not go well. So this is what the shipping container is going to look like from the outside, and inside we've got a tiny bit of space. And I know we need at least three blocks because we need... One for the seat and one for the controls going each way, so it's a train. That gives us a tiny bit of space for storage and the storage interfaces. And we also need to figure out how it knows what to pick up. This one could be a challenge. I'll bring you back in once I've got it figured out. So I think I've got it all worked out. And on the inside here, we've got our train controls, so we can go in both directions. And a bit of headroom for the driver. We've then got a storage interface pointing out that way. And we've got a toolbox, which I've indicated what resources to pick up. And I've just filled the other slots with random stuff for now. If we make more blocks up here, we can, of course, swap that out and we've also got room for more toolboxes if needed because we can put them on top of the train controls here but the important thing is how does it know what to load up and that is all down to this arm because it will only feed things into here if it has somewhere to put it and it has access to all five resources here or at least it will once i build three more of these so in theory it should just pick up the ones it can and put them in there and i'll leave that on round robin that should work fine so let's just wall up the last bit of this stick it all together now let's turn it into a train and see if it actually works no no structure attached to bogey. Ah, okay, let's just stick a block in there for now and glue it in. Okay, well, it's made a train. Let's see if we can get in and take it for a spin. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, I think this could work. And we can even bring the walls in a bit. It doesn't need quite so much space, does it? We need to get a roof in, though. And, of course, we need to give it a driver. It looks like it's filled up what it can of the quartz. And, well, it didn't have much smooth quartz available, but it's put in what it had. So let's get these last three hooked up, and then we'll sort out the drop-off system over there as well. And I'll bring you back in once that's all done. And a short while later, I think we're all sorted. This shipping container is going backwards and forwards, and it's dropping off in here. And I pretty much just did the same thing I did outside. I've just got a storage interface with a funnel that goes into a drawer controller or a drawer controller slave, I should say. And then there's drawer trim in here that I've just covered to make it look a little bit better. And that all connects up to this system. And once again, it just feeds into the vaults down the bottom here. But while I was doing that, I did notice a slight problem with our little delivery van over here. 
And that is that he had basically too much clay on him. The clay in here got full up, but he was still picking it up over there and it sort of jammed up the chute and all sorts. So I had two options. I could have put a void upgrade on the brick box, but then we're just making loads of bricks we don't need. So that seemed a bit pointless. But the other option was just to have an off switch. So we're now checking the level of bricks in here. Once it goes over 50%, it just turns this on. And that is linked all the way over to here. And if we look at the brick funnel here, we can see that's now locked. The so bricks are no longer coming out, which means this thing isn't getting full up with bricks. And it just keeps everything flowing nicely. It was also quite late by the time I finished that, and I didn't fancy recording any clips, so I just chilled out and sorted out the little bit of landscaping over there as well, ready for our blaze factory. But sadly, that's going to have to wait for a future episode because I am all out of time for today. But I'm so pleased with how this area is coming together. It's awesome that we're making loads of blocks, and there's still more we can make. We've still got all the things from red sand and other bits and bobs. But most importantly, we've got our crossings working, we've got our van going around, and we're preventing collisions, which is always a good thing. But I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last time in my perfect world, I did a whole lot of terraforming, built working railway crossings, and jammed a bunch more machines into the processing factory. But today, we're going to do some problem solving. And that problem is travel. So when I created this world, I made it a large biomes world, and I absolutely love it. But it does come with the issue of having all my towns very far apart. And you may notice my map looks a bit different, but that's because I've actually moved the world onto a server now, which has freed up some processing power on my PC and means I can actually record in higher quality again. That's nice. But I digress. So yeah, large biomes means all my towns are very far apart. We've actually got one here, one here, one here, and one there, which is great when you just want to go on a rail journey. But when you're trying to build something and you realize you've forgotten one thing and have to head 6,000 blocks there and 6,000 blocks back again, it can take five to 10 minutes. And when I'm recording, well, it just eats up a lot of time going backwards and forwards. But there are solutions to this problem. I mean, I could make a rail network that just goes through the nether and sort of block off the entrances with one-way signals to make sure the other trains don't use it. And that will, of course, be quicker. But in the long term, that's still going to be quite time consuming. So instead, I've given in. I've added a new mod and we now have access to waystones, which essentially allow you to teleport between locations where you've actually placed them. But they do come at a cost because I now need to get warp stones and to get those, we need ender pearls. The emeralds and the amethyst shards aren't really a problem, but the ender pearls, they certainly are. That's something we don't have easy access to, and I've only got three or four in storage that we've kind of collected along the way. And that means it's time to go to the end. We can't just go gallivanting off into the end unprepared though. Don't panic, I have a plan. Step one, gear up. So when it comes to gearing up, I still don't have netherite armor. And to be honest, I'd quite like some. It reduces knockback and I know shulkers exist. So yeah, that seems like a good idea. The problem is our nether mining drill is awful. It's, it's really bad. So instead, we're just gonna take a whole bunch of TNT and can I make any more? I can make some, although I should probably make some rockets as well. Yeah, we'll just turn that excess gunpowder into rockets. We might need them. And my bow does not have flame on it, so let's see if we can sort that out. It's going to be a lot safer to light the TNT from a distance. Question is, do I have a flame book? I do. Look at that. That's good. That saves me making loads of bows. And before we go any further, I should probably stock up on food. I'm looking pretty low and I think my supplies are all out as well. Oh no, tell a lie. We've got some bacon and eggs. Lovely jubbly. We've got a bit of ratatouille in this as well. We have some cabbage rolls and more cabbage rolls. Ah, that'll do for now. So let's head to the nether and try and get some more netherite. We need about 12 pieces of ancient debris, I think. Although a bonus four would be nice. We can upgrade our backpack to netherite too. So let's just pick a spot, dig a big long tunnel and blow some stuff up. Hopefully we'll get lucky. Although wait a minute, before we go too far, we should probably do this on a chunk border. I think that increases our chances, right? Ah, look at that. We were on one anyway. What are the chances? Hopefully we'll get lots of debris. Not a single piece. That was disappointing. Looks like we might have been a bit low. Let's go up a little bit higher and try again, shall we? Well, there's one piece straight away. Good stuff. And I spy some more over there as well. Well, I'm already out of TNT. We've only managed to get five bits, so that's not really ideal. We needed 16, but I wonder, how can we get gunpowder? So we can actually wash some crushed raw zinc to potentially get gunpowder. We can put potion of harming on cinder flour. Yep, can't do that yet. And just the normal methods. Okay, so maybe we can get some more. Depends how much zinc we've got, I guess. Oh, look at that. We've got loads we can crush. We actually did quite well after that. In the end, we've got seven and a half stacks of gunpowder. Although that's only going to be what, a stack and a half of TNT? But maybe if we use it at the right level, we'll get lucky and actually get what we need this time. Ah, 
Oh, jeez, the mosquitoes. But I've managed to get another five. That gives us 11 in total, I think, because we already had one in storage. And we also had one netherite scrap. So I guess we've got enough to do our armor, just not our backpack. But we're once again out of TNT, so let's just head back. It looks like our sword's not going to be netherite either, actually, but oh well. Yep, we've got 11 and a scrap in total. These blood sacks, do they have any use? What does a blood sprayer do? And you can turn that into a hemolymph, hem hem hemolymph blaster? What in the world? That all sounds thoroughly exciting, but we'll save that for another day. For now, let's go cook this stuff and finally upgrade our armor. Been a long time coming. So let's get all of these done. That's going to make me feel much safer. But something else I want to do is to put another upgrade on this backpack. I want to replace this one temporarily. Now, where is it? It's one of these somewhere. There we go, this one. Can't despawn or fall into a void. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah, maybe we're not going to get that upgrade. We'll save that for another day. So with step one complete, it's time for step two, and that is to get some Eyes of Ender, because we're going to need those to find a stronghold. We actually have nine, which is a few more than I thought, so we haven't got to get too many more. But it does mean we need to return to the nether, go to a warped biome, and, well, just murder loads of endermen. And I think we'll just go with the method of using boats to trap them and then killing them while they can't attack us. And the warped forest, I can see it on my mini-map, is just this way. Right, let's find some leggy bendy men. Ooh, it's all a bit quiet, if I'm honest. Where are they at? Can't find a single one. Ah, what is that? Nope. Nope, not interested. I wonder, is there another way to get ender pearls? Explore the outer end. Kill Enderman. Stronghold corridors. Yep. Mob drops. Yep. And villager trades. Ooh, cleric villager trade. Yeah, maybe that's a better way for me to do this because I'm having no luck with the spawns here. I think this area is just a little bit too small. There's too much other stuff spawning in and we're not getting any leggy bendy men. <laughs> I've picked myself up a couple of brewing stands, thousands of sticks, and some logs. And what we're going to do is trade with these Fletchers so we can get loads of emeralds. And then we're going to make ourselves a cleric or two. Let's just stick those down. Hopefully somebody will come over eventually. And that should be the top level. There we go. Diamonds. And... Are you kidding me? You don't have enderpearls. I hate you. I don't know how to say your name. But I hate you. Right, let's do this one then. Hey, Virginia, now's your time to shine. Show me that enderpearl trade. Dang it! I'll set you free if you promise to take this as your profession. Thank you, Maribeth. Right, let's see what you've got to offer. Oh, finally, one that has enderpearls. But I've run out of emeralds. But thank you, Maribeth, for actually providing me what I need. I just need to wait for these Fletchers to reset now so I can get more emeralds. Right, it's time. We're going to buy what we can. And that's it. We have 18 enderpearls. But that'll be more than enough to find a stronghold. And yeah, I hate dealing with villagers. That's why we're going to the end to just kill the Enderman in the first place. That way we can have lots and lots of enderpearls without having to stand around doing villager trading. And we can make all the waystones we could possibly want. But if we just quickly pop to our mob farm here, we can grab a few of these. Make some of this and make a whole load of eyes of ender now it's time for step three gearing up more and what i mean by that is we're gonna make some fun toys to play with when we go to the end and the first fun thing we're going to make is this the potato cannon which launches our homegrown vegetables at enemies i mean what could be more fun than that and we'll also be making a back tank by the looks of it because we can power it with air pressure from that although then it means i won't be able to use a jetpack most likely and it says it shoots a suitable item from my inventory, which of course is going to be potatoes, but it does say homegrown vegetables. So we'll have to see what we've got laying around in the kitchen that we can shoot out of a gun, I guess. Question is, how do we make it? So, okay, that is exceptionally easy. So we need pipes, precision mechanism, andesite alloy, and copper. And actually, before we head over, we might as well see what we need for this. Just a bit more copper and another shaft. So for the potato cannon, we do this. I think that's correct. We'll find out in a second. Oh, yes. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, that looks so cool. Well, I love that. So let's just make the back tank, which was like that with copper there, I think. Yes, there we go. A wearable tank for carrying pressurized air. Brilliant. How do we fill it? Uh, collects pressurized air at a rate depending on the rotational speed. Oh, okay, so do we just sort of directly connect it? So let's just uh, steal that and stick it here for now. Yeah, there you go. That looks to be filling up. Oh, yeah, we can see it at the top. Oh, okay, so is that like how much time it lasts? Well, 15 minutes of air when it's full. No idea how that relates to potatoes fired, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. So while that charges, let's go grab ourselves some ammo. Question is, what do we have? Oh, we, well, we've got loads of potatoes. Maybe we should try some carrots and some onions and some tomatoes. We've got lots of those. We don't have quite so much of the other things, though. So maybe let's just give these four a try. Although, can we shoot pumpkins and melons as well? 
I mean, this must be tested. And there's also a bunch of enchantments we can potentially put on it as well. So we've got power, punch, flame, mending, unbreaking, looting, curse of vanishing, and... Ooh, potato recovery. That sounds fun. I guess the test is going to be, do we need to put enchants on books and then on the cannon, or can we chuck it directly in the enchanting table? Looks like we can put it directly in the table. Let's see what we get. I'm breaking three, potato recovery three, and power four. Oh, that's amazing. Let's just see if we've got any other potato-related books. No, it would appear not. Let's just enchant a bunch of books and see what else we can get. I think knockback works on it. And it gives us a good excuse to use our XP shower as well. Well, I've made loads of books, and I think we've got a couple here that might be useful. Capacity sounds like something that could go on the back tank. I'm breaking three would be good for the back tank as well, probably. And we've got punch one as well, which I suppose we could probably put on the cannon. So let's go grab that back tank. Ah, uh, there we go. That is now full. Let's just put that funnel back. Then let's grab a few more levels. And what can we put on the back tank? So, protection. Okay, that's good. So, basically, all the chest plate ones and capacity. But well, we got protection four and thorns two from the initial enchant. That'll do. So, it doesn't need mending. I assume that's because you fill it up and that's kind of its durability. But we can give it capacity three, which means it holds twice as much. Oh, amazing. So, with those leveled up, let's just get rid of the rest of these books. We don't need these. But we can only have either the pressurized air or the jetpack on, so that's a bit concerning. But I guess the thing we need to know most... <laughs> oh, that's fun. So it looks like it just fires whatever veg is furthest left in the inventory. And they've all got different sounds. So I'm not sure what the difference between the veg is. Maybe they do different amounts of damage, but they certainly seem to have different rates of fire. And if we put this air tank on, it should stop the potato cannon from actually taking durability. And the onions definitely fire the slowest here. But it looks like we can collect our veg again as well. So this could be messy. So I guess we may as well fill up the rest of the back tank. But this is the first thing we're going to play with in the end, the potato cannon. But why stop there? We've also got this thing, a grappling whisk, which apparently will save me from a free fall, which sounds like a good thing when we're above the end, but it says it allows us to swing from tree to tree. So yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we don't know if we don't try. We've got to make some weird stuff for this. So we need some minecart couplings. We need a heat engine and we need a whisk. So yeah, lots of iron sheets, lots of andesite alloy, and some zinc and copper nuggets. I think we can handle that. Wait a minute, you can fire the potato cannon from your offhand? Does that mean we can dual wield them? Okay, we'll make the whisk in a minute. I need to test this. Oh my god. Oh, and we can fire from both. Oh, this is amazing. I mean, the accuracy looks terrible, but it's definitely going to be fun. Now, where were we? Iron sheets, zinc nuggets, copper nuggets. We might need a few more of those. And we need to make some more andesite alloy. So to make this heat engine, it's andesite alloy. And three times we need to do big cog. Nope, small cog, big cog, zinc nuggets, copper nuggets. So let's put these in the right order. Make our lives a little bit easier. Put one of them on there. And let's just rotate around these. And there we go. Is that our heat engine? Looks like it. And we need a whisk. We need six minecart couplings. What do they actually do? Chains together individual minecarts, causing them to move as a group. Oh, that's fun. We'll have to have a play around with that sometime. But I think we've now got everything we need for this. So it's something like this with the whisk at the bottom. I think that's right. So how does this work? Uh, right, okay, well, it needs fuel to begin with. So there we go. It's just loading up now. Although, to be honest, we're getting pretty low. We should probably go fill this up. So how does this work? Do we just sort of fire it and then get pulled? Yep, okay. How do we use it well? That is the question. I feel like this is going to take a bit of practice to get used to, but it essentially sort of pulls you around and then holds you on until you let go again. I mean, it definitely speeds up some parts of travel. It's got quite the range on it as well. Look at that. But it does mean we should be able to save ourselves from the void. If we start falling down, we should just be able to do this and, you know, pull ourselves back up again. Definitely makes for some faster travel as well, now that I'm getting used to it. I quite like this. But we need to go get more fuel, so I guess we're going down here, and for some reason I lift it at the bottom. And one day I'll do something about this fuel situation so I don't need to keep doing this. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I never seem to get any mobs down here, even though I've not lit it up. I mean, look, there's a creeper there, but... I feel like this place should be rammed. So this is almost directly under my starter base, so that does tell me that I've probably just got loads of other mobs loaded in somewhere. Bit weird though, isn't it? Bearing in mind that when I go anywhere else that's dark, I get mobs all over the place. But there's just something about this area. Weird. Anyway, so we're full up on fuel. We've got our grappling hook and our potato cannons. Although the question is, can we actually enchant the whisk? Uh, no, doesn't look like it. Wait a minute, we didn't try to fire a pumpkin or a melon. 
but it does work. Shame I haven't got more of them. They probably do loads of damage. So this is all well and good, and I'm sure we're going to have lots of fun in the end. But what could be more fun than a flamethrower? So yes, we're going to make one of these next. And once again, it should be fairly straightforward. I think we've got some sturdy sheets behind me, actually. Yeah, look at that. Wait a minute. Let's make two in case we can dual wield these as well. And we've got a couple of blaze burners. Excellent. We've got the andesite alloy. And then we just need a couple of heat engines. But that's easy enough. We'll just do that over here again. So, like that. And then one of those. Heat engine. And then three sturdy sheets. Oh, look at that thing. But can we dual wield them? I mean, we can put it in our offhand, so I don't see why not. Should probably get some fuel out as well. Oh, I did that wrong. Right, that's better. So right click to shoot fire. Okay. And don't panic, I have fire tick off. But it doesn't look like I can fire the one in my offhand. That's a shame. And I'm just going to wait for it to fill up so I can see how quickly it uses fuel. Kind of want to check the range on this thing as well. So it seems to use it fairly quickly, from what I can tell. And it's kind of got a turn on, turn off kind of thing going on. And range-wise, it seems to be hitting around about there. It's got a good spread of damage, though. I think we're going to have some fun with this. So we have all our fun stuff. I'm loaded up on veg. And that means it's time for step four. Locate a stronghold. So what direction are we going in? That way, apparently. out of it well we almost fell directly into lava but look at that we're straight in the room let's just get rid of that well that was fairly straightforward we should probably have a look around the stronghold at some point but to be honest i don't really care about that right now i just want loads of ender pearls but to do that we're gonna need to kill the dragon first Always so ominous, that sound. I love it. So let's just sort out our inventory. So we've got our bow for taking out the crystals. We've got our flamethrower for funsies. We've got a couple of potato cannons, which will hopefully do a little bit of damage. We've got a sword as backup. And of course, I have the grappling whisk in case I get smacked off the side. So as long as I load up on a whole bunch of veg, we should be good to go. And in fact, I'm going to keep some blocks handy as well, just so we can make ourselves an enderman safe zone. And that means it's time for step five. Stepping into the void. Ali up. Well, I've already looked at an enderman. That's not ideal. So, can my whisk get me over there? Oh, it can. Amazing. Right, so, we've got some crystals we need to destroy here. Can we use a potato cannon? Oh, we can. How much damage does it do to the dragon, though? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I can actually damage the dragon with the potato cannon. Let's try the flamethrower. You got me feeling like a firebolt Hot in the sky Looking like a thunderstorm Probably the most chill dragon fight I've ever had. Now let's just collect a whole bunch of ender pearls before we go exploring. Oh, this is gonna get loud. Yes, follow me. Follow me over here where I can kill you. What are they? Oh, they're dead. They're very dead. Ender flu? That doesn't sound like something I want. I've got a bunch of ender pearls. We will get a few more, but I've just had a thought. While I'm here, 
Might as well grab some obsidian. So if I manually dig out a couple of layers, that should give us enough space to set up a drill with a rope and pulley. And then we should just be able to dig out one of these while we're killing some endermen down there. And we'll have all the obsidian we could need. Although I don't have any wood, chests, or barrels on me. So setting up a drill isn't really going to work. I might have to pop home quickly. But I think it'll be worth it for all that obsidian. There we go. We just need a bunch of chests. Probably not anywhere near that many. What is that? I just came over to grab a bucket of water. The size of that thing. Oh, it doesn't like being attacked. Oh, well, it's just like a normal squid, but bigger and more violent. Anyway, I've got my water to power the rope pulley, so I think we've got everything we need. I've just got to head all the way back to the end again. But luckily, my van's over here, so we can just drive most of the way. So my thinking is I'll just put a whole bunch of drills down here on top of this pillar. Stick a couple of chests on the back, and we'll get it all glued together as well. Then we'll stick a water wheel over here off to the side with some water. With the go faster thing, hopefully we'll be able to run that at full speed, but I don't know. I don't really know how it works. I don't think the drills actually take power. I think it's just the rope pulley, but we'll find out. So we'll use a couple of encased chain drives here, and then we'll stick this on. And it's overstressed. Okay, can't quite go that fast. Looks like it can comfortably do 64. How long is that going to take to break a block? That's what I want to know. Well, it's slow enough that I want to add some more water wheels. Well, I've removed that entire column. Let's see how much obsidian we've got. Well, there's a chest full in there and almost another chest in there. Awesome. That should tide us over for a while. I've also got 120 ender pearls, so that's good. I think we can clear this up and go adventuring in the end now. Let's see where we end up. I'm going to need myself a trapdoor. Let's make sure I've got my whisk handy as well, just in case. Well, we are fairly out in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? What are they? I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. All right, so... Not the best place to be starting. There's a weird thing up there as well. What's that? Oh, it flies. Well, I'm instantly terrified. So, how are we going to do this? Do you reckon we can hop from place to place? This might work. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But it's terrifying. This is an unreliable method of travel. I think I'm going to bridge out a bit more before I use the grappling hook again. Okay, but now we're here, we can zoom around. Hopefully we can find us... Oh, there's one right there. <laughs> Brilliant. And there's a boat. Amazing. We can use the grappling hook to get up here. Look at that. Easy peasy. Get rid of you. Oh, some lovely diamond armor. And an elytra. That's going to make traveling a little bit easier, probably. Because, well, we'll be able to fly over the void without dropping into it. Ooh, what's that? A mimic cube? Ah! What in the world? What's that stuff? Mimic cream? Yeah, not really sure what that was all about. Yoink. There's another one of those slime things that's not a slime. So it said it was called a mimic cube, and it looked like it pulled out a diamond sword. Is that because that's what I hit... Hit it with? I mean, does it literally just copy what I attack it with? I think it does, you know. They're quick. But they're not too bothersome. This thing, however, what is this? I want to know what you are. It's an endorphiage. Oh! Oh, it jumped on my face. It's like the mosquitoes, but in the end, getting all sorts of advancements. Grab some chorus fruit while we're here. So, what was going on down here? Encounter an endor... Enderiorphage, a giant biochemical construct found in the end. Be careful not to catch ender flu. Oh, is that what this is? I think I have ender flu. Brace against the clock. Catch the ender flu effect. Cure it by eating many chorus fruit or drinking milk. Be sure not to let it run its toll. Glad I stopped to read those, so I need to eat some chorus fruit to get rid of my ender flu. How much do I have to eat? It's still there. Five. I had to eat five. So in that case, we're going to make sure we've got lots and lots of chorus fruits. Hey, spire armor trim. We'll take that. Well, there's not much else going on here. The end is actually fairly boring. Who would have thought it? Although I do wonder, if I shoot these with a potato cannon, do they get potato cannons? Because that would be awesome. What? Oh! Oh, you hit, them with, you hit them with chorus fruit with a... What? Am I teleporting things away just by hitting them with a chorus fruit? <clears throat> Oh, this is fun. I can teleport anything. <laughs> oh, dear. So silly. I love it. Oh, we haven't killed one of these things yet. What is it? Don't really know. What's that? 
Oh, Jesus, one of them. Okay, right, yeah, kill it, kill it. We don't want the ender flu again. Oh, look, a waystone. I forgot they'd spawn naturally as well. Oh, there's the gateway over there on the right. We can get there. I think I've got the hang of the grappling hook now. Right, let's head home. Although we should probably take the dragon egg with us too. Where's it gone? There it is. But let's just do that. Yoink. And off we go. Successful trip. I had a wonderful time. And it was nice to see a new array of wildlife too. But more importantly, we've got loads of ender pearls, which means we can make more waystones. We do, of course, have the one that we found. And I'm curious what would happen if we put one on an airship. Like, I mean, it'd be fine while it's here, but when we move the contraption, would it move the waypoint as well? That's going to be an interesting experiment in the future. Ah, I don't want it displaying those. Okay, so if we set this to disabled, we don't have a waypoint. But we still have the waystone. Excellent. So now we need to take our other rubbish little train, which I think is also over here. Yep, there it is. We need to take this all the way back to our main base and, uh, well, set another waystone. Once we make them, of course. So to make waystones, we first need warp crystals, which means we need amethyst shards and emeralds. Ah, I've only got three emeralds. But I think it only takes one per waystone, so that should be fine for now. Yep, so that's what we need per warp stone. So let's just make as many as we can. Just the three. And then we need obsidian and stone bricks. Let's just make some of those. Get a bunch more waystones. And now we just need to install these where we want them. I think I want one right here in the middle of storage. Actually, I've got a better idea. I think it makes more sense to have these actually at the train stations. So I've still got to put in a little bit of effort. And I'll just stick it in front of the notice board here. So that's Beard Dew Valley. We'll make sure that one's disabled as well. Now, in theory, I can just go between the two of these. Oh, look at that. That's going to save me so much time. Now I just need to go put one at the logging camp. And we'll do the same thing just in front of the sign. Call that Timberholm. And now we've got to drive all the way to Stone Valley Peaks and do it there as well. There we go. That's Stone Valley Peaks done. Now we should just be able to hop between all of our places nice and quickly. Look at this. Wonderful. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today, so I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Over the last 700 in-game days, I've moved to a new area, made a huge distribution center, a giant processing factory, a power station, and more. We even killed the dragon with a flamethrower. And if I'm honest, I absolutely love how this area is coming together. So much so that today we're going to continue to expand by adding a brand new factory right over here. And that's going to be a factory for blaze cakes to feed our power station. Now, we don't really need the blaze cakes yet. I mean, our power station is currently only running one of the four steam engines. As you can see, three of them are turned off. It's only being fed by lava, which means it's running at half power. And we're not even using half of that power. So, yeah, we don't really need blaze cakes right now. But I want to make sure we're prepped for the future. And what is going on with these tanks? That's weird. Must have been something to do with updating. But yes, that's a side note. The pack has actually been updated on CurseForge. It has all the new mods that I've been using, such as Create Deco and Waystones. But alongside that, I also updated to the latest version of Create and all the additional mods and things. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what's caused this. So when you do update, be sure to check things out and make sure things are still working. What's weird is it hasn't done anything to the ones up there. But all the empty ones over here have gone weird. I think that's got them all fixed. And who knows what else has been broken. Right now, where were we? Oh yes, blaze cakes. So to get blaze cakes, it really is quite a process. So to make the cake itself, we need to put lava into a blaze cake base. And then to make the bases, we need eggs, sugar, and cinder flour. So eggs, that's nice and easy. We'll just jam a bunch of chickens into a hole. Sugar is a little bit more difficult, but we have options via either honey or sugar cane. And it looks like milling sugar cane might be the best bet. But getting the netherrack for the cinder flour, that's a little bit more tricky because, well, we just need to crush netherrack, which is fine. We've got plenty of netherrack at the moment, but we want this to be sustainable. But in my perfect world, we can make renewable netherrack. So we do actually have a mod which adds recipes, and we have two options. We can either squirt potion of healing on top of cobblestone, but to make that, we need glistering melon slices, and to make that, we need, well, a melon farm and a much better gold farm than the one we've currently got. So that's quite difficult. And the other option is to mix andesite with nether wart in a heated bowl. But in order to do that, we're going to need a nether wart farm and we're going to need a much better source of andesite than the current one. I mean, this farm up here just kind of drip feeds it. But then to make a more efficient andesite farm, we need lots of flint, which isn't a problem. We need lots of gravel. That's not really a problem. And we need lots and lots of lava, which... Yeah, that could be a problem because we're using this lava currently for the power plant and I know this is to make different fuel for the power plant and so on, but we're going to need lava for lots of things in this area. A third option for getting cinder flour is, of course, just to grind up all the netherrack we've already got, 
but that's not sustainable. So in short, we're going to need a few farms today. We need an egg farm, a sugar farm, an andesite farm, a nether wart farm, a nether rack farm, and more lava to feed the whole thing. And then eventually, we'll have a blaze cake farm. And my plan is to try and fit all of that in here in probably a couple of buildings. Let's see how far we can get with this today. But with the amount of farms and things we need to build, there's every chance this could turn into a two-part episode. Now, with our great big list of farms in mind, I think the first thing we should probably do is sort out the lava situation. So with that... I think we need to make an infinite lava pit. And it's probably going to make sense to do that down here underneath the power plant, where we've also got a bit of an opened out area. But we do actually need to open this area out a lot more. I need to be able to reach under this whole area too, because we're going to need delivery systems and so on. We might end up with more delivery trucks. So before we can even make a start on the lava pit, I need to do a whole lot more digging down here. A short while later, we now have a much bigger area down here, and this is, of course, still directly below the power plant, but it means we've actually got space to sort of move more vehicles around and get resources where we need them, which would be nice. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of exposed pipes and shafts from things that are already being powered. There's a bunch of stations in here. So yeah, there are things we need to be aware of. Now, we need a lava pit, and to make an infinite lava source, we need it to be at least 10,000 blocks, or 10,000 block sources of lava in one big hole. So I've done a bit of maths, and I've worked out that if I do a hole this size, which is 20 by 20, each layer is going to be 400 source blocks, and that means we need 25 layers to get 10,000 blocks. But instead of doing this by hand, because that would take absolutely forever, I think we're just going to make a whole bunch of drills and do it that way, which means I need to strip a whole lot of wood for andesite casings. I need a whole bunch of andesite alloy and i'm gonna need lots of iron sheets and it turns out i just need iron ingots not sheets whoops but i've managed to make a stack and 14 so far i just need a whole lot more andesite alloy and i reckon if we make 100 drills we can just drop it four times and that will give us what we need i don't really fancy making 400 if i'm honest so i've dug out the first hole and we're just going to repeat this all over so we place down 100 drills and a few chests on the back glue it all together then we'll add a rope pulley there we'll attach it to this and look at that down we go and we just got to do this four times and we should have a big enough pit for our lava looks like we might have a lush cave down there and then to bring it back up we'll just stick a couple of cogs in and then attach a belt and we just got to do this two more times whoops i appear to be unaliving a whole bunch of fish all right well, we have our hole. We just need to tidy it up a little bit and fill in these other holes that we don't need. This is where the grappling hook's going to come in very handy. What is that thing? Flutter? Well, it didn't drop anything. Hmm. There we go. We now have a solid pit. That's good. Let's use the grappling to get ourselves out. Love that thing. So now we just need to pump a whole bunch of lava into here. And for that, we're going to need a hose pulley, but we do actually already have one in our bag, which is good. And we're going to need a whole bunch of pipes and this. And we'll need a hand crank as well, just to make sure it's sort of down a little bit, I guess. So let's put the hose pulley there. We'll lower that down a little bit. Then we need to feed lava into that. I think that's how this works. We should just be able to do that from here. Oh, slight spillage. It's okay. Everything's fine. So we just need to put this pipe in the right place and we should be good. And yep, there we go. There's some lava. Oh, leggy bendy man's a bit angry. You're about to get angrier. Oh, he's gone. It's probably not a good thing. Spiders are running away from the lava as well. But in theory, that should now just gradually fill up. And over time, this will tell me sort of, well, it will tell me if it's going to be an infinite source or not. But currently, obviously, it's not. But if we just let that do its thing, it's going to fill up this whole pit and eventually we'll have an infinite lava source, which is going to be exceedingly useful to us in future. So it is pulling the lava from these tanks at the moment, which is the same lava that the power station uses, but we've got plenty in backup here, so hopefully this will actually hold up while we're doing this. And of course, our lava train's still going to be heading over here and dropping off a load more lava every sort of, well, 10 minutes or so, I think. So hopefully our power won't completely drain out, but I guess we'll see. But it's filling up nice and quickly. It's already doing the second layer. And this appears to have reached its limit for now, which means we need to wait for more trains to come in. So we should probably make a start on the actual factory. It's raining, isn't it? Of course it's raining. It's always raining. But both of these have been drained into the hole and the power plant still has its spare tank here. So we're all good. Looks like the sun's going down though, so we should be able to get rid of this rain. 
Jane. Good stuff. So what we need to do is work out how we're going to fit all of these farms in. We've got a great big list of farms and not a great big amount of space. But even so, I don't think I want to build the farms first. I think I want to get a building down because I've kind of got an idea in my head of how this is going to work. Because of course, this building does need to feed into this one with the blaze cakes. So if we put the main blaze cake production line here and then maybe have a secondary building, which to be honest, is probably just going to be a sugarcane farm. I reckon we can probably fit everything else in one building. So let's do our usual. We'll grab some blocks. We'll get a platform down and then we'll just try and build something that kind of fits in with the area, I guess. And and in saying that, actually, because we now have the Create Deco mod, we actually have access to some sort of different shades of brick, which look pretty cool. And I'm quite keen to play around with some of these Dean bricks. And we've even got mossy bricks. Look at this. And to make those, we need bricks, which is fairly easy. And we need Okram, which I'm hoping we've got some of in storage. But it turns out, if not, there's literally a patch just over there. So I'm going to get a few bits together for this building. I think we'll probably put in some kind of semi-automated machine in there just for making these Dean bricks. And I'll meet you back here when we're ready to start building. I think I've gathered what I need. And in here, I've built a small contraption, which is going to make all the other sort of different brick blocks for us. So at the moment, I want Dean bricks. So I've just put some Okram in there. But I can also load this up with other things. There we go. Look, you see it firing whenever some bricks come in. But what I can actually do is load this up with whatever kind of block I want. So if we look at all these different ones here, to make them, it's just the block in the middle that's different. So depending what we put into this drawer here, here, depends on what block we get out. Around the back, it's very simple. There's just an arm here that's collecting the bricks from over there, and it's putting bricks into this slot, which then fills up all of them because they're connected. And this one says no bricks, but it's also taking whatever's in here and putting it in the middle, which, as I say, in this case is Okram. Because we're never going to need these bricks in absolutely huge amounts, I shouldn't think. So, uh, yeah, this should work nicely for us. But enough about that. Let's get a big foundation down, stick down a building, and then see how many of these farms we can jam inside. And to be honest, when it comes to making the andesite, I might actually actually do that upstairs there. We can probably make a better job of it, potentially. But who knows? We'll see what space we have first. So I think a couple of platforms like that should do the trick. We'll have sugar cane over this side, because we're going to need quite a lot of space for that, I think. And then on the other side, we'll have pretty much everything else, I'd imagine. So we do need to go stock up on a few more building blocks. I think palette-wise, we're going to be using some acacia like this at the bottom. We're probably going to use a little bit of limestone at the top on this side of the building. And on the other side, we'll use Dean bricks and maybe some spruce or something. Maybe a nice deep slate roof, because we've got quite a lot of mangroves roofs around here at the moment. Who knows? Let's just grab some blocks, put on some music, and see what we end up with. And don't panic, I will put some supports on the monorail soon. I have seen your messages. Later, I've got quite a cool looking building there. I think I like that. And there should be enough space in there to get the smaller farms that we need, hopefully. But the only way we're going to find out is when we start jamming them in, I guess. But before we do that, I want to stick down the secondary building here, which is going to be for our sugar cane. So let's see what we can do. I'm pretty darn pleased with those, at least for now. I think they're going to do the job nicely, and they really do fit in with the area. And I have to say, I'm loving these train holes. They make great chimneys. They make really good sort of fluid tank type things. And with the Create Deco railings underneath as well, they have a nice bit of support. I just really like how this all looks. Although I appear to be missing some of my roof. I'm sure I textured that. There we go, a cheeky reload, and it's all come back. Good job. But as I was saying, we've done the easy bit. We've got the buildings up. I still need to do some texturing on the top of this one, but we'll get to that later. I really want to make a start on these farms, because the sooner we get them producing, the more stuff we're going to have to work with when we actually get to making the Blaze Cake Factory itself. So this building here is primarily going to be for sugarcane, but I've also got a small shed at the back here for the easiest of the farms. Eggs. 
And for this, we're just going to knock out a bit of the wall there. We will put some drawers there eventually, but for now, we'll just have a hopper. We're going to have a floor of hoppers. We'll chuck some carpet on top of those just so the chickens don't get stuck in them. Then we'll just wall off a good chunk of this as well. And we'll just put a great big window on the back. Now we just need a whole bunch of eggs, but I think we've got at least a stack, maybe a bit more than a stack back home. And this is one of the examples when having these waystones saves me 10 minutes of recording time because I can just hop here and go grab them. Those things are literally a game changer. So, uh, 74 eggs. That'll do. So I think we'll just stand here and do this and hopefully we'll get a decent amount of chickens. So from 70 something eggs, we've got about 10 chickens. That's not a lot of chickens. We're going to want more than that. So we'll just wait for them to grow up and then we'll kind of just keep recycling the eggs around, I guess, until there's a decent amount in there. So we'll just stick a drawer on the outside here and that will fill up with eggs. And then later on, we'll worry about how we get them over to the other factory. But for now, that's fine. First farm done. Easy peasy. But the next one, not so easy peasy. So next up, we need a sugarcane farm. And ideally, I kind of want two floors to this farm. So I don't really know how that's going to work out for space. But I think the first thing to do will be to rip out this floor here. So at least the bottom floor is sort of down a bit. And hopefully that will give us enough space to get a second floor of sugarcane in. And then we're going to have to figure out a device to harvest it all. But I reckon, I reckon we might be able to sort of have a gantry maybe in the middle of the room that then does both sides? I don't know. We'll have to see. But let's just do what we know we can do first and sort out this first floor. So that's the bottom layer of the farm in. I just need to work out how I'm actually going to harvest it now. Because now I think of it, I don't think we can actually have a row here because we need somewhere for the harvester to actually park. So let's quickly get something built up. Do we have any harvesters? Six. We might need a few more than that. And maybe a gantry shaft is going to be our best bet here. So if we had a gantry shaft at this height, and then we need one of these. We'll stick the gantry chassis on there with a barrel for storage. And then we can just stick the harvesters to the front of this, I think. Although we're going to need some temporary blocks at the back here. Just going to make a few more harvesters because we're going to need some for the second floor as well. And I think we can pretty much just glue that together now. But I don't want these blocks here, ideally. If we glue that to that. And then just glue all the harvesters together. That should be good. Power's going to be interesting. I guess we're going to have to sort of come in from the outside around this area. Maybe we should figure this out first before we work out how the second floor is going to go. So if we put a couple of chain drives in here, what I need to do is get a sequenced gear shift, which I don't think we have any of. It's okay, we can make one. And let me think about this. We're actually going to need to knock all this back another block. So we could literally just do that and then power the gear shift there. And then we're going to have to put all the redstone bits to make it work over here. But that should be okay. We can just use panels on the other side of the wall to hide it. But what we want it to do is to go probably about 12 meters or so in each direction. And then wait for another redstone pulse. And then we'll set something up so that when it gets back here, it just goes off again. And then it should just go backwards and forwards the whole time. Although in thinking about it, it would make more sense to put this on the other side. Let's just block that up again and move over here. So we'll put the sequence gear shift there. We'll just set this up again. And it's nice to see my chickens are grown up. So I think what we're going to need are some redstone bits and bobs. Let's see if we can figure this out. What we need to do is basically give off a pulse every time this gets home, basically. So if we were to put one of these down the bottom here and glue that to that. Put the receiver on there. You can see that's getting a redstone signal now. And then observers, maybe? Do we have any? We've got a few. So we'll check for a change there. We'll send that signal up. And then we need to send that signal into here. So do they have a pulse delay thing? Pulse extender? Pulse repeater. I think maybe a pulse repeater is what we want. And what do I need? Brass, redstone, and some kind of block. So that was redstone, uh, brass sheets and some blocks grab some redstone as well we're gonna be needing that so if we put the pulse repeater there set that to a couple of seconds so 40 ticks is that getting a signal gonna power that that's the question let's have a find out no no it's not that's okay not a problem it just means we have to do that instead but that should now trigger this two seconds after it arrives back. At least that's the hope. So let's give that thing some power. We need to go around the back here, dig down behind these barrels and find a power cable to connect to. Glad I covered that lava pit. That could have been dangerous. I think if we just dig a little hole across here, this should connect us up nicely. 
So this thing should have power now if we just give this a jump start. So do that. That should wait two seconds and then spin. Wow, that's fast. Okay, so it works, but it might be a bit fast. I think we can proper slow this down though. I think it only needs to fire maybe once a minute. That should be more than enough. We also need to put a storage interface on this. And I reckon we can just stick one there and then glue that together. So that'll exit over here. We'll put something on the other side to actually take that out, I guess. So I guess once again for now, we could literally just have a draw, shoot, and another storage interface. Also really want to slow this thing down. So let's head underground and sort that out. So let's just break this here. And if we just do this, and there we go. That's going much slower now. So that's a much better speed. Let's see if the interfaces connect. So it looks like it does connect. It's just done another run and the barrel is now empty and it definitely harvested some stuff. So I guess that works. So let's see about getting a second level on here, shall we? What I want to know is, can you put gantries opposite each other? You can. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, this could make things easier. Let's just see if the top one's going to move as well. It is. Well, that's going to make this nice and easy then. I'll bring you back in once the job's done. And there we go. I think we're just about done. This thing's setting off. We've got everything connected. Although I should probably rotate that a bit so it looks a little bit more connected, maybe. But everything's harvesting. It's all unloading. And we're getting lots of sugar cane. This is good. Let's just rotate this beam slightly. There we go. That makes more sense, slightly. So we're halfway to the second resource we need. We've got our sugar cane. We just need to convert it into sugar, but we'll do that in the next building. And let's see how our eggs are doing. We've got 56. Not bad. Nowhere near good enough. I guess we need more chickens. Let's chuck all these in there. And we'll most likely be back to fill that up even more a bit later. Now, if we check our list, we've done the eggs, we've done the sugar cane, and the lava pit, I think, is actually reached its max now. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so, yep, bottomless supply. Excellent. Although I have put this tank here, and this should be taking lava out of here, but it's not. Hmm. That's weird. So I've just broken and replaced this. Let's lower it down again and, well, see what happens. Well, it doesn't say it's bottomless anymore and it's taking it out. What is your problem? Let's just pump all that back in. Yeah, apparently suddenly it's not a bottomless supply anymore. So let's just pump a little bit more in. So there's definitely something bugged out with this because it fills till it says it's infinite. And as soon as I pump something out, it's, it's not infinite anymore. So I think I need to somehow add a few extra blocks in. And I've done a little bit of research. And basically, I need to mess around with the config here. We've gone to create, then server, then fluids. And I've just turned on fill infinite. Because what was happening is it would get to be a bottomless pit. And any extra lava coming in was just getting voided. But then as soon as we went to pump, it would take a block. And then it wouldn't be infinite anymore. And even just adding a few extra blocks around the edge didn't seem to work. So we're just going to pump a whole load more lava in here. And hopefully that'll do the trick. And that is continuing to fill up now. So hopefully when that's finished we'll actually have infinite lava. What a weird bug. Hopefully that fixes it. So I guess that means we can't tick off the lava pit yet, but we can at least make a start on these other things. But we're only two and a half farms in and we're already 20 minutes into the episode. So the chances of us getting all of this done are uh, looking pretty slim. So I'm going to focus on everything that we need apart from the netherrack. We might just bypass that and use a little bit of our storage for now. And that way we can just focus on getting the sugar, the cinder flour, the blaze cake bases, and of course the blaze cakes themselves. So if we save upstairs for making netherrack, we need to think about cinder flour. In fact, before we even do that, we need to think about power. So let's get some power up here. So I've got power up here and for cinder flour, if we're going to be bringing that in from upstairs, I think this makes the most sense. So then we can just feed it directly in. So if we do it like this for now, we can manually collect some netherrack and put it in there. And then that will turn it into cinder flour down here. And we've also got a chute going into the back there. So once we get the farm running up here, we can also send down more netherrack. But we've got a couple of other things to consider because if this is creating cinder flour, we have to bear in mind, we haven't actually made sugar yet. Instead, we just have sugar cane. But I have an easy solution for this. And that is just going to be to use a millstone with a bit of jiggery pokery down here and a gearbox set to vertical. We can power that as well. Stick another chute in and a box to get the sugar cane into. But of course, at the moment, the sugar cane is all the way over there. But of course, that just means we need lots of spruce trim. I think that's going to be the best way to connect these two bits without cluttering up outside here because I'm going to need this space for something else. So let's just get all these connected together. And I guess while we're here, we might as well hook up the eggs as well. And then to make sure all of this is going to play nicely together, let's stick a draw controller in. Thinking about it, we're also going to need to link these together. 
Then if we swap out the normal shoot we had here for a smart shoot, make sure it's only going to grab sugarcane, and then put a draw controller slave there, then that's going to produce loads of sugar for us. Look at that, wonderful. Right, I'm going to quickly run off and grab a little bit of netherrack, just so we can lock this drawer as well as cinder flower. So if we put loads of netherrack in there, what have we got? One and a half thousand. That's going to make us lots and lots of cinder flour. Certainly more than enough to get us started. So we have cinder flour, we have sugar, and, well, we've got eggs over there as well. And it should all be connected to the system. So all we need to do now is to make some blaze cake bases, which I reckon we can do over here. It should be fairly straightforward. And then we need to pump lava into those to make blaze cakes and then send them off into the power plants. And we're going to be sending them over via this tunnel here. We're probably just going to use trims again, to be honest. Keeps things nice and simple. I almost got hit by a train. And that means we're going to need a path up there from the inside, but that's easy enough. And just stick a bunch of spruce trims in here. It should be simple as that, really. And that's where we're going to store our blaze cakes. And now we have an end goal, we can probably work out what to do with the rest of this here. And I reckon this can be pretty straightforward, actually. So if we set up a bunch of funnels here to only remove one item at a time. Set those to filter by cinder flour, sugar, and eggs. And then if we actually put the slave controller back, that gives us everything we need. That's all the ingredients. And we're going to need to get power over here, so maybe we should do that underground a little bit. So that's going to give us power over here for the mechanical arm. And of course, we're going to need power for this as well. So let's set the arm to take from those three, deposit into there, and just hang that upside down. Then that's going to want to cog right there. Oh, and we're going to set this to force round robin as well, just to make sure we always end up with an even amount of ingredients in there. Then we need to get some power to this thing up here as well. Guess it's going to have to be a gearbox. So that should do it. And there we go, our first blaze cake. Let's just set the filter for those. Or blaze cake base, I should say. And now what we need to do is fill these with lava. And I don't think I have any spouts at the moment. But we're going to need tanks and pipes and mechanical pumps as well anyway. But how do we make a spout? Oh, well, that's easy. Not that I have any kelp on me. I still don't have a kelp farm. One of these days, I swear I'll make one. But for now, we're just going to steal some from the ocean. Oh, we already had some in our smoker. That's handy. Sometimes past beardstone can actually be useful. Right, there's our spout. So we can literally just dump that around here somewhere. And then we're going to get some pipes in. And I do like the idea of there being a little storage of lava in this room. And we're going to need a pump there. And then we need to power that. So let's maybe grab the power from there. Send it over this way, chuck in a gearbox, set that to vertical, and that way, and a cog. Wonderful. Well, that was nice and easy. But I should probably think about getting all this hooked up as well, actually. There we go. So that's all the cakes coming. We just need to sort out the lava situation. Speaking of which, how's this pit coming along? Well, it's certainly looking a lot more full. Let's see if it works as an actual infinite lava pit now. Well, it's taken a whole bunch of trial and error. I don't actually know what the problem was. We have filled it up an extra couple of levels, but I was still having the same issue. I've just broken and replaced this a few times, and now it does seem to be working. It still says it's a bottomless supply, and it's pumping out lava into this tank. So yeah, definitely working now. But that means all we have to do now is connect up this tank to the lava source. Oh, look at that. That's some pretty good placement, in my opinion. Now, look at that. We're getting lava. We're getting blaze cakes. We're making a mess of the blaze cakes, but we're getting them. And there we go. We're now collecting all the blaze cakes. They're going into that box there. Let's grab some keys so we can see how many we've got. So we're up to 66 already. That's not bad. And if we put some upgrades on these drawers, we should be able to store loads of sugar and cinder flour, as well as the uh, sugar cane and eggs, of course. But I need to make some of those. I think we've got a few diamonds over here. That should do it. Yep, still got 56. Let's take most of those and I need some sticks. So if we use those upgrades, many sticks and a couple of diamonds in each one. Eight upgrades, that should be enough for now. So we'll stick that on there. Oh, we're not doing too bad. Over 300 eggs. One on there, one on there, one there too. And you never know, we might need one on the blaze cakes as well. Now I think I just want to make this downstairs area look nice. It, it just doesn't at the moment. Not even slightly. A very short while and a few blocks later, I think we've tidied things up a little bit. We've just got some safety fences up, got a few girders in to hold things on, and we've covered up some of the storage drawers that just looked a bit out of place. I've also added in a few extra windows around the back here so you can actually see the trains go past, which is quite nice. And a bit of lighting, of course. But I have left this area blank because, of course, 
we do still need to be making andesite, bringing that over here, and then turning that into netherrack, which means we're going to need some kind of a drop-off area for that. So that's what we'll be using the space over there for. And on the outside, I forgot to mention, but you may have noticed earlier, I do actually have a couple of sort of brackety type things holding up the monorail now. Really quite difficult to do. Not sold on them, so if you've got any ideas, do let me know. But at least it's not free floating and the shipping containers can still go through. And something else that was pointed out to me is you can actually put two signals on a railway line and it looks much better. No idea what the second one does, but it looks cool. So I have upgraded all of those as well and they're looking pretty good. Although the Blaze Cake Factory is technically working, I still have to manually feed it with netherrack, which means we need an andesite source. A much better one than the one we've currently got. And we'll probably sort that by building another factory over here, making andesite using the gravel, flint, and lava. Send that round via a truck, I guess, to a delivery system over here. And then we can make the nether rack upstairs, which will make this a fully self-sustaining blaze cake farm without me having to manually load it up with nether rack every now and then. But sadly, that's going to have to wait for the next episode because we're all out of time here. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I slapped down a couple of new buildings and jammed them full of small farms in order to create a blaze cake factory. But there's a problem. Currently, I have to manually supply the nether rack, which is used to make cinder flour, and I want to get that automated today. Day, which means we'll get infinite blaze cakes without us ever having to do anything. And that means we need to automate netherrack. Now to do that, we've got a bit of space up here, but what we need to do is make a nether warp farm. We need an andesite farm, and then we need to mix those two together to make the netherrack and feed it into this chute here. But I don't think there's going to be enough space up here for all that. So we're going to make a brand new factory to make andesite and maybe a few other things too. And also another train truck, truck train thing to transport everything around. And I think the first thing I want to sort is the nether warp farm and potentially the machine that's actually going to make the netherrack as well but to get this started we need some soul sand which we've got plenty of over here and to actually make the netherrack it's quite small we do need to make sure we're providing heat to this thing so i guess that's going to make it a tiny bit bigger but we can easily fit that over this side which means i'm going to turn this entire side into a nether wart farm which i guess is going to be quite similar to the sugarcane farm we built last episode but without all the water and because netherite only grows to one tall in theory i should actually be able to layer it like this but that is going to make it hard to plant things, so maybe I should wait until I've actually filled up the ground floor first. Speaking of which, have I even got any nether wart? Uh, kind of. We have, we have not much. I don't think we can bow meal it, but I guess we can take some to try it out. Nope, as I suspected, it cannot be bow milled. Which means we're going to need to wait for that to grow. But I wonder, is there another way to get some? Uh, we can crush up nether wart blocks. Well, I guess that was kind of obvious. I don't think we've got any of those, though. So, yeah, I think uh, I think we're just going to have to play the waiting game. But I guess while we're waiting for that to grow, I can at least sort out the contraption that's going to work this thing. So, just like last time, I'm going to use gantry shafts. The gantry carriage there, with a barrel on the back. Bunch of harvesters across the front. And a portable storage interface. And I guess just for symmetry, we'll put another barrel there. Not that we really need it. And then another row of harvesters across there. And technically, we could put a third layer in as well. But I don't think we're going to need that much nether warts. But it's good to know we can upgrade the farm later if we do. But I need to make myself some more harvesters. So let's jam those in there and get all of this glued together. So that's the base part of the harvester done. Now we just need to sort out all the fancy redstone stuff. For that to make sense, I think I'm actually going to move that across. I'm going to put the redstone contacts in there instead. Because then it means I can keep everything over here flush with the wall. And there's no harm in that being a block over as long as we stick it on. Then we need a couple of observers. A bit of redstone dust and a pulse repeater, which I need to run back to the airship to actually make. So that should be everything. There we go. And that is connected. Just need to set up the gantry shafts. And, uh, yeah, it'd probably help if we gave it some power, actually, wouldn't it? And handily, we can access that from back here. But I do want to make sure I can control how fast that thing's going. So we're actually going to put a, uh, what is it, rotational speed controller? We're going to stick one of them in here. And then I'll look at getting it hooked up to the main power line. So if we jam that on the bottom there... 16 revolutions. I think that's going to be absolutely fine. I reckon if we just go across the ceiling like this, that should work quite nicely. I think I just need a gearbox there. Make that vertical and stick a shaft in. There we go. Now, if I give this a pulse, it should wait a couple of seconds. And I need to switch the directions on this. Let's try that again. There we go. They're both going to harvest. Excellent. And then it gets to the end, it comes back. Okay, this is all good. What I need to do here, though, is just put in a portable storage interface. So that will take the nether wart out, and then we can send that off into the new farm over here. So if we just extend this time to one minute, then yeah, once a minute, that will fire. 
So we're just keeping an eye on this barrel. We'll come and check it every now and then, and we'll pick up any of the nether wart that's ready. But in the meantime, let's figure out the next steps. So what we're going to eventually do is put a chute here, which will feed into this drawer controller slave. And if I use oak trims across here, they'll blend in with the floor a bit more, but they'll connect to the rest of the storage system. We'll just wind those drawers a little bit further round. We'll stick these here with a couple of slave controllers. Then we need a mixing basin here. Then we'll have a couple of depots there. And our good friend, the mechanical arm, doing a little bit of that. Now I need to make myself a mixer. She's going to poke through the ceiling a little bit, but that's fine. We can work around that. We'll just put cogs at either end there. We'll encase that one. Oh, no, we can't do that until we've actually attached a shaft. So let's just do that first and then put a cog on that one. So if we just do that, that's all those bits connected. And if we just encase that, it's a little bit more hidden, I guess. And then we'll just have a nice simple belt here that's going to feed all of the netherrack into this chute here. Let's add another one. There we go. Although I guess it'll also be nice to be able to back up some netherrack. So let's just do that. So this one's going to handle the nether warts. This one's going to handle the andesite, although I should probably sort that out. Let's put a filter on it first. Let's make sure that's nether wart and only one. We want to set this dude to force round robin. Get rid of all that sugar. And let's set this one up for andesite as well while we're here. So heat. I want to feed this thing with lava because lava's easy. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is to pump some lava up here, but I'll just do that into these. And then I'm going to need to pump that into a spout. So I need to get power to this thing. I think the best way is probably going to be a vertical gearbox going that way with some cogs. And then we need another spout. I need a spruce drawer for empty buckets. Uh, it's probably worth me making a few. Then I need a depot and some andesite funnels. So that one should empty the buckets out. That one will put the buckets in. Although that one there needs to be a brass one because I must filter it for empty buckets. So let's do that. And then I should be able to squeeze in a mechanical arm. So it will deposit stuff in there. It will take items from there. And it will deposit them. Uh, oh, no, that's not what we wanted. Let's start again. So we want to... No, we don't want to do that. So, we want to take items from here. The guy's an idiot. We'll get there eventually. So, we're taking items from here. We're putting them here. And we're putting them here if they're an empty bucket. I think that should work. So, if I start placing buckets here. Yep, that's exactly what he's doing. He's, he's just rotating them around the barrel. So, lava. We need some in here. This is probably going to take some fancy pipe work. So, if we go this way. Go this way. This is a bit of a problem. I mean, we could just loop around like that. I'm sure no one will notice. Then I just need to power that pump there. So, cog there. Cog there. Um. So, I've had a change of heart. I'm just going to pump it directly from the tank down here. That's just going to keep things much tidier up here. That's definitely working. This is good. Just need to power the belt over here. And our netherrack field's coming along nicely as well. We've pretty much doubled the size of it. But we've still got a long way to go before we can fill the whole floor. And then the second floor. So the last thing we need to get all of this fully automated is andesite hooked into this storage system. And I think I want to do that right about here. So if we just dig down a little bit, we should find... Yep, there they are. That's the drawer system. So we'll lock that to andesites. And now up here, we should have andesite on the depot. Yes, we do. Excellent. Other than getting the nether wart farm a lot more full and then putting a chute here so that it loads up, and of course automating andesite, this is done over here, I think. We'll make it look nice later. I want to make sure it's definitely working first. And that means we need to make an andesite factory. And I'm going to stick that down right about here. But currently, I have no idea what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go make myself some dinner while I ponder it. And then when I come back, I probably won't be any the wiser. And we'll just make something up as we go along like we normally do. So I'll see you in a moment once I've made some decisions and got some resources. And sorted out my inventory. What a mess. Well, I'm fed and malted. And I think I've got a bit of a plan. But that plan involves viridium. And I don't really have much. We've got almost a stack there, but besides that, we're looking pretty light. So we do need to get ourselves some more of that. And I think I want to give these a go as well, which are umber bricks. But we can make them fairly easily with the machine we made last episode. We've just got to take some scoria with us, and we've got plenty of that. But yes, viridium. We do need to find some of that. But if I remember correctly, I think I know where some is. So right at the start of the series, we had a mine that was over here somewhere. Um... I'm not entirely sure where. In fact, it might have even been a bit more this way. So I'm going to have a dig around, see if we can find it. But there should be a mine entrance around here somewhere. Anything? Aha! There it is. Although while they're here, we might as well take out these phantoms as well. Membrane's hard to come by. 
Come here, you. Well, we got a membrane. That's always nice. Anyway, back to what we were doing. I believe there's a big chunk of iridium down here somewhere. In fact, I think I can see it already. Yeah, look at this. Loads of the stuff. So I'm just going to wait for my drill to fill up and grab a bunch of this. And after a bunch of drilling, we've got almost 3,000 viridium, which is way more than we need. We probably only need a few stacks, but at least we've got plenty for the future. Now, I just need to make myself some umber bricks, but we can do that right here. So if I just chuck all those in there, and these are the bricks we're looking to use. I think they look quite nice. And while they're crafting up, we'll do what we do best and lay a foundation. I'm probably going to have to move this train signal. It might be in the way. I mean, we might be able to get away with leaving the box there, but these bits are going to have to go. So let's just get a foundation marked out. Ow! Okay. Watch out for trains. Noted. And to be honest, I think that's probably about all I'm going to get away with. Because what I do have to bear in mind is the delivery vehicle. Because we need to get this andesite over to the power station. And that means we need a truck driving around. And any truck that comes up here is going to need to be able to sort of connect to this building. But it's also going to need to be able to turn around. So I'm currently thinking it can come in this way. Go like that. And then reverse into like a sort of loading dock area. And then it should be able to drive off and do its thing. So that's my current thinking. But I guess we'll have to see how it goes. And then we'll have the main part of the building over here. This is where we'll make the andesite. There should be plenty of space. It's not really a big farm. So that should work out nicely, I think. If we just get a ramp in here, then we could even make the car go up a little ramp. That could be quite cool. Cool. We'll get a bit of texture in. We'll make it look like this is where the car has been going. A little bit of wear. Yeah, I think that could work. So let's just add a bit of texture to this foundation before we start building. Rough it up a little bit. Now let's go grab some of these blocks. So I want to use these for the ground floor of this building here. So we'll do the main building there. And then we'll have the sort of loading bay area over here. Something like that. Let's build up the walls and see how it looks. So maybe something like that. And then if we give this a slopey roof, we can sort of build out the rest of this. Hello. Looks like the health and safety team's arrived. And now they seem to be leaving of their own volition, probably because the trains are coming. That's it. Away we are. So I'm thinking maybe a shallow sloped roof like that. And then we'll have a sticky outy bit on top here for which we're going to use a little bit of oak. So let's just quickly get these walls built up so we can see what we're working with. I'm thinking maybe a sort of shallow arched roof for this side, just to kind of mirror the warehouse a little bit. And then maybe we should punch some big old windows in here as well. In fact, let's make them some angled windows, maybe. So if we do that, gives it a nice little shape. Let's go with that. Although for that to work with actual windows, I guess we're going to have to make the wall double thick, but that's fine. Okay, not bad. But let's maybe punch some windows in down here as well. In fact, let's give these some window sills down here, just like that. With some lovely ornate windows. I think they're going to fit nicely in here where they all join together. Nice. So let's add some support with our good old girders. Maybe I'll extend them up these corners as well. Let's get some window sills on these big ones as well. How does that look? I mean, it's pretty good. Maybe we need, like, a walkway, one of these type things over this side, potentially. Maybe. We'll come back to that. Let's sort out the roof first. And I also need more girders to put the rest of the supports in. So for the roof, we want mainly cut viridium. We'll have a few bits of polished cut viridium as well. And we'll use some normal viridium, I think. And maybe on this one, we should put in a roof light of some sort. Maybe using some of the darker glass. And then I need to figure out what I want to make that roof out of. If this one's green... Hmm. Who knows, but we'll tackle that in a minute. Let's get this roof on first. Maybe I should put a trim on this one. A bit like that. That's got a nice trim. Maybe we could do a dark oak trim. Something like that. I think that could work. Yeah, let's get this built out. That roof works quite well. We've even got an open window there, which I think looks pretty cool. But I'm still not sold on the front here. So let's see if we can add a walkway, which I guess means we'll need to swap out one of these windows. But that's not a problem. Maybe something like that. I think that's fairly simple, but does the job. We just need to make it make sense up here now. So if we... Okay, we're going to need to place this one like that. And then we should be able to... Nope, wrong way. Okay. Let's place it like that, and then we should be able to clip that. Brilliant. And we'll put a door in here. Well, that was a short-lived window. And then let's maybe just add some random detail in. Maybe we can even chuck an encased fan in there. 
Well, that's looking much better in my opinion, but we really need to sort out this roof and do lots of texturing pretty much everywhere. For now, though, I'll just get the roof in and then we'll probably move on the inside and start making this farm. We can always make the outside look nice later because I might have to switch it up a bit just to get the delivery vehicles in. And for the smaller roof down here, I think I'm going to use Deep Slate. I think that'll tie in nicely with the darker windows we've got going on up here. Yeah, I think I'm sold on that. The Deep Slate looks nice. But now I need to start thinking about the inside here because, well, we need to do lots of andesite making. Hmm. How are we going to do this? So the recipe we're going to be doing is going to use flint, gravel, and lava. And if we need two flint and one gravel, I do wonder if maybe we could just use millstones, you know? Because then all we'll need is three cobble generators. One of those can go into one mill and give us gravel, and two of them can go into two mills, which will give us gravel, then flint. Guaranteed flint as well. And then those three can just be put into a mixer. We'll pump in some lava. That should be easy enough. We should just be able to pump that straight into the basin. And then we'll get andesite out the other side. That should just about be it, really. I think this could be quite an easy one. And with the andesite that comes out of it, I do want to send a bunch of it to the power station. But because, well, this thing up here is really, really slow, I think it might also be worth dumping loads in the warehouse as well, because that way we'll have loads of stock for, well, whenever we need it, really. But I don't really want multiple delivery trucks coming to one building, so what we could probably do is connect it up to the drawer system. I think my draw controllers have got a range of like 75 blocks, so if I was to put it maybe like over here somewhere, then it should reach both warehouses and that building, meaning I can just dump the andesite into a drawer over here, and it'll appear in a vault over there. And then we'll build a new truck for some fancy delivery as well, which will then go over to here. And then all the andesite that goes in there will get turned into netherrack, which will turn into blaze cakes, which will power everything. Oh, it's all coming together. So I'm going to do a bit of crafting first, just refill these slots so I don't have to craft along the way, and then we should be good to go. Well, my backpack's full of goodies, and I think we're good to crack on. And the first thing I want to do is, well, I think I'm going to work backwards on this, basically. So if we want to make sure that we're feeding andesite into the warehouse, which is way over the back there, we've got a little bit of work to do. And that work is going to start in this corner right here. So the first thing we need to do is just get this connected up to all the other drawers. And then what I need to do is move this drawer controller because the way they work is they have a range from here and it's a cube, basically. The default is 25, so they work for 25 blocks in every direction. However, I've upped it in the config to 75, which I believe is the max. So if we nab this away, go back down our hole and go over here somewhere. So about there should be fine. If we actually jump into free cam and go through the floor here, we're in a much more central position. And that means that hopefully all these warehouses are actually going to be attached. But obviously for that to work, I do need to attach the other warehouse. I should probably do that now. So I think I've got it all linked up, but I need to test that it's actually going to work. And I think the easiest way to do that is going to be to put a spruce trim in there. Go all the way to the furthest point away, which is going to be the building over here. Put that there, put a funnel on, put trim in there so only trim can come out of it. Replace that with a draw controller. And if a trim appears, we know that this can connect right the way to the far corner of the warehouse. Ah, dang it. Turns out I didn't actually leave any trim in there. So if I put one in there, it should disappear. Nope, still not working. Oh, no, tell a lie. It's here. Oh, it is working. Amazing. That should also mean that if I chuck stuff in there, amazing. Cool. Right, it works. This is good. And they're dropping back out again. Perfect. So that means our storage network is now connected across basically the entire area for now. But that just means we're going to be able to store lots of andesite without even more vehicles going around that's going to clog up the network. We don't really want that. But now we've got that in place, we need to start working some things out. So I guess we're going to want some kind of a belt there and then we want andesite to go in there. We'll put a filter there just to make sure. And when the truck comes in, it will pick up from over there somewhere. We'll figure that out later, which means we need a tunnel there just to split all the andesite that comes through. And we're going to want somewhere to store the andesite site that's going to get loaded up. Once again, we'll just do this. So continuing to work backwards, we basically need to have the andesite coming out here, which means we may as well just make it straight in the basin and then have it go where it needs to. So we need a mechanical press on top of that, but we need to fill this basin with lava. But if we go down here, of course, we have lava just over there. And my plan is just to pump that straight into the bottom of the basin. And there we go. That's lava coming in. Let's just cover that hole. Oh, my days. Scare the life out of me, creepy boy. Jeez. I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often, considering the lack of lighting around here. Now, where were we? Okay, so we've got the lava in there, but what we need now is obviously the flint and the gravel. So if we grab a few depots, put a few drawers down, and some funnels, of course. And then we use mechanical arms, take two flint and a gravel, put it into there. 
we'll have another upside down arm because they look cool. And now we need to work these out. So we need two for flint. And then we put shoots back there. And then these three will make gravel. And then we'll build the cobble generator just probably directly on top of those, to be honest. But technically, that is all we need there. And if we're clever about the power, what we can probably do is just bring it up through the floor here. Yep, we'll just nab it from over that side. And I do want to speed this up. We want to make sure that this is running at maximum speed. So let's just do that. Stick a vertical gearbox in there. And bring power up to here. Excellent. Um... In fact, if we stick another vertical gearbox in there, that means we'll be able to power these. And then if we grab a couple of small cogs and put them there and there, that will get our millstones running. And then for the cobble generators, I think I'm going to use hoppers because I don't trust chutes. Let's quickly chuck in a bit of a floor here, just so we're working on something up here. And for the generators, we just need three drills. We'll link them with some chain drives. And then just do that. That'll power our drills. May as well quickly work out the belts down here while we're here. Uh, I think that's right. And then just a bunch of chain drives should do it. Yep, look at that. All the belts are going in the right direction. Wonderful. This is coming together nice and quickly. Just put a filter on the bowl for andesite while I think of it. Don't want to accidentally making something else now, do we? So we still need to get power to this, but I reckon we can just do this. Look at that. I love these encased chain drives. They're so versatile. Right, that's the press working. And I reckon we can connect up the arm if we get rid of that. Get rid of that. Put in a gearbox, make vertical, spin it. There we go, now the arm's going as well. That's looking pretty tidy. So let's sort this floor out, and I think the first thing I want to do is lower it by a block, otherwise it's not gonna line up with that door. And that'll be awkward. And let's just make it a little bit safer up here. Don't want to get myself caught up in the machinery now, do we? And the last thing we need to do to get this working is, of course, to add all the water and lava. So let's just make a cage to make sure it doesn't leak out first. Grab some water and some lava. We can just steal that from here. Amazing. So we flood the drills, dump the lava on top. Oh, and if we set this to forced round robin, there we go. So we should get two andesite every time it runs. Although this is currently getting wasted. So let's quickly fix that. Just stop that flying out. And there we go. Infinite andesite. Wonderful stuff. Let's just see if we can tidy all this up a little bit. And to be honest, other than a couple of brackets, there's not really much tidying up to do either. It's come out quite nicely. Although we do, of course, still need the safety barriers. And some girders. Got to add some girders. And I guess I should just grab a few proper lights for in here, really. I think what I will actually do is put a threshold switch on this one here. And we'll put a clutch there. Just so when this is loaded, it will turn the machine off. We don't need it running indefinitely and clogging everything up after all. Well, that's worked out nicely and it wasn't too much hassle. But now we've got to work out the delivery system. This could be hassle. And I guess the best place to start is probably going to be around about here somewhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so that's eight blocks. That's going to be important to know. So this is the middle. If we dig straight down here, what we know is that the track needs to raise up here and then slope down there. Oh, that's perfect. And this just needs to come straight down there and connect. I should probably go to sleep. That creep has put me on edge. But basically, for the vehicle to go in there, it's going to come in this way. And I think I want it to reverse into there. So it kind of needs to go around this bit, then reverse up, so it can then just drive off and do its thing. So if we dig down about here, put that there, can this connect, or am I going to have to move the slope back? Oof. No, I'm going to have to move the slope. Only by one block, though. So let's link that to there. This is also going to need to link up to here. So the truck can come in, go that way, and then go up that way, and then drive off, and head off where it needs to, that's fine. So hopefully that will all work, but we can't test it until we actually build something to drive on it, so let's figure out this side for now. So the truck's going to come this way, it's going to go down this road, so it's going to need to come off here, isn't it? So let's connect this over to this road. I say road, I'm aware it's rail. And then this truck needs to pull into there, Maybe I should turn it around first, so head off this way. Then it wants to come here, which is over the lava pit. Wonderful. So that can connect there. And then we just need to snake this bit over to here. Looks a bit weird, but it should do its thing. And now the fun part. Signals. We're going to need lots of signals here. Okay, so I think I've got all the signals set up. This one here is for the crossings, so that if the liquid train is in the station, basically, then the truck will not go past the crossing. So that should work fine. And other than that, I've just made a big section in the middle here, which, to be honest, is probably easier seen from above. 
So because we already have this truck here, in fact, it might be about to do it now. Yep, perfect. Thank you for the timing, sir. So because this truck is already going on this route here, what I've done is I've added signals so that this whole section of road here can only be occupied by one vehicle at a time. So that essentially means that if this guy's over here offloading, this truck here won't enter because then it's going to basically crash into him because it needs to go around that corner. So yeah, we've just sort of sectioned off this bit here. And hopefully those signals will prevent crashes between the trucks and also between the other trains. But the only way to work that out is to build ourselves a brand new truck. Ah, oh, and I've just put loads of create stuff in here that shouldn't be in this bag. Dang it. And a short while later, we have a truck. I think that looks all right. It's quite similar to the blue one. I've made the front a little bit longer. I've given it kind of a weird nose thing. And of course, I've rammed it full of andesite. I've also run around underneath and applied stations where we need them. So hopefully everything's going to line up. But I guess we're about to test that and find out. Although I should probably sleep first. It's a bit violent around here. Right, that's better. There's no scary things around anymore. Let's take this thing for a test drive. So we'll go round this way. If we follow this road round, and then we can go to the left up ahead here. Go round to the left again. And reverse up to this station. And that's connected underground, although we do need to cover up the lid of that. It looked a bit weird there. And then when we set off again, we'll go back across this crossing. So I think I need to maybe make that crossing a little bit wider. We're right on the edge there. Follow it around this way, then this way. And this is the bit that may or may not work. It might be a bit tight. So we want to go around here and pull into that station properly. There we go. And if we reverse... Okay, looks like it's working. And it's connected. Amazing. So a couple of minor changes. Let's make that wider. Let's add a floor panel over that just so we can't see the connector. And then let's find ourselves a driver. Hello, what's this? Tasmanian Devil. You'll do. So let's put him in there. So it's all aligned over here. It's going to pick up Andesite. I think it stays here for about 20 seconds. So it just grabs what it can, basically, whatever's in backup. And then he'll drive off, drop it over to the Blaze Cake Factory. And if we head over here now, with any luck, we should be getting some Netherrack being made. Yep, look at that. So we've got, wow, we've got loads of Nether Wart now. This thing has been kicking it out. Amazing. But that means we can make loads of Netherrack, which then gets turned into Cinder Flour, which when combined with the sugar and the egg, we get blaze bases, get filled with lava, and we're getting blaze cakes. And we've got, wow, six and a half thousand of those. So when we do need to up our power production, we're certainly going to be prepared. But I think the best thing is the fact that now we have multiple vehicles going around. This makes me very happy. But now this is all working, we just need to tidy everything up. So I need to get some texturing on these areas. And of course, I need to sort out this road. So satisfying just seeing these vehicles go around. And a few moments later, we've got a road in. I've kind of just dumped some clutter around. We've got a bit of texture on this building over here as well. And things are generally looking a little bit nicer. But I also did some stuff over here as well. This middle bit was really bothering me. So we've actually got a water tower for the trains, you'll be pleased to know. So our steam engines can come along and fill up. And then I've just dumped some other random goods here. We're producing all the bricks, so we've got crates of those. We've got these sort of loom things here. That truck's waiting for the train. I think I might need to move that station back a bit. Looks a bit close, doesn't it? And I even added a wonky shipping container. I basically just sort of stuck a mechanical bearing and a valve on the bottom of it after gluing it all together. But I think that looks pretty cool. And as a result, pretty much everything with inside these rails is now done, at least on this half. But we've still got a whole other half over there to build on yet. And we still have a tiny bit of space here too. But I am extremely happy with how all this is looking. And, well, we've got blaze cakes for days now. Once again, not that we actually need them yet, but we will do in future. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today, so I hope you've enjoyed the episode and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I built a new factory, stuck an infinite andesite machine inside, and built a new truck to transport that over to our blaze cake factory. But now it's time to change the pace a little bit. There is a reason I chose this location to build after all, and that's because of this. Not the mansion, but the coastline. And I think today we're going to make a start on our dockyard so we can receive goods via ships from across the ocean. But first, we really got to do something and it might upset some of you. However, this thing has got to go. I did consider keeping it and trying to integrate it into the area, but the styles are just too different and I don't think there's anything I can do to this to make it look good. I mean, it really is a terrible looking building. So there's only one thing to do and that is to send off the world eater, or I guess in this case, a mansion eater. Oh, oh, the frames. Oh, this, this is a very big drill. Let's just watch the house get removed, shall we? Oh, it's all gone wrong. So let's just do this first. Lock rotation. Let's try that again, shall we?
There we go, the mansion's gone. As well as a huge chunk of the coastline. But basically, my plan here is just to make a massive sort of dockyard area. We're going to have lots of big warehouses, a few factories, and all sorts going on. But it looks a little bit low right now, and I'm fully aware of that. That is because I also want to make sure I've got a couple of blocks of space beneath. So, yeah, the actual floor level is going to be here. And that just means I can route the power around and do all the things I need to do down here without interfering too much above. But at the moment, this just looks a bit like a chunk error. So what we're going to do is sort out all the landscape around it. I am actually going to be putting up sort of a retaining wall around this bit because I do want the dockyard to be lower than this bit. I need to get the actual floor in. And then I'm going to need to create a few sort of road ramps, entrances and so on to get into this area as well. So I've got lots of work to do, but luckily today is Monday and this video is not due until Sunday, so I've got plenty of time to work on this. I'm going to have a nice relaxing afternoon just terraforming. You'll probably see a random montage or something. And this isn't going to be just any montage, it's a talkie montage. So I spent the rest of the day making the area look a bit nicer to prep it for upcoming builds. I first put in retaining walls around the new hole to give it some structure, then outlined where the upper dock would be and built out a seawall using more stone brick to give me a fill for scale. I then built a small train contraption with 30 rollers to help me lay out a stone floor nice and quickly, then installed a road ramp in one corner so vehicles can access the docks down the line. I then added a lower dock for smaller boats and an even lower one for the smallest of boats that would be using these docks. And now it's Thursday. But I've not had a chance to get on for the last couple of days. I've been secretly recording a new mini-series for next month. Shh, you heard nothing. But I've been giving this area a lot of thought. I've got loads of really cool ideas and to be honest i can't wait to get started on today's plans because today it's actually time we're gonna make brace yourselves a kelp farm i know i know it's almost day 3000 and we still don't have a kelp farm in a very create focused world a shame but today that shame ends and by today i guess i mean tomorrow the sun's going down. Okay, so today we're going to build a kelp farm, but just look at this area. We've got so much space to work with. The dog's looking pretty cool. I mean, it all needs a lot of design. It's pretty much just solid stone brick at the moment. We'll have some nice designs on the walls in future. But for now, we've got a pretty good base to work with, and I know the area looks absolutely massive, but if you actually look at it on the map, it's technically smaller than this one here. Not that we've filled this one here yet either, but that's fine. But that's enough waffle. We need to talk kelp farms. And I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of days, and I think... I've got a plan. And the best thing about this kelp farm we're going to build is that I don't actually really need to build a kelp farm. I just need to build a kelp collection device. I mean, there's so much kelp out here on the ocean anyway. Why don't we just harvest that? But we can't harvest the kelp until we've actually got somewhere to put it. So over here, I did start marking out roughly where I thought some roads could go. I think we're going to have a big one along the front here. We'll have this obviously connect up to the ramp. And we'll probably have some other smaller roads snaking about around the back. But that means we've got a great big space here where I think I'm going to put a row of warehouses. Maybe only two or three, and they're not going to be as big as the ones we've got up there. Maybe more the size of the smaller side bits. But if we can get up a few warehouses, that's going to give us lots of place to store things that we bring in from other places across the ocean. And it also means we've got a little bit of space for some machines, because, well, we're going to need some of them today as well. Raw kelp's no good. And to kick all of this off, I think I'm going to get a road in, because I did start putting a road in up here, but it's kind of occurred to me we don't really want this kind of shabby, broken road connecting main areas and things like that. This really should be a little bit more like the road we have around here, the deep slate one. That one over there. So working our way backwards from collecting the kelp to storing the kelp to actually building a road, I think we're just going to get the road in first. So we need to connect it up to here. We need to swoop it round. We need to go down this side. And then we need to, of course, get a road on the dockyard itself. But as that means I'm just going to be placing deep slate for the next couple of hours, you're probably going to get like a 10 second time lapse of me doing so because it's going to be boring. <laughs> Apart from the fact it needs a bit of texture, the road's looking pretty good. At least it's in place where it needs to be. We just need to tidy it up a little bit. I mean, that corner there looks a little bit fat and so on. We need to put in some other blocks to kind of mix it up a little bit. But you get the idea. It's certainly more than enough for now. Because now what we need to do is design a warehouse. And I do, of course, want to make sure it ties in with everything we've got going on up here. So we're probably going to do a similar sort of shape and palette to what we've got going on on this side. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is put down a nice foundation. Because the way I want this to work, I kind of want the trucks to come down here i want them to reverse up to the warehouse into loading docks which basically means i need everything to be at least a block off the ground so let's just stick a platform down around here and i do want a road to be able to go along the back of the warehouses as well 
So I guess the furthest we can come back is probably about there. If this is going to be the front of the warehouse, we're going to want some bays. So let's just do a couple of bays like this. I think that size will work quite nicely for us. But we're going to want these bays a little bit deeper because we want the vehicles to basically be able to get completely off the road when they reverse in here. That should be big enough. So that means that's going to be the edge there. This will be the edge on the center bits. And that will be the edge there. So we can probably just fill the rest of this with deep slates. Yeah, I reckon that's going to work. But now what I need to do is get myself some acacia for the walls. I need to get some spruce logs. I think that's what we're using over there. These sort of weird strip spruce logs. But for the roof, instead of using mangrove, I think I might use some netherrack instead. Because the netherrack bricks themselves actually look pretty good. And just to clarify, I mean these netherrack bricks, not the actual netherrack bricks. But I think these look pretty good. And then we need loads of acacia as well. Which we need to turn into firewood acacia logs. We need some spruce that we turn into center cut spruce logs. We need some girders because girders. And we just need a bit more spruce because we're going to need to do the edges of the roofs. But that should be pretty much all we need to get the basic shape down. So let's crack on and build a warehouse. Time lapse time. Some funky music and a bit of block placing later. I think we're done. This warehouse should work nicely. It looks similar to those ones, but not the same. It's got an extra splash of color and the roof's a lot brighter too. But we've got plenty of space on the inside. We've got these little bays here. So we'll be able to reverse trucks up and pick things up from the front. And I reckon if we were to get a couple more of these along this row, that could look pretty good. So I guess that means we need to crack out the schematic cannon, but I think we can easily sit another two next to it here. And that's still gonna leave plenty of space for other things. And it's not gonna be too overwhelming, but it should give us plenty of space so i do have my schematic cannon i've got a table i've got the schematic and quill and an empty one as well so we can do everything we need so let's grab a schematic of all of this and we'll call this dockyard warehouse red make a schematic of that and maybe we'll put that about there just leave some space in between so we can have a road or something else around there and we've got a clipboard here as well so we can find out exactly what we need Beautiful. We've got a great big list of stuff. If we put a chest here and start loading it up with what it needs, we should be good. And I think I've managed to get everything together in these three barrels, uh, apart from the frame double slab. We'll ignore those because that doesn't actually exist. I just need to place two slabs independently. But everything else, we're loaded up on. Apart from maybe a bit more gunpowder. Not a problem. We can quickly pop back and get some. Although we only have 20. We're definitely going to need to make a gunpowder farm at some point. But that'll be more than enough to get this building down. So chuck that in there. We'll just check this. Okay, I think we're good. Let's go. we go we now have a second warehouse we just need to fill in some of these framey bits here and something i did actually notice while we were doing that is that this window is actually in the wrong place it should be one block over it's not actually in line with this one or the fans but that's an easy fix i also need to add these double slabbed frame blocks down here and add in the glass but apart from that the cannon did everything for me and thinking about it i have no idea why i've done these ones as framed blocks because well these glass blocks can just sit in here anyway but oh well we should probably fix the original build as well while we're here. There we go, all fixed. And it's definitely looking better with two warehouses, but I think three might be even better. Yep, I was right. Three definitely looks better. Not that I have any idea what we're going to be using most of these for, but I'm sure we'll fill them up over time. However, the first one I know that we want to use for kelp. And when it comes to storage, we're going to use a combination of vaults, but I think we're also going to have an extended drawer system under this area as well. So I need to have a look at what the coordinates are around about here somewhere. So that's minus 705. And our drawers have a range of 75 blocks, so to play it safe, if we were to go here somewhere, and I'll just mark that with a completely different block for now, but that's where we need to put our draw controller, and that way we can reach the far warehouse over there. And if we look at our mini-map, we can see we're almost central, so we'll also be able to reach a good distance in that direction as well. However, thinking about it, we probably also want to be able to reach the back of the docks over in this direction, so we probably want to go somewhere more around here. And that should hopefully give us the range we need. But let's not worry about that now, for now, what we need to do is figure out how we're actually going to collect the kelp. And I've got an idea for this. 
I think should work quite well. I don't know if you've been hearing all the screams of phantoms over the last few episodes, but that's because I haven't slept in quite a while because I've been trying to collect some phantom membranes. I did build a very small temporary farm, but it didn't really work. So instead I've just been avoiding sleep and while I'm building over here, anytime I've been hearing phantoms, I've just given them a bit of the old chop chop and our efforts have paid off to the tune of 92 phantom membranes, which we're going to be using to make phantom track, which works just like regular train track, except it's invisible, which means once I've placed it down, as long as I don't have this in my hand, it won't be visible at all. So we can place it just below the surface of the sea. And then if we have a boat going around with some harvesters on, it should be able to just gather loads of kelp for us and then drop it off at the dock. At least that's the plan. And thankfully, each phantom membrane gives us 32 train tracks, so we should have absolutely loads of the stuff. So let's grab the membrane, a bunch of iron, and get this track made up. And I'm hoping we can just use the machine over here. Although I'm going to need to make a couple of adjustments. So let's grab another deployer. Let's move that out the way. Put the deployer there. And the press there. Now if we give these guys a stack of iron each. Uh, we should probably remove the saw as well. We don't need that. Just replace that with an item drain for now. That's fine. But that should make us our phantom membrane track. Or our phantom rail I think it's called. Yep wonderful. Look at that. And in fact if we steal that drawer and put our backpack here. It should go directly into that. Excellent. We are going to have absolutely loads of this stuff. And with that, we've got just shy of 3,000 rails. Amazing. So if we have a look at the ocean around here and where the kelp currently is, I mean, we could, of course, plant more. But, you know, I want some fully organic kelp. So if we were to harvest it from over here and maybe over here as well, we could have like a little line that goes through that probably. And then maybe come into this port and then sort of swing back out get all of that, go around this way, grab loads of that, do a bit of back and forth, maybe look back round, drop it off, and so on. In a big circle, I reckon that could work. I'm keeping an eye out for more phantoms as well, of course. But there's some pretty good kelp patches out here. So I'm just going to start placing rail here. We can use the kelp. And yeah, look, if I go like this, it disappears, which is awesome. But for now, I just need a kind of back and forth route across this kelp patch. And a short while later, we've got a somewhat messy route for our little boat to take once we eventually make it. But I think that's going to work quite nicely. So it will start here around the dock somewhere. And then it's going to swoop around this way, go around a really big loop through all of this kelp at the back there, go right through this little patch here, all the way around, do a loop-de-loop -loop here, and then go through this last big patch here on the way back to dock. And that should pick up loads of the stuff, but we need a boat to be able to do that. So that's our next task, make some kind of fishing trawler type thing. And we've actually still got over 2,000 Phantom Rail, which is awesome, because that might come in handy for another project I want to do later. I'm not going to use it for the vehicles, though. They've already got their own track. Anyway, distractions aside, I need to go get myself lots of stuff and things to be able to make some kind of a trawler, I guess. And I think I want to use green terracotta for this trawler, have a nice sort of dark green, maybe with a white body on the top. But for that, we need lots of green dye, and that's why I'm making lots of flowers here, because if we take these and chuck them in the crushing wheel over here, we should get some green dye, not very much. Okay, I guess we need a whole lot more roses. That's a bit more like it, although we now have a ridiculous amount of red dye as well. But at least we can get our green terracotta. And then we'll just grab some wood, because we're going to need framed blocks, no doubt. And what else might we need? We want a white sort of engine body area on it. Maybe the limestone would be best. And a little bit of red terracotta as well. And I think pretty much everything else I need is going to be in this create backpack here. Oh, actually, tell a lie, we're going to need some barrels. And we're going to need some glass for the windows. And with the barrels, if I remember correctly, yep, there we go. You can get fish barrels. Bit more on theme, I guess. Okay, so we need to build a boat. And I think what I'm actually going to do is probably just stick a station down on a bit of this phantom track and build it out here. I think that's going to be the easiest thing to do because then we can make sure it's all going to line up. So we'll just put a station here. We'll hide it in the seafloor. Go for create new train and oh, okay, good. It does at least highlight the bit that we need to go on. That's good. And I think it makes sense to grab the invisible bogey here. We don't want to be seeing wheels on our boat after all. And for now, I'm going to make this section of track as small as possible. So we're just going to remove some of the phantom rail here. In fact, if I put it in my offhand, I can see what I'm doing. But this means we can proper sort of wrap around this area here and yeah, we can just put the track back afterwards once we turn this solid again. But I guess I need to figure out how I want to do this. Size-wise, I think something about that should work. I just need to actually make the frame look 
look like a ship because currently it's just a bunch of squares. But I think this is where the frame slabs are going to come in extremely handy. Let's see if we can get a slightly less basic shape sorted. A bit of messing around with some framed blocks later and I think I've got a basic shape in. And my plan here for all these top framed blocks is to basically add some spruce and give it kind of like a ledge. Maybe something like that. I think that should help get us started. Although we really could do with a deck so let's get something in here. In fact let's use these larger planks. I think they're going to look a bit better. And then my thinking is at the back here we'll put the sort of control cabin. Then we'll give it a little roof as well. So something like that and then we can put a little door at the back. Let's maybe get this filled in a little bit. And to be honest I kind of want to have glass like here and here and then at the front. In fact at the front here that should work fine. Can we get yes these and then what I'm hoping is if we do that and that and then put the glass in there and there. Yeah, that looks cool. But I think we'll just do the roof and this industrial iron. That should set it off nicely and tie in with the windows, I guess. Although we'll put some solid blocks at the back here because we're probably going to want to put some kind of little nasty aerial chimney type thing or something on it. Probably, maybe, who knows. So at the front here, I want to have some kind of a storage area. So, well, where they catch all the fish and stuff. They need somewhere cold to put them, right? And I know that this is a kelp boat and we're making it look like a fishing boat. But, I mean, who, who knows what a kelp boat looks like? A fishing boat's just going to look better overall, I think. So let's build some kind of a fridge type thing here. Maybe a couple of slopey bits. And I think we can actually get rid of some of these, right? Then we can just jam some fish barrels in here, which is also going to serve as storage for the actual kelp, which is marvellous. I think that works quite nicely. And how are we looking from afar? Not bad. We're definitely going to need to get some sort of textured blocks on this green area because it all kind of gets lost, really. And we need a rudder. And I think our best bet for a rudder might well be framed walls because at least they're then going to sit central on this block at the back here. Yeah, that kind of works. And these boats always have sticky uppy bits at the back, which could be rods, they could be aerials, they could be poles for drying nets on. I honestly have no clue. And we should probably have a couple of other masts around here somewhere as well. Well, we're almost done with the boat. I just need to get some texture on this green bit here. So I'm thinking, if we add some of these sort of tile pieces now and then and that should help break up the hull a little bit at least all right looking good i think i'm happy with the boat itself now we just need to figure out where the harvesters are gonna go i think what i'm gonna do is punch out a small hole at the bottom here and it would probably help if i had more than one harvester so we're gonna need to go make some of them but my plan is literally just stick these in a beam Across here, we'll just have a nice big line of them. And then I'll remove these temporary blocks here. And it, I mean, it's going to be visible, but it should fit okay, I think. But what do I need to make more harvesters? Okay, well, we can make three more in our bag, I suppose. What are we missing? Iron sheets. Easy enough. Let's go get some. Then make a bunch more of these. Attach these to the limestone blocks and then remove the limestone blocks. We don't want those. But I feel like they're going to need some kind of structural support. So, well, you know, go to time. Okay, and in theory, that should go around and hoover up all the kelp. We've got a secret door at the back here as well. I just need to add some train controls and a seat. So I think I'm going to have to remove that to be able to get the train controls in. But that's not really an issue. And there's the seats. Now let's glue this thing together, take it for a spin and hope we can collect some kelp. Although one thing that does occur to me is if the kelp has grown sort of one level above the harvesters, it might leave a small trail of sort of loose entities because it's only collecting the sort of second layer. But I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm sure it'll be fine. Now let's turn this into a train. Although I suppose it's a fishing boat. But uh, yeah, we'll just call it the Kelpinator for now. What a great name. And we'll call the station the Kelp Fields just in case we do need to come back at any points. But before we can go anywhere and test this, I do need to reconnect all the rail that we removed. So let's just do that. Oh, no. I have blocks in my offhand. I've just placed loads of... Ah, oh, dang it. All right, let's get rid of these. Everything's been cleared up. Let's give this thing a go. And we're off. Everything's working wonderfully. Look, we're harvesting kelp as we go around. And it pulls into the dock with all of the waiting nastiness. Okay, maybe, maybe we shouldn't pull into the dock just yet. But it looks like it's going to work a treat. And without even doing the whole route, we got three and a half stacks of kelp as well. So yeah, this should actually be quite productive. Although what I'm going to need to do now is put the station over this side where it can offload and, well, actually put some kind of storage interface on it so it can offload. I'll probably just offload directly into the harbour wall. Just put it into some storage drawers and then make it appear over at the warehouse. 
I think that's going to be the cleanest way to do this. But before I do any of that, I think I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. It's been a hard morning. Right, well, I've got a fresh cup of tea. Let's just add a station around here somewhere. We can move that later if needs be. Well, we can move that bit there. Ideally, I don't really want to be moving the station because now we're going to get it linked up to the storage stuff. So let's pull into the station and see where we line up. Okay, and if we disassemble this, it's going to destroy a little bit of my wall, but that's fine. Because what we need to do is put a storage interface. I think we're going to have to have it there. And on the boat, stick it there. And that should connect. I mean, it sticks out a little bit, but that's fine. So if we reassemble the train, reattach the rail, and pull into the station properly, that should, hopefully, connect the storage interfaces down below. Yep, look at that. Perfect. And we can fix that wall as well. Just pretend that doesn't go through it. It's fine. So what I now need to do is probably make a whole load more spruce trim. That is not going to be enough. But we're also going to need the slave controllers and probably a smart chute as well, just so we can unload it nice and quickly. So we'll stick the controller slave there, the smart chute there. And then all we need to do is connect this trim all the way back to the main dock, where we'll put a storage drawer controller in. So that's about as far as it's going to be able to go. So we'll stick a storage drawer here for now, I guess. A storage drawer controller that is but i need to go make one first so i need a diamond i need some stone and i think i need to make myself a drawer or two then i should be able to make one of these and if we stick that there and then put a drawer here will it get full of kelp yes it will excellent that means it's within range which is exactly what we wanted but now we need to go that way because what i want to be doing is bringing up the kelp probably in this corner here so we'll just put some trim across the ceiling here and connect it up to oh i've gone too far over here then we'll bring the trim up a bit further i'm just going to grab the kelp out of there and i'm gonna go put it back in the boat just to make sure that still connects well it's disappearing so it's got to be going somewhere and that somewhere is indeed over here. Brilliant. I'll tell you what, I am going to start sleeping now. We've got plenty of phantom rail. I'm getting fed up with all the other mobs. So now we know we can store kelp over here and we've got a way to harvest it. I reckon we can probably get away with setting up a train schedule now. So let's grab ourselves a lead. I think I've got some on the airship. By the way, absolutely loving this grappling hook. I can get around so quickly now. So we need one of them. Do I have a train schedule in my backpack? I do. We've got two there. So let's find a fishing boat operator. Who would operate a fishing boat? I don't think I want to fly this time. I wonder, is that bear still lurking around over here? No, it appears not. There was one. Oh, no, there he is. Come on, you. I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong making a bear a fisherman. To be honest, it's probably a bit big, isn't he? You've escaped this one, sir. Let me slowly lower you down so I don't kill you. Oh, he's still going to die. Oh, he's angry. Sheep. Why not? Come along, you. I mean, we could have done a seal, but for some reason, they've all disappeared. Weird. But you, sir, you look right at home in there. Perfect. So we want you to travel to the kelp fields. And to be honest, maybe maybe just sort of sit there for 20 seconds. Make it look like you're out there fishing. Why not? Then we'll come to the lower docks. Uh, stay here for about 30 seconds. Basically, I don't want it just to come along, drop everything off, and then leave straight away. I think it's just going to look a little bit better if it's actually stopped here for a moment. We don't care about efficiency. We just want it to look cool. Right, off you go. <laughs> Well, the boat's just come in from his second trip and it appears to be working absolutely fine. Let's go see how much kelp we're getting. Okay, so we're getting a good few stacks every trip that he does. I mean, that's from what, three, three and a half trips? This is good. But what's not good is the fact that that's just kelp. Kelp on its own is absolutely useless. So now what I need to do is get this processed and over to here, really, so it's ready to be collected as probably kelp blocks. I think you can break kelp blocks back down again into cooked kelp, right? We should probably test that. But the first thing I want to do is get all of this into a nice big vault. But we have fancy vaults these days because we've got access to shipping containers, so I'm going to go make a few of those, I think. Although, to be honest, I think I've actually got some over here. We've got some grey ones, we've got some other grey ones, and we've got some red ones. And we've got some purple ones, but they can stay right there. So, first things first, I think I want a nice big... Big red vault here, and this is what we're going to use for sort of main kelp storage. I don't think we want to take over more than half the warehouse, though. And then we just need to feed these into this vault here. So if we grab a chute and a funnel, that should do it. Although we will make sure we're filtering that, because we're probably going to end up with other stuff going around the system at some point. 
I would hope, otherwise all this has been for nothing. And what I want to do is process this into dried kelp blocks, which, as I say, I think, yeah, we can break them back down again, so that's good. So what we're going to need to do is, first off, cook the kelp. Then we're just going to need to pack it down into kelp blocks and then store it in a vault over there. So it should be quite a simple process, actually. Probably want to get this stuff cooked up quite quickly. So maybe we should have sort of three depots that are doing the cooking. Then we can have that go into a small vault. It doesn't need to be a particularly big one. And for cooking these, we don't actually need lava. We can just use campfires, can't we? I'm thinking about it before I get too carried away. We're going to need power over here, aren't we? So I might bring power up here, I think. But we need to get this connected all the way over to the power plants over there. But Smart Beardy, when he was digging the hole down here, has actually already dug sort of a route through. And, well, I have tried to work out roughly where the rail is going to need to go, but we'll fiddle with that later. But we can access the power right here. We just got to get this in the right place. Okay, we have power. What I need now, however, is some encased fans. And I don't think we have any here. Oh, no, we've got six. Perfect. So if we're going to have a space, we're going to have a campfire, then I guess the fan is going to be there means I guess we're replacing this beam with some encased chain drives. Not a problem. Apart from the fact I haven't got any. So let's make a bunch of these. Get those on there. Are they spinning the right way? No. Nope. No, they are not. And now they are. Perfect. So we just need a few campfires. And we'll stick those in there, there, and there. And then brass funnels in there with a dried kelp filter. So in theory, we should just be able to do that. And then start getting cooked kelp in here. At least that's the hope. Just watch for a moment. Make sure it's going to work. Yep, there we go. So, well, it's turned, but it hasn't gone in. Probably help if I set them to actually take stuff in. Yep, there we go. So we'll pull stuff out of there into a basin where it'll get pressed. So let's get this thing some power if we do that. Get our encased chain drives again. We should be able to do this. I think that'll work. Save us a gearbox or two. Yep, that's got power. And then we'll have the blocks come out into a big vault over here. And we just need a bunch of funnels. So that will go in. Uh, we should probably filter it as well, actually. So let's quickly make a kelp block. Though, to be honest, do we need to filter it? No, we don't. But I'm going to anyway, because it makes me feel better. And then the last thing we need to do... Look at that. Perfect space. But we just need to connect that to a storage interface, which is a little bit high, actually. So let's hide back our excitement for a moment. We'll just do it in the floor there instead. And, uh, yep, yeah, storage interface. There we go. We'll take them out of there and go into there. And that is our kelp processing plant complete. That was nice and simple. We could probably make it look a bit better, though, couldn't we? In fact, we could probably make this whole area look a little bit better. We need to do some decoration outside here as well. Maybe just get a couple of vaults or some boxes or something down. And I kind of do want to do a little bit of work on the shipping yard out the front here as well. And the road needs some texture. The wall needs some texture. But sadly, that's going to have to be on the next episode because we're pretty much out of time for this video. And not only that, we've also reached day 3000. And I guess that means we're about due a movie. But thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.